Okay. Hey now, everybody. Good What's to up? see you, even though we saw you like five minutes ago. Who are we with, Adam? We're with Rudyard Lynch. He runs a great channel called What If All Hissed. So I guess he's, I mean, a lot of people I think are trying to characterize you, Rudyard, as like far right. <laughs> but I mean, I watch your videos and it doesn't seem like you're far right at all. It seems like you're trying to basically be the voice of reason with Thank the far you. right. <laughs> like maybe far yeah. right people watch you, but it's, it does seem like you're trying to moderate them. Go ahead. Thank What's you. It's take? funny. One of my good friends works at the Hoover Institute, which for those that don't know, it's a conservative think tank. And he's like, Rudd, you're talking to you. I thought you were a radical. I'm like, that's hilarious. Yeah. Because on Twitter every day, people much further right than me are calling me a cuck. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I see that a lot too. It's kind of. And why is that? What do they want you to adopt that you're not? Uh, going so to I don't talk about race and IQ. I don't mm. talk about like say the Jews are destroying society. That's a big one. They say I'm a cuck because I don't think that I don't talk about the Jews destroying society. Um, <laughs> And I also, uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, I'm not like a trad calf. Like, I don't think we should have a state enforced church. I, I think Christian values are important. You need to have religion in society. But I think like a state enforced church is like, it would just hurt religion in general. Mm -hmm. I agree completely. Yeah. I mean, like high school. Like, so remember in high school when all the adults were like, don't drink. And then you drink anyway. It's yeah, like yeah. a state forced church where it's it's like uh it's you need to be a Christian and that suddenly will make being Christian uncool. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. One of the big ideas I've been thinking about is I think we need to have a reformation in the church because you need to change how the church works in order to keep it compelling for for new people. Well, see, are you a Christian? I am I'm officially an atheist for Jesus. So I am a like I was raised Christian, but I'm an atheist now, but I think of myself as like culturally Christian. Cause... I'm, I'm Christian. I see my top loyalty is to God though. So I see myself as loyal to God more than the religion itself. Right. What does that mean? I, so the God of the Bible, I'm Christian, but I'm not a churchist. And what I mean by that is you look at the God of the Bible and he is disgusting and insane and incredible and profound the Bible would be an R-rated movie if you made it a TV show. Uh, and it's super crazy. And I look at the church today and it's just so white bread, so boring. And there's no, it's all about the rituals around religion. It's not actually about God. And so when I, I argue with these guys further, right than me, like you got to attend church. And the thing I'm thinking is attending church is not a sign that you have a strong relationship with God. Attending church is a ritual to demonstrate your social your social position, and I think loads of people can go to church, but if the churches aren't bringing people in and they're not naturally bringing people in, that's the fault of the church for not being compelling. They need to change religion to be more compelling for people rather than just forcing people to do something that, that they're not compelled to do. Hmm. Do you have any ideas like what they could do? Yeah, I've been in. thinking about this because he, you need to have direct connection with God in order to have a, a functioning religion. And we've basically cut that out. And I was raised a Quaker and Quakers are sects are a sect of Protestantism. And I did this twice a week for five years straight where you sit in a room for an hour and meditate. And if you feel the will of God move through, you stand up and speak. And they founded the state of Pennsylvania where I grew up. Um, but the Quaker church is dying. There are no Quakers left. Um, it's really going nowhere. And so I think I think we should reintegrate psychedelics into religion where we've proved Yes. <laughs> yes. Did you know the Eucharist? <laughs> the Eucharist was a psychedelic. We have a very significant amount of evidence that the Eucharist was a psychedelic. Wow, I gotta bring that back. Oh my god. When, I like this. When yeah. they say you take the wine of Christ, what they're really saying is you're tripping. And so we, the Greeks had that, but they had rituals where you take psychedelics and we have a lot of evidence. There's a book called the immortality key by Brian Murareshku, which proves that the Eucharist was a psychedelic. And we have records from the middle ages where the peasants in the middle ages were scared to take, uh, of the flesh of Christ because they were tripping. It's like doing ayahuasca or LSD. And so the peasants were scared to do it because imagine every time you go to church, you trip. And then you might see demons, you might, uh, and you're from a religious society, so you believe the stuff you see when you're tripping. And mm -hmm. and so as late as 1200, we have records of people making the wine for the Eucharist in the north of France, and they're mixing an ergot, 
which is as the, is the active ingredient for LSD. And so yeah. for the from time of Christ until the Middle Ages, the wine you drank at church for the Eucharist was psychedelic. Mm-hmm. Now I, I have done LSD at a church, and it was very <laughs> much California. Yeah, yeah, it, California. This was one of these crazy like Catholic basilicas where they have these yeah. gigantic statues of like Moses and Jesus. And I'm sitting there, we'd had these micro dots and I'm like looking up at Jesus <laughs> and I'm going, Oh my God. <laughs> like yeah. if I just let go, Jesus would turn down and look at me, <laughs> like, but I'm just, yeah. I'm kind of like trying to hold that at bay because I'm thinking this is not the place that I want to be hallucinating, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I'm not sure that this is a great idea, to be honest. I disagree. I Out of, after personal experience, it. I think, come on. So, what I'd say is that Christians now are kind of, there are people who are social conservatives who are not like chill, or there are many chill Christians. It's, it's a stereotype of people on the coast, the coast that Christians are mean, but I think Christians are a really nice demographic and laid back as a general rule. Um, but they're not very inventive people. But I think if you created institutions where you could trip spiritually with a group of people who were down for that, that would be cool. Um, and did you guys watch my video on the CIA in the spirit world? I did. I loved it. Yes. Thanks. Um, yes. The, the CIA played these sound frequencies and these sound frequencies let people go to the spirit world. I think that's something we could integrate into religion. Um, I think... Uh, I read a book on why Christianity went into decline. Uh, it's called The Secular Age by Charles Taylor. And it's a remarkably unpleasant book. So you shouldn't read it, but you should hear my summary. Um, <laughs> summary that uh, the author, it's a 700 page book. It's really boring, but I got a lot of really, really useful stuff out of it. It changed how I saw the world. Um, a point the author makes is he said, he gave a couple of reasons for why Christianity went into decline. The easiest one is that... Uh, Technology, that's obvious. And so he, he de-emphasizes that because it's so obvious. The second reason is for the governments involved. If you're a government, you don't want there to be God because that creates an alternative loyalty to your people. And so if you have God in your society as a government or a ruling, a ruling elite, you have to have uh, loyalty to that God rather than just demanding people follow you. And reason three is the church got boring, where um, over the course of the Middle Ages till the present, and this is why I think things, the things I think Christianity did the worst is that Christianity, um, it moved from sins of pride being the worst to sexual sins being the worst. So people don't know about this, but the Middle Ages was actually a less sexually approved society than today, where um, every major city in Europe had brothels and the church would sanction the brothels because they thought they were a better alternative than to committing adultery or... Um, <laughs> Wait, it's, what? Wait, how is it? It is adultery. Yeah. Wait, what? This is the Middle Ages. So uh, you've got all these young guys who aren't married. The church mm-hmm. preferred that these young guys went to brothels than cheat on married women. Hmm. Or cheat. entire family. Oh, cheat with married women? Yeah, yeah. Oh, or okay. I gotcha. ages, people would well, have that sex. makes sense. Yeah, in, the Middle ages, would have, in the Middle Ages, people would have sex publicly in front of their friends and family. Um, and... <laughs> Entire families would sleep naked in the same bed. Um, oh and Ooh. teenage girls, like you would you would you would see everyone in your village naked. So teenage girls would basically bathe naked in public until they got married. And so we think the Middle Ages is really prude, but most of the things you think of the Middle Ages are actually true of the early modern period. With the rise of syphilis, Christianity became very prude and it moved from like Christianity today, though they Go after sins of the flesh more than sins of pride. And in Christianity, pride is the worst sin. So I think we should have the thing that turns people, and I do believe in sexual sins. I do think you can be sexually degenerate. Uh, That being said, all sin stems from sins of pride. And because pride is the number one worst thing. And so if the church was less about why are your pants sagging and more about you should be a good person, um, I think that would turn less people off because when I hear about the things turn people off from Christianity, it's um, it's basically prudery over things that they consider to be arbitrary. And I think that's partly people's fault where uh, the way I see the sexual revolution is imagine you give kids a giant chocolate cake where 
human history is driven off sex. You give people free sex. Of course, people are going to go crazy about it. And so I think decades later, we're uh, coming to terms with the sexual revolution and thinking maybe we went too hard. But I also have complete sympathy with the people who where that happened, because, of course, you'd go crazy with that, with, with, with that. Mm hmm. Hmm. So. So you just did this video that was about how the CIA knows about psychics being real, essentially. Yes. And you want to tell me more about that? Well, I want you to tell me more about that. That's well, give us, a, give us the you background tell me of the video more. I know first. the information. Right. For, for um, somebody who hasn't seen it, what is the, yeah, what is what the is, gist of the video? Yeah, what is the gist of the I video? I sent you an early audio copy before I before I released the main thing. <laughs> I did, yes. I, I watched it, so. Oh, okay. Well, um, and, uh, but oh, go ahead, you you go yeah. ahead and give the gist of it. So, so for the, the fans in the Sitchin Adams show who haven't watched the video, I've been researching this video for about a year, and I read a bunch of books where the CIA was doing decades worth of research in the spirit world in the 60s and 70s. And it's insane where they um, they got hundreds of people to visit the spirit world on repeat. 80% of the people that they went in the program saw the spirit world. They would talk to angels and demons and different spirits, and the spirits would give them essays on life and death. Um, and they created a geographic map of the spirit world. So for different religions, it's people going to literally different parts of the spirit world. Um, and so they, the CIA established this map of the spirit world, and um, – it's, they released all of this in 2016, and it really blows my mind that we don't haven't noticed this as a culture um, because the CIA had decades of research about this. The military assessed the science involved. The military said that independently all the science was correct. Meanwhile, behind the Iron Curtain in the Soviet bloc, they had their own versions of the experiment, which came to the same conclusions. So do you think the spirit world really exists? It's, I do. It's, okay. The reason I say that, um, and I understand for people to watch this video, a very significant amount of you won't believe in that. And you have total right to do so because people need to argue both positions in honesty so we can find the truth. Um, and I'm not like Stalin. I'm not going to force you to believe uh, things. Well, and I think the, like the strongest counter argument is probably that it's some sort of collective unconscious thing going on. Yeah. Like people have this idea of what the spirit world is and they're able to describe it, articulate it. There's a lot of overlap. So it's very easy to construct something like this, but it's not actually real. One of the points that leads me to a point from Charles Taylor's book, The Secular Age, where he said, once you get to a certain point of skepticism, you have to take as much a leap of faith to be a skeptic as to be religious past a certain point. If you're if you're normal agnostic, there's no leap of faith involved. But if you're a hardcore atheist who doesn't believe in any of this stuff, the idea that we're seeing all this stuff and none of it exists, that requires actually a lot of suspension of disbelief. Where if you're seeing this entire collective subconscious, wouldn't Occam's the idea that it's totally made up that uh that takes a, a lot of leap of faith. And the point that I would further say is that from all the research the CIA did, they have hundreds of results of them getting information that people could otherwise not have from it. For example, they had different results where uh, people could pinpoint on a map exactly the location of a government base. They could draw government technology with no knowledge of it on, on a sheet of paper. They were able to project movie scenes to people in different rooms, have them say what movie scene it is. Um, and they they have hundreds of examples of this. For the example, they could uh, they could go they could look information, historic information. This person lived in this town at blank time. Go through historic records, see that that person lived in that town in that place. He would spy on his neighbors, then ask his neighbors at three p.m. You are sitting on that couch reading a book, right? And that was correct. And so we have a tremendous amount of verifiable. They also got them to read statistically significant numbers in a room on the other side of the country. And so there's all this evidence of getting actual information from it. And furthermore, it appears as if we need this symbolic world to, for, to maintain sanity. Dreaming is a great example of that. When you can't dream, you go crazy. But you have to indulge in this, uh, in this si symbolic world on a daily basis to not go crazy. And humans need to have art and religion and that stuff for their societies to survive. And so I think it's 
it's a separate dimension in the same way that we can, we know we can't see UV rays. We can't see, um, we can't see quantum mechanics. There's loads of things we know we can't see, but we can trust they actually exist. Mm -hmm. So like when they would do, when this guy would do this test where they would, um, you know, he would project and see something or he would, you know, they would look at numbers on the side of the room. Was this all, the CIA was documenting all this too? Yeah, the CIA was writing all this down and they had, uh, the CIA was doing this and the military was also documenting it independently. Mm -hmm. So how do you know that they're not just, you know, putting this out as subterfuge to make the Russians think that we have all this psychic power? Um, what incentive they have to do that? Well, to freak the Russians out, to think that we're, look, we're yeah. like Dr. Manhattan over here. That Don't fuck fair. with us. The reason I say this is it, is it corresponds, I read a thousand pages of the guy that wrote this. So I have a decent mm -hmm. understanding of who he is as a person. Um, it's just too in depth. I think it's too weird. I can't imagine someone making it up. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But that's also true with almost any technology. Like you look at any scientific study, and this is a lot of scientific studies turn out to be wrong in retrospect, where, for example, remember, or we're very different ages, but when I went to school, um, they told us carbohydrates were the healthiest thing to eat. We had to have the most carbohydrates, no lean meat. I'm starting keto tomorrow. I've been, I've been eating a lot of food today before I do keto, but it's the exact opposite. Um, and so you have to make kind of make this jump that the people are honest for almost any scientific discovery you make. So do you, do you, this? Well, well, I you don't find any of this persuasive, Adam. No, I mean, not really. <laughs> so, but if it, it if if it's true, so that the CAA, you know, did all this investigating and they wrote all these reports, where they seem to get you know success on all this stuff, like why is that not persuasive to you? Well, they could. There's a lot of different ways they could have done it. They could have. I mean, they could only document the guys that are getting lucky and not documenting the guys who are not getting lucky. They, um, so. so they have records of that where over 80% of people who did this experiment went to the spirit world. So a lot of people, most people who did the experiment did it. And what I'd also say is a point that people don't seem to realize in scientific discoveries is that it's not about, you can never prove a theory. You develop a certain accumulation of evidence. And so you have multiple theories. And once one of the theories in Occam's razor gets critical mass, you choose that theory over the other theory. And so we've taken in other stuff in science with far, far less evidence than this. And I mean, mm -hmm. political science is the best example where we believe things in political science that have basically no evidence. The idea that men and women are genetically the same, no evidence for that. We have a boatload of evidence that men and women have psychological and genetic differences. At this point, we've proven that biological race is a real thing. The question is, how much does it affect but we know at this point that biological race is real. So there are things where we've taken in very little evidence to jump on a theory. And in physics is a great example where the jump we made to go to Einstein's worldview from a Newtonian worldview, it was on inconclusive test results. And you periodically see massive changes in scientific theories based off not that much evidence. And so I'll say that like for a lot of stuff we see in different scientific theories, it's based off worse evidence than this. Sitch, I, I, I don't know if you can address the like races real stuff. I don't want Rudyard to be accused of being like. Yeah, what a, do you, I guess you should be clear what you mean by that. Well, I, know people, <laughs> I know a bunch of people that are experts in this. You guys should check out Razib Khan's work. He's the right. biggest geneticist. Uh, we're friends. He has studied. Um, he studied biological race. And I know like four or five people that have PhDs in genetics and anthropology, and they've all studied this topic. It's, it's, uh, if you read books on this topic, it's just widely acknowledged by everyone. Well, mm -hmm. I guess I, well, what does that mean? Can, well, what does that mean? Cause like, race is correct. real. Well, let me just say like race is real, obviously in terms of like, you can look at a person, you know, if they're white or black or something, right? Like you can see yeah. obviously that there's something there. So what, what does that mean? But usually when I hear people say race is real, they mean it in some sort of like deeper, you know, kind of yeah. a racist -y way. So that's why I guess that's what Adam wants to clarify. That's the great question. And yeah. we don't know how much it affects. And, um, and uh, for example, of me on the right, I argue against le less race and intelligence than most people because mm -hmm. 
I look at things where race and IQ, um, for example, Americans, Southern Americans of British ancestry have significantly lower IQs than Northern Americans of British ancestry. But these are people who are genetically very similar. Uh, mm. the people in the German province of Franconia have 10 points IQ lower than Saxony. The only difference is Saxony industrialized more than Franconia. So I think one of my worries is that now that we've proven that this is real, people immediately jump to basically making a categorization, a racial caste system based off IQ. And I think that errs as much as saying there are no genetic differences. But you can see stuff. Well, at, there are environmental differences that affect IQ, obviously. If you're yeah. in a much more stressful si 50 -50. situation. Yeah. Well, IQ, look, if you're in a much more stressful, if you have a much more stressful lifestyle, it can cost you 10 to 20 IQ points. So. Yeah. 2,000 years ago, my ancestors were all illiterate tribesmen, but I'm genetically identical to them. Um, actually, 200 years ago, my ancestors were still illiterate tribesmen. I'm Irish. Um, but so we know that IQ is 50%. It's intelligence is 50% genetic, 50% cultural. But we know that everything is influenced by genetic, whether how fast you drive, what your political affiliation is, um, what how religious you are, what music you listen to. Uh, how you dress like you know these twin studies where uh twin studies where you'll bring people together who are separate as children uh, and they are genetically identical they name their kids the same thing they married men who look similar they both have the same kind of pet dog it, and these are people who are separated at birth right mm -hmm. yeah i think the twin studies the last i read it was closer to like 65 percent genetic and 35 percent I think it's somewhere side. between it's 50 like, to 80. It always is like trending more and more genetic. But yeah. anyway, we were talking more about the CIA. The, yeah, exactly. And this, this mystical place called yeah. the spirit world. So when which, people say which, they go spirit world, what does that mean? They mean they'd like project out of their body to some place that was like not. What I'd say is that it's yeah. a different dimension. We've consistently discovered new dimensions over science. So electricity, that's a new thing. Um, people didn't think electricity was real. Germs, that's new. UV rays, that's new. And the universe is infinitely large. And we already believe in multiple dimensions. And so why can't it be true that there's another paradigm about the world? And ev literally every other society in history believed in this. It wasn't until even in the 19th century, uh, in the 19th century, Thomas Edison, Nikola Tesla, they both built machines to unearth to study the spirit world. Isaac Newton was obsessed with this. Multiple American presidents in the 19th century were obsessed with this stuff. So it wasn't until the 20th century that this stuff, people didn't believe in it. And even in the 20th century, even today, most people in Western countries still believe in the spirit world. So this mm -hmm. is something... 1% of humanity over our history doesn't believe in it. So if it, and these, the, keep in mind, people in history weren't stupid. You have loads of people who are geniuses like Socrates or Plato or Buddha or uh, Isaac Newton, and they all believe in this stuff unquestioningly. Yeah, I mean, I guess Adam doesn't. I believe, I believe in that stuff, and I do evidence. believe that the government would definitely be interested in doing these yeah. experiments. And if, I just, I, to me, I do find it very fascinating that if they declassified a lot of these experiments that show they had success, that it's just like people just kind of shrug it off and they don't really care. <laughs> it's like, oh, whatever, what, I guess, you know. What evidence would you need to see to believe in the spirit world? Adam? I, I guess I would just, I would need a theory that was more plausible than any of the other theories I have for the existence of it. I mean... People, people, just because a lot of people have always believed in something doesn't mean that it actually exists. People can believe in things that don't exist that have a evolution, give them an evolutionary what's, advantage. Yeah. What's an example of this sort of thing that every society in history believed in, which isn't true? God. The, but hey, God, God, God is like the perfect the example. World are the same thing. They're the same question besides this. Right. But God, look, uh, uh, a group of people that believe there's an all seeing, all knowing badass that's going to punish you for wrongdoing. And a group of people who don't believe that it's just the, the group of people that do believe that they have a cop always on the beat, watching them to behave with one another. They're going to be mo much more likely to behave 
And yeah. they're just going to be able to cooperate and outcompete the group that doesn't believe that cop is on the beat and they could just lie and steal and cheat and sure. buck one another over. So the whether or not the cop on the beat actually exists is completely immaterial. The best way to explain the religion and religion divide, and I'm, the video I'm, I finished, I'm going to release next week, is why societies have religion. Mm -hmm. It's an anthropological look in why religion exists. And the religion and religion divide doesn't have to do with science. It's whether you view life as conscious or not. If you view the universe as a conscious feedback loop in which it's reacting to itself, you will think that there's there is the divine in god if you view the world as mechanistic and not interactive you will view it as uh you will view the universe as laws not as uh, a divine spark and every majority every society with an urban elite in history is agnostic and every society with a rural elite in history is religious because if you're a rural society the other the natural order is alive is intuitively intuitively makes sense to you because that's what nature is like. And if you're in a city, the idea that the natural order is intuitively uh, is intuitively mechanical makes sense because that's what cities are like. Um, and so this principle sticks for all of history where in 19th century Britain, as an example, the elite was rural. It was a much more religious society than 19th century France where the elite was concentrated in Paris. Um, and so when you look at religious people, it's their starting assumption is that reality is a feedback, is a living thing that punishes you. And the idea of religious rules is that these are the laws of the natural order, where if you break these laws of the natural order, you will get punished. Um, for example, if you cheat, if you um, if you if you uh, screw people over, if you lie, if you murder people randomly, the idea of God taking retribution is the idea that the natural order doesn't like that, thus you will do worse. The, but the... The objective world, though, and there's, I understand what you're saying. There's two ideas of how the objective world is. It's either yeah. consciousness or it's mechanistic. There is a truth to that, right? It can't be both. It's one or the other. And we're kind of trying to figure out whether or not it's one way or the other. It so you, you accept that, right? It can be depending on how you define the world. And this is the debate I got in with my friend, Kurt, where I said, if you want to say reality is that which is objective, then you will by definition say there isn't a God because you accept reality is that which is physically in the physical world. So by definition, there wouldn't be a God. But if you want to zoom out and see the world as and see the world as a place of ideas and as a place of um, principles, then you will believe there is God. Can, can you tell me this is often odd to me because I do see a lot of right wingers in our comments and, and discussing things on the internet and stuff. And they really are dead set against the idea of thinking of things mechanistically. Like what is, what is the big gripe with yeah. mechanistic thinking just out of uh, curiosity? Have you read the book, the master and his emissary? Yeah. 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 I, I look, you, that book has some, some of it is really interesting and some of it is really just boring and just a total slog. You, you recommended that book to me and I started yeah. reading it. I think you might've gotten a lot the beginning more out is of it really than I boring. Have. So the beginning right. is really boring. The end is what's good. Um, right. and but just to, just to let the audience know the master and its emissary is basically this, this idea that we have a split brain and one half of the brain is kind of the master, right? And the other half of the brain is the, the servant. And a lot of society is structured by whether or not the people in that society are more right brained or left brain. Yeah. Is that a good yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Okay. And so yeah. when tested, the right brain gets the correct answer. So for example, if you ask it to do a drawing, the left brain can literally only draw one half of the drawing. The right brain right. can do the entire thing. And for the right. left brain, they can only see things through logical structures, through money, through power, through things that you can measure. The right brain is capable of seeing concepts like truth, love, uh, purpose. And so if you're part of the left brain, you struggle with purpose because – you can't measure purpose, but if you're on the right brain, the idea of purpose naturally comes to you because you see it within the world. Um, and so looking at the world mechanistically is not useful because the world is too complicated and there's too many gradations. So if you try to look at the world mechanistically, it won't work. Where, for example, um, people have tried to, ex 
this, what I do for what if I'll test is I look at the world, I tell stories at how it works. I don't build a single cohesive theory because I think if you build a single cohesive theory, your, th your world will become slaves to the theory. You will filter the entire world through that theory. That's looking at the world mechanistically, like Marxism. Marxism builds a single theory of history. Everything has to fit my set model of history, but the world doesn't owe you to be explainable. And so if you try to explain the world in just purely utilitarian terms, you're going to miss a lot of details. But if you accept the world for what it is and just see it as a mysterious, crazy place, you'll get a better answer. But isn't there... Isn't the world somewhat mechanistic? Isn't it useful to think of it as mechanistic? There are mechanistic like if we're... elements. However, the left brain look only looks at the mechanistic elements, and if it's not a mechanistic element, they'll ignore it. Just look like carpentry, like yes. cellular so, structure, like like it's firearms, fun. like yes. <laughs> munitions. Um, these things they're they're they work mechanistically, yes. right? Things that relate to power are mechanistic, and that's the point the book says. For the left hemisphere, the reason we evolved it, because our left hemisphere is much more developed than animals. Because humans, we had to develop how to change the world. And so uh, the left hemisphere is that which relates to power, and the right hemisphere is that which relates to being. And so a society that would be very left hemisphere driven, would, it would be incredibly technologically advanced. It would be very wealthy, but at the same time, it would suffer deep depression. It would be committing social suicide, and um, it would have no idea why it's living. And so that's our society. What, what What do you mean by mechanistic? Maybe we have different different definitions. I'm I'm thinking mechanistic as mechanical, working yeah. with different parts, and, and so for the economy, you can figure out how to grow the economy through. Um, thinking, I look at these policies, these policies are effective. Thus, you establish incentive structures for those policies and your economy does better. For being and living, you can't do that. You have to gradually engineer your minds towards happiness and acceptance. And so through achieving goals, the left hemisphere works. I'll just use an example. I have a buddy who was obsessed with uh, basically pickup artistry. And so he would constantly study all of these methods on like he'd write scripts on how to pull girls and he constantly studied it. And then he found he didn't do, he kept on hitting all these thresholds. And the reality was he had to, he had to learn to basically just vibe in the situation and empathize with the girl and feel the energy and the vibe where you can't and read the room where you can't, uh, we're getting it's some kind of possible. feedback right here. Sorry. I don't know what happened. Something changed. You're, it's like there's some yeah, there's feedback. Yeah, there's a plane flew above me. Um, oh, it did? Oh, okay. So what I was saying is my buddy, he was he would systematize his dates where he'd write out lists of scripts that they had to girls and he'd pre-plan them. And he hit a certain threshold. This guy sounds like a real jerk right here. <laughs> he stopped being friends. Um, <laughs> and, and so the problem, though, is that that doesn't work past a certain threshold where he had to... So hold on. So you're saying the mechanistic model breaks down at some point. It makes breaks down past a certain range of behavior um, right. where uh, this guy, yeah, he ran into issues where like girls realized he was trying to manipulate them and it came across as robotic and weird. And so his social interactions came off as kind of strange because he was scripting them. And the thing he didn't get is you have to develop a kind of sixth sense for social issues. Uh, this is what this person is feeling. This is how I act. And you vibe. And I think of the great generals where a couple months ago I read JFC Fuller's 2000 page history of Western warfare. And what I find at the best generals is they developed a mind of permanent generalship where they were able to intuitively realize what was going on in the battlefield, and they made the correct decision to the split second. And for a lot of these battles, the brilliance came from making the right making a silly and stupid decision of we charge the enemy at exactly the right time. And so when we've tried to mechanize warfare with this is a manual of exactly when you attack, that's what the Soviets did, Soviets versus Nazis. The Nazis could kill three Soviets for every casualty they took because the Soviet military command structure was we pre-plan have a scientific method of warfare where everyone follows these orders perfectly by manual. The Nazis had a system. We will give these guys as much combat experience as possible and training so that they can make up strategies on the fly and intuitively figure out. And so the Nazi military worked far better than the Soviet because it prioritized intuition and, and practical skill over mechanism.
Right. I I don't know that intuition and mechanism and mechanistic thinking are at odds. But first, uh, people are saying they don't like your audio setup. Maybe if you put a towel under your laptop, is your laptop sitting on some sort of hard surface or? Yeah, I'm uh I'm out on my porch. You know, it's great. I, it must be like spring there. It seems like a great. Yeah. I'll grab you know, a beautiful, towel. Grab beautiful a summer day. Okay. Hmm. That's weird. I didn't hear anything. Sounds pretty good to me. But... Yeah. Okay. Usually I'm very sensitive to that stuff. But listen, yeah. Adam, I'm on board with the, the, all the spiritual CA stuff. Okay. Yeah, I know. That's why look, I'm not going to debunk up. anything. <laughs> speak up. Look, I, I, this, the, a lot of times people use the, the quantum mechanics thing as mm -hmm. some sort of excuse for the the mechanist the me mechanistic worldview, but it just okay. So you get down to the quantum level, and it just it's a different mechanistic principle. It's probability, but it's still mechanistic. How's it not? Well, I guess this is what we can ask when he comes back. There, I would imagine everything could be understood on a mechanistic level. It's just we don't have the capacity. Or the understanding to do it right is that kind of your, yeah your point? of course yes there so you go. like the like you could understand like you in theory i would imagine that you if you were smart enough or you had an ai great enough which maybe this will be the future it could map out like a dialogue tree for like a conversation you know to pick up like any chick essentially right and it would be pretty successful <laughs> like uh, yeah. like you know what actually it's funny True. i think about that you know, you're going to have the, the, this weird AI deep learning machine that you basically uh, develop to like pick up chicks that maybe you can have in your pocket or when we all have a little Google glasses on or whatever. And it's just going to like take whatever they're saying and it's going to give you like the best, you know, dialogue response, you know, back. That's going to be wild. But... Yeah, a lot of women are going to be upset about that. They're going to be like, I sure. thought this was a guy. I wanted to marry this guy. And he just right. like had sex with me and ran. Well, that, it I mean, turns that out was, the AI totally tricked me. Yeah, and that was kind of like the joke in the that South Park episode, where basically, you know, all the boys were using a uh, Chat GPT oh, to respond right. to the girl's text message, essentially, because they didn't want to deal with it. So, all right, let's hear it right Hold here. Up. Hello, Estas. Oh, okay. that is better. Yeah. Um. So what I was saying is that most of the human condition can't fit into systematized systems. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you can't have a purely mechanical vision of the world. Um, and like love or happiness. Love and happiness are not systems. They're mindsets that you gradually Love evolve. is a trick to to make people pair up into reproductive Com units. Communist, communism. Like it, oh, it is a mechanism. It's the perfect thing, actually. So if you look at the left hemisphere, the idea is that if you understand the how, you understand the why. So love is a chemical that exists to make us, trick us into breeding. But yes. in the right hemisphere, you know that the feeling of love is amazing and procreating is a meaningful thing. So you stop viewing it from a cold and personal perspective, but you see it as your perspective as an individual through that. So if the left hemisphere, you're seeing things from above, you see the mechanical processes which occur, the right hemisphere is you see what it feels like and what you're doing and how it relates to you. Yeah, but right. isn't aren't both those true? Like there is that feeling uh, that you sense and then it just there is a mechanical right. truth to it, what's going we on. We evolved right? the left hemisphere to have power and to do right. things to our environment. And so that's why it's the emissary. The left hemisphere is effective. However, the left hemisphere also can't see the right hemisphere, but the right hemisphere can see the left hemisphere. So the left hemisphere will make short sights that mm -hmm. the right hemisphere won't. And communism is a great example of that. Where communism, we will build this mechanistic view for... Uh, to build the utopia. And so we'll build this mechanical system and this worldview that's true by definition. The problem though, is that communism is so low context that it can't operate with the real human world. Hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I agree with that. But look at successful social institutions. They're not mechanically designed. They form organically from people. Liberalism, yeah. there's no liberal political philosophy. It was just what evolved in Northwestern Europe at the time. And so you can't organically build philosophies or religions through the left hemisphere. They have to come from the right. Well, I guess, yeah, but see, like, I think that's a good example because we actually talked about that in a stream in the past about how it's easier. 
uh, was it like spontaneous order, I think was the concept. It's easier for these like very complicated systems to arrive, to kind of arise on their own piecemeal. Emergent phenomena. And so there is a yeah. paper where the left- But wait, but wait, let me, let me finish. So, but isn't that just like, that's because these things are so complicated that we can't, we just don't have the capacity right now to logically like figure them out, right? We will never be at the point to logically figure them out. Um, you don't think there would be like some magic AI that's smart enough to just figure this stuff out? The problem with AI, though, is AI relates to the information that you feed it. So AI right. is a reflection of the information that's fed into it. And the point I would say is there is a place for both of them where there are certain days where I just write a bullet list of five things I'm going to accomplish in that day. And I write it how I'm going to accomplish them. I just do that. That being said, if you're on vacation... It's easier just to wander around Florence and have fun and do what you feel like than we must do every single activity in Florence. No, but like I would, okay, maybe this is the cynic in me, but I would imagine that theoretically you could have a magic algorithm that could create the best, I, you know, best vacation plan for you to follow. But that would also include like the vibe of maybe not wanting to seem like following a vacation plan, right? That, like there's a way to mechanicalistically like do all this stuff. We just don't have that capacity. But the mechanical stuff comes from the right hemisphere because mm -hmm. I have a friend where she's done very well professionally. And then she said, Rudyard, I spent my whole life preparing for this. I don't know who I am. And so uh, you have to know who you are intuitively from personal experience. And then from that, you have to pick up what you like and dislike through intuition, and then you can use the left hemisphere to propel that. Where I think of my business, I've picked up various traits and skills from it, and those are things I've picked up holistically through doing it, and then I can use the left hemisphere when I, let's say, plan my budget for the next month. So the left hemisphere is useful in certain tasks or building a machine, mm -hmm. but the right hemisphere is the one which manages how your total life. Yeah, no, I, like... And I understand all that and I agree with that. I guess the only thing I was just saying is I would imagine that all these things could be explained me mechanicalistically, even if we don't perceive them through that lens or have the ability to do no. so, right? Because whenever we make AIs or computer models for this stuff, mm -hmm. uh, for example, computer models didn't predict the 2008 financial crash. They didn't predict COVID. They didn't predict... Computer models can't predict the future because they don't have enough data. So if you made a computer that could predict everything, to predict everything because everything is connected with everything else, you'd have to predict the whole world. That computer would be God. Right, 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 right. Well, I'm not saying that we'd be able to predict everything. I'm just saying like, like going back to, you know, people having psychic power stuff, like there is a, some mechanical, you know, physical explanation for how those abilities would work, right? Even if we don't understand it, it's not just like yeah. magic. So everything happens through ways and reasons. Mm -hmm. Knowing that right. reason doesn't mean that it's not valid. So we know neurologically what the psychological experiences of religion are. So we can look at the, the mind of a Buddhist monk and their minds mm -hmm. work differently than normal people. But the thing is that doesn't explain the profundity of the feeling of the business, the Buddhist monk or the holiness. Like if you wouldn't God, feel it even if just because you know it, you're not going to feel if it. God acts reason? through the world. So imagine Moses is next to a burning bush. Moses right. sees the burning fush, uh, bush. We can chemically know the process through which the bush caught on fire, but chemically knowing how that happens doesn't take this away from being a holy experience. Um, I guess, yeah. I mean, I, it depends on how you look at it. Because some people they want Again, the they said. want the divine to be like not explainable via science, as opposed to there could be some scientific explanation, but still yes, that is the divine trying to talk to you, right? My favorite writer, Amory Duryakur, said that um, we view God as this out of the machine guy who's mm -hmm. like this mechanic, who's this again, this is the left hemisphere. Um, right. Left hemisphere worldview would give, view God as a mechanic. You view God as a mechanic who's moving stuff around. But the way traditional religions view God is that God is the canvas of the world. And so God is the world and it, things are constantly if God wants to speak to you, he will bring a friend to you to tell you information you need to see. So we exist in the mind of God, and then God has the world act for us. And through the process of our life, that is a process through God. Right. It's kind of like, you know, the joke about the guy who's on the house when it's flooding and he keeps asking God for help. And it's like yeah. a guy in a boat shows up, a helicopter shows up, and the That's guy like, keeps saying, I'll wait for God to show up. And then obviously the guy drowns and he yells at God and God's like, well, I sent you a boat and a helicopter. I don't know what you wanted. Like, so, right. Okay. You wanted God to come personally. 
Right. Look, I am here. I am God and I am here to help. Yeah, people kind of have this idea about this, like something magical is supposed to happen, which I mean, sometimes things appear to be magical, but doesn't mean it is. Also, my idea is that the world is such a beautiful and profound place. Mm -hmm. And we kind of just we take for granted how beautiful it is. And I think about I've been to some crazy places in the world and the idea that there are places in the world like Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls is something you'd see in a fantasy novel. The existence of America. I go to Walmart. I'm shocked Walmart exists or Costco. Is it insane that we have these supply chains that work this well, that sells food this cheaply? The idea that Alexander the Great happened or that the dinosaurs used to exist. Um, a Komodo dragon, that's a mythical creature. The world is a stunningly beautiful place, but we pretend it isn't. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Well, I think um, a lot of that is like a cultural thing, though, and can you know, directly be traced back to thinking of the world mechanistically, scientifically. Yeah. I mean, the reason why we have Walmart is because of mechanistic thinking. Yes, right. The reason we have medicine is because of mechanistic thinking. I'm not, I'm not saying mechanistic thinking isn't useful. I'm saying it has its place, though. Right. But, I mean, there is a question on whether or not the world is fundamentally mechanistic or whether it's fundamentally oh. about consciousness. So my theory is if you study the ancient esoteric tradition, there are the seven planetary gods. And so the idea is that these gods operate across the universe and they push their own different inf influences. So the ideal here is that the universe has seven different kinds of principles. So there are mechanistic areas of it. There are spiritual areas. There are areas that operate of chaos theory. So there are multiple theories that I think explain the world. So certain aspects of reality are mechanistic and other ones aren't. Right. Do you know about the hard con the hard problem of consciousness? That they yeah. can't Which, find a mechanistic understanding of exactly. consciousness? Yeah. I, one of the book I recommended you, Adam, The Secret History of the World, talks about that. And the thing that that Secret History of the World changed how I see the world. That and is the, a great book. I really enjoyed that book. The whole idea it has there is that it's a history of the world from the perspective of consciousness. And mysticism is the science of consciousness. And that what a, myst, a mystic objectively says, what they see is they delve into their consciousness. So they meditate, they do spiritual exercises, and the deeper they fall into their consciousness, the more uh, they see certain things. And so you can see these principles across from society to society. We don't know why they exist, but we objectively know that there are certain things you see once you go into your consciousness. Right, but hmm. how those conscious experiences exist in a mechanistic world, that's a thing that why do they have the scientific theory? We see them and they affect our lives and they control how happy we are. Don't they exist because well, we want to understand them. We want to understand them. That's, yeah, but that's did, why. We didn't understand the new world until we sailed there. Um and I have I have some friends that are working on spiritual tech technology. Um I have a friend who runs a company based off lucid dreaming and so you can i don't know if uh I don't oh, that's know good i want to do so, that yeah i could hook you guys up um yes definitely so what he type does, in your dream you're like yes yeah, so i know what you're gonna type you the spirit world through that process and i have um, maybe like tiff uh <laughs> i'm gonna use it for spiritual exploration not for degeneracy how dare oh, you oh sure sure and uh yeah, and so you have, and then there are other people like the Monroe Institute. That's a great example. There are people who use uh, psychedelics. So there are different methods to reach the spirit world, but we actually have to go there and to do that. And one of, I think, there's something that has to develop over the course of our lives is we need to build an organization whose role is to explore the spirit world and develop spiritual principles. And mm -hmm. um, because if we do that, we can then modern society is my one one of my, there's an author named Carol Quigley who's one of the best historians, and he has six metrics for how societies operate. Economics, religion, intellectual, co uh, social, um, political, and um, and military. I think I might have repeated one or two. But mm -hmm. the six metrics, in writing in the 60s, he said, the West is very advanced in every single one of these but it's weak on it's weak on social and it's can't work horrible on religion. And so he said in the 60s, the book's written, called Tragedy and Hope, and it's a history of the 1890s till the 1960s. And his thesis was that 
The tragedy is the world wars. The hope is writing in the 60s. He hoped that there would be a spiritual revolution. What he said, the hippies were a weak manifestation of this spiritual impulse. And he said, if the West couldn't fix its religious axis, then it the religious axis will become a cancer that consumes everything. And you look at wokeness. Wokeness is effectively a failed religion, but it consumes our economic access. It consumes our intellectual access. It consumes our social access. It consumes our military access and our political access. So our religion turned cancerous. And thus wokeness, a cancerous religion, developed and started destroying the rest of society. Mm -hmm. So so what what are the properties of this spirit world? Well, wait, 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 wait. Before we get into that, there's one thing I want to say about the importance that you're kind of talking about, Adam, about understanding this stuff mechanically. Because while well, right, I understand right. that we don't, and so like the people that are at the forefront, we'll just have to, I guess, do it, and then we'll kind of find out through through you know backwards. But the reason I think it is important to try to figure out this stuff from a more mechanical level, something that you said at the end of your video on this that I agree with completely, which is that. You know, you have people go and they have these spiritual experiences and these visions and they kind of develop theories about how the world yes. works and essentially say that like people should live according to these principles or whatever. And, you know, you were saying that, and I agree with this completely, which is that, you know, I think if this spiritual world exists, if this psychic stuff exists and it's ex like some kind of way of communication or understanding that's not through like standard language, a lot of it is through vibes or impressions. A lot of yeah. it does seem to be rooted in sort of like, interpretation especially in people's own life experiences and so it seems like when people have these sorts of visions it's very super duper easy like a dream almost to project their own meaning right. or for the, the message to be related to their own you know subconscious issues and i yeah. think that's kind of the danger of people kind of looking at these visions and entombing you know interpreting these literal interpretations from them I've got a lot of buddies that do this sort of thing. And what I see often is whatever their anxieties at that time get reflected in the spirit world. And that freaks yes. them. And yes. I've studied world religions. And each world religion is partly a reflection of the society that made it. And that's partly good because the thing with that is that the religions, if they're reflections of that society, it means the religion is tailor-made to that society. If you took modern sciencism, dropped it in the Bronze Age, it would be completely incomprehensible to them. And if mm -hmm. we sacrifice children to ball anymore um and and um so that's partly good because it makes makes it interactive with that society but it also reinforces uh their own psychological issues and so for example the reason i think christianity is such a strong emphasis on love is the roman empire with this horrifying slave society where like 20 percent of the population were slaves who could be whipped raped tortured to death and they had no rights. And it was it felt like a very cold and impersonal and ruthless society. So I think that's what the reaction of love came from. Or China, the reason Confucianism arose in China is for rice farming and their style of farming. You have to have lots of people cooperate on the farm. So you develop this religion based around family. You just need to hold the family together so that everyone can hold the farm together. Mm -hmm. I read the reason that people did human sacrifice was because there was so much pain and death in the world. I think about it like child mortality <laughs> rates right? were like 50%. So yeah. they thought that the whoever created the world had to be, you know, a, a yeah. just wanted death and destruction. I had have... to be completely evil. So they thought, look, if we pick who we sacrifice, it'll satiate this yeah. God that wants right. a lot of death and destruction. Which it's a pretty logical train of thought there, right? I have two answers for this. The one you said is correct, and I have a couple additional ones. I don't know if you guys saw my emotions video, The Seven Emotions That Drive Civilization. I think that's my best video. But tribal cultures are fear-based. And so when you look at the God of the Old Testament, the reason he's so brutal is he's from a society where the only way you can motivate people is through fear. So the Assyrians, the most powerful empire of the ancient Middle East, uh, they had propaganda in their capital of them showing their enemies eating their own children because that society, the way it worked is we want to show how badass and strong we are. That's how we motivate loyalty. So if you're in a primitive society, the top motivator is fear. So you want to be as scary as possible. And so that's why the God of the Old Testament is so scary. The second answer is that it's symbolic for self-sacrifice, where as a society, this this era of history, it didn't really have – everything was seen symbolically, where our society is the opposite issue, where we have no symbolism and no moral truths, 
in the pre-Iron Age world, there's no logic. The ancient Greeks developed modern logic. Um, and so the idea is we have to sacrifice to the natural order. And so, for example, you have a war. You have to have some of your men die in the war. Some women have to die in childbirth. So the idea is we have to sacrifice naturally to our gods in order for society to survive. So to show our loyalty and our willingness to sacrifice what we need to do for the gods, let's just kill people for the gods. And so it's partly a way of demonstrating their moral code that they're willing to sacrifice certain things for the gods. And then over time, as the religion got developed, they started to see it more subtly of, okay, we can do daily sacrifices of being a good person or uh, not being promiscuous or being brave. And they, these daily sacrifices substitute for just having to kill off our own people. So Human sacrifice, what a fun time. Man. You guys read Joseph Campbell? Just, yeah, yeah. here yeah, with a thousand faces. Authors. He's one of the worst authors I've read in my life, but I've read The Masks of his go of the Gods, which is history right. of mythology. And The Masks of the Gods, I learned so much useful stuff from that book, even though it was torturous to read. Yeah, I read Hero with a Thousand Faces, and it did seem like kind of a slog, actually, but everyone always says, oh, this book's amazing, so. Yeah, <laughs> it's totally Star Wars. Like, if you look at the plot of Star Wars, they're clearly doing it off Joseph Campbell. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. directly. So, so do you want to go back to the what are the properties of the spirit world or such what do you got uh okay yeah we can you can do that look i'm just i want to understand this i mean it just it seems like a bunch of nonsense to me i'm gonna be <laughs> i'm gonna be real with you here okay <laughs> we've talked for look i do i do think i do look i i'm a huge fan of donald hoffman and donald hoffman has this theory that we can't we're never going to solve the hard problem of consciousness mechanistically and the way to do it is to think that the world is made up really of consciousness interacting with one another. So it's a fat, it's a fascinating theory. I think he could be right, but I don't, he could be wrong too. So, yeah. but what, what is the, like the spirit world? What is described this? What are the properties of the spirit world? Um, so multiple things. I'd like to change the topic. You talked about this for an hour and I think, uh, Adam and I will agree to disagree. Um, but <laughs> look, you're not look you're okay you're running he's running he doesn't he doesn't know what the properties are here it is oh, let me explain it guys to you. look he's running your vouch um, running scared <laughs> you challenge my honor i will answer any question you give me yeah okay okay but, um so uh the way the spirit world works is that there's concentric circles around the earth and this is what the esoteric okay. tradition said um where there's the seven planetary gods of Mars, Venus, Gaia, or Earth, Uranus, etc. And each of these planetary gods are different principles of the universe. And so when you read the Iliad as an example, when they say Mars took the side of the Trojans, it's an ancient psychological version of saying the Trojans fought more ferociously. And so the way they saw the world was if the um, if these people are fighting more heroically, the martial warrior spirit of Mars is helping the Trojans. So their psychological primordial force has entered the Persians, right? The, the Trojans or um, mother nature. Mother nature is symbolic for the chaotic forces of nature. So for example, if you build your house too close to a, a, a flooding area and the flooding uh, kills your house, um, then that's mother nature taking revenge against you for your foolishness. Um, so that's how they saw the world. And so there are these seven spirits. And then as you can, you can kind of go into the warrens or the spiritual part of the universe, which relates to this. And so you guys know the tree Yggdrasil? Yeah. That's a very like common yeah. but the world is a tree. Um, I've been playing God of War 4. Okay, I know what's going on. There are on. the different uh, subparts of the tree. And so you can pull magic from different ones. So you go to the land of the elves, the land of the dwarves, uh, the hell, heaven, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Asgard, Anaheim. And so there are these different spiritual realms you can go to. And as you move further and further out in the spirit world, you get weirder and weirder stuff. And it's less like our reality. And so when you get to the final layer, which is God, you hit infinity. And infinity is yet nothing and yet everything. And so our world is predicated upon its disunity in that everything in our world is... Uh, disunited and infinite and hard and everything is through its relation of what it is not i am rudyard you are adam you are sitch we are not each other we are independent people with independent problems um mm -hmm. and 
in infinity, it's God and everything is united. And so the, uni the unity of God creates a duality with the division of the physical world. And um, so it's these concentric circles until you hit God. And um, what Monroe saw, what Monroe saw is that um, one of my neighbors are drawing a, a, draw, driving a golf cart next to me. Um, and what what Monroe saw is there's an Indic spirit world and an Abrahamic spirit world. So you have the two great religious traditions. Almost all world religions are either Indic mythology or Abrahamic mythology in that the Christians, the Jews, the Muslims are one mythological tradition. The Indians and the Buddhists are another and Confucianism is not a real religion. Um, and so the Indic spirit world, the way it operates is that we're all souls stuck in the infinite wheel of reincarnation and some can escape the nirvana. The world the CIA saw is the same as Indic mythology. The Abrahamic is these is basically us going up to God in these concentric circles with angels and demons between us and God. And what Monroe believes and what the Buddha said as well is that there are different continents of the spirit world in the same manner where if you, you're a European sailing west, you could take different routes to the US, Canada, Brazil, Mexico, whatever. And so these different religions are... Religions are built off authentic experiences. So when the Vikings or the Chinese or the Indians go to the spirit world, they're writing down their mythologies based off what their shamans or priests actually see there. And so the idea they have is that these different world religions are actually seeing different geographic regions of the spirit world. They're using different spiritual methods. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. So the, the one thing I want to ask before we move on to a different topic was... Um, you know, in other videos, and I've heard other people talk about this, James Lindsay talked about this, there is sort of this idea, and I think you've talked about this, that a lot of woke stuff is Gnostic. rooted in this kind of Gnostic idea that humans are God or or have the ability to alter their reality in some fashion. Yeah. And it seems like a lot of this, the ideas that you're talking about here are also could easily go down that pathway. And do you think that's like a thing to look out for? Is there a way to separate right, these two right. things? I was reading Avola's a book on Hermeticism, where Avola is the most popular fascist philosopher. And I do read, yeah. although I'm Super a fascist, I do read fascist philosophy, as I do also read leftist philosophy. I'm a diverse guy. Um, I try to read every worldview. So I've read some Islamic histories, Christian histories, fascist, leftist, anarchist, uh, because I want to know how everyone else thinks. Um, and when I was reading Avola's work, I realized this is very similar to Gnosticism. And what Avola said is that there is the way of goodness and there is the way of kings. So for Hermeticism, the ideal is you want to get as powerful as possible. And for uh, Christianity, it's you want to get as good as possible. So I definitely think that um, – I definitely think Gnosticism is a potential worry with this stuff. And that's, mm -hmm. I don't think that the modern communists and Nazis are directly Gnostic. I think they evolved from Gnosticism and they have a similar worldview. I don't think that like, if you ask a communist, are you a Gnostic? They wouldn't know what that means. Um, and in the same way that Christianity, Christianity pulls on like six different ancient religions. So the reason Christmas is on uh, tw December 25th 25th is that was the birthday of Mithras and the Christians stole Mithras's birthday for a holiday. And so you can see these religious continuities, even if the people involved aren't aware of it. And I definitely think that's a worry where when I look at Gnosticism, when you look at the spirit world, I believe the truth is a cone. You can hug different parts of the cone to see the same truth from exactly opposite perspectives. And so it's interesting where my sister and I, we will tell very sto different stories of what our childhood was like, even though we were in the same place because we had different perspectives. So Gnosticism is a perspective you can see from the spirit world organically from different perspectives. Uh, but I don't think Gnosticism is a good perspective. Um, and so, yeah, you're right where that's a genuine worry. Okay. So is there another topic that you want to talk about? Was, specifically? Uh, let, me just, uh, let me run to the bathroom first. Okay, you run the bathroom. I'm gonna talk. I might talk some shit. Well, okay. I just, well, I, ha I have to. I might have to BRB in a second too. But what? what, what oh, what really? Happened? Everyone's leaving me alone with the chat. What's yeah. going on here? Look, I just the whole spirit world thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get he's saying like the spirit world is kind of a place that that gives warriors fighting vigor and you know chastises they, mm -hmm. women, adulterous women, and like it's this place that that dispenses 
certain energies and emotions to people, but I just, I don't know how you can, it just seems like a way of categorizing the world that um, is interesting and it just doesn't seem. Well, I, I think there's, I mean, I mean, you agree that it gives people these motivations. I guess the, the disagreement is no, I don't think I, that it's, that it <laughs> yeah. has something that's like, like real, like you think it's all just made up essentially, right? Yeah. I don't think it comes from a place called the spirit world. I think, right. you know, obviously there's, there's a cultural evolution aspect that I'd be more inclined to think is closer to the truth. Mm -hmm. If, if a certain set of warriors fights more stridently, you know, more passionately than another, than another army, it's probably it has cultural reasons for it. It doesn't, right. it's not like the spirit world comes in and says, Oh, here, here's some LSD or here's some, here's some crystal meth. It, Go it, at it. Right. And sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, Roger. The principle where you look at the same thing from opposite perspectives. And mm -hmm. so you can end up with different definitions uh, from looking at the same process. So these, the ancient Greek worldview viewed the world as these immortal concepts that take control of people. So mental illness is a good example of this. Mental illnesses are a collective issue where like you can get schizophrenia. And so you are being possessed by the spirit of schizophrenia rather than an individual thing. So you can choose to view it as this mental illness being taken in by this person, or you can view it as the mental illness taking over a person. So there's this objective external psychological force that takes over people. And so bloodlust is a trait which exists across humanity. And so the idea is when someone becomes possessed by bloodlust, that's this external force, which is taking over the people involved or like love. Right. Is that a better way to conceptualize it? And Depends on your worldview where like, for example, the Indians think reality is an illusion. Indian culture thinks that reality doesn't really, reality is an illusion by our eyes. And that's a worldview that's gone back thousands of years. I, it's in If it's an external force is it easier or harder to control like obviously bloodlust is normal i think people want to oh yeah tamp that down they, yeah well so, i guess obviously not you but i think a, a society is better if most people tamp down their bloodlust unless you or, need it we needed bloodlust when we were fighting the nazis well i mean that's a good point <laughs> i just yeah and so I think these theories have different levels of validity where I think mo I think there are theories that have better and worse because I, I think communism is uh, worse than liberalism, but they have different degrees of validity. And so validity? The, the thing that's more valid about this uh, ancient medieval worldview is that it controls for the reality of mental health better than our current one. Did you watch my psychological black death video? I probably did. I watched most of your videos, but I'm not sure Thank I could you. recall it. In and so detail, it's the but... idea I had there are psychological pathogens. So if you have the idea that there are psychological pathogens, it's a similar idea to what these ancient Greeks believe, where there are these external forces which affect people or depression. And so what well, that uh, look, what is the diff what is the difference between isn't just some tradition, couldn't some tradition be defined as a psychological pathogen? Yeah, like what, so what is the difference? That's an idea in hermeticism. Yeah. So Christianity, imagine you drop a pond, a rock in a pond, and then ripples go outwards. Right. And um, so Christ created this spiritual pathogen that then spread around the world and then took people's souls. And so you will have these path, path in the same way germs attach themselves to our body, ideas attach themselves to different people. Yep. So, but if those ideas are useful and serve a purpose and make the 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 society more prolific then they stick around if they just if they have the yeah. opposite effect the society is destroyed exactly and what i'd right. say about this worldview is that it's existed in most societies for most of history so it is it is a stabilizing force that's that has worked pretty well but is it is it the ideas or is it the fact that the ideas have some sort of utility that's like a great that's, question that's really hard yeah. to answer. Where, for example, the idea of, let me say it this way. You don't want a society where people are constantly raping other people. Um, right. And so you end up with the idea is, is 
So it, it's it, this is something with the left brain. It's hard to distinguish the act of not raping people is you can't distinguish the act of not raping people from the thing that makes people not rape people. And so like if there you have an idea that makes people not rape people, it is the act of not raping people that's good. But the thing that also gets people to not rape people is also good. Hmm. Why well, there's like a social prohibition on rape, which is a good thing. Yes. But I would argue that it also has utility. That's why it, it's sustained and exists. Yes. Um yeah, I don't think we're in disagreement here. Right. Okay. This is my last day of keto. Uh, so I did one month of keto. I'm taking two weeks off when my family's visiting me. Um, some buddies visiting me. And now tomorrow is my uh, first day of back on keto. So I'm Returning ordering to keto. What is keto? Keto is where you. It's a low eat. fat diet where uh, you don't eat. Sorry, it's a low carb diet. Where you don't eat any carbohydrates, and so your body naturally flips into uh, into burning your fat to survive. So it's a fat. Right. It's a, oh, it's a, okay. It's a switch your body does to to eat, start eating your own fat, and it's an evolution from surviving the winter. Right. Yeah, I don't eat any carbs. So weight reason or for other reasons? I'm doing it for weight reason. Mm -hmm. I know that our resident uh, nutritionist Sammy hates keto. I think the keto diet. So keto varies massively genetically. It works for some people genetically and other people not. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're not of North European ancestry, keto probably won't work. But I've done keto like six times. I lost forty pounds in a four month period off keto. Once. Oh yeah, you'll lose weight. Yeah, definitely a keto. Can Sitch, can I ask you a question about the spirit world? <laughs> if you <laughs> want, ever, sure. Everyone seems to want to move on, but I just I, I don't really. Keto I don't think we've investigated. I was going to say bullshit. Um, keto is or the spirit? I was, no, I was just going to say, how do you attain a keto sigma wolf mindset? <laughs> keto sigma wolf mindset. Well, hmm. What was the question you wanted to ask me? Evan? What makes you so sure the spirit world exists? Uh, what me makes you so confident? Oh, yeah. me? me. Sitch, but you can answer afterwards. I just. Well, for me. It's just when I've, I've told a couple of these stories on stream, I've just had various things that happen to me that make me believe um, that there's like weird spiritual stuff out there that is not explained according to our current understanding of the world. That's the only reason why I believe it. Right. Um, but you know, there could I've be a mechanistic. Stream, you know, I've talked on stream about how, you know, when I was in middle school, I would have like these random dreams of the future that would always be like inconsequential, but but still like it's a dream of the future, which is pretty crazy. And then I think I said, I have had a couple of out of body experiences. And then there's one experience that I'm not going to talk about on stream because it's too crazy and people will just freak out. So, but that's why, just because of my own experiences. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I I've had like one experience, I think when I was like five years old, but mm -hmm. I just, I assume that it was just my silly five-year-old brain. What happened? There, I was, it was like a, I was at some daycare and they had like a kit of children's size kitchenette where you play pretend. Mm -hmm. And I went over to the faucet and I turned the faucet on and I ran my hands under the water and like, um, then later on the teacher said, Oh, that's not a real sink. And I went back and I tried to turn the water on and I couldn't turn the water on, but I like mm. swore. I was like, wait a second. That's pretty what interesting. The fuck. Yeah. Uh, and it always freaked me out. I always kept going back to that sink and I was like, sink. <laughs> water came out of the sink. I remember I was washing my hands, mm -hmm. but that's kind of the only, the only kind of weird. Okay. This is just, I'm tripping here. Yeah. So I had that, but, but like it. a lot and more extreme. So I yeah. Guess okay. Difference. Well, I could see if you had that consistently. Right. But I mean, I only had it one time when I was a kid. So maybe, look, maybe the spirit mm -hmm. world exists. It wasn't enough to convince me. So a bunch of teen girls just drove past my porch in a golf cart as a dog chased them and they were screaming. So I had to mute my, my computer. <laughs> you should have turned it around and captured that. That would have been there great for the stream. <laughs> that was listen that was the, the I don't spirit want to trying to contact you okay what was that i don't want so to what was, so why do you believe oh, you don't want to dox your location yeah, as in rudyard yes mm -hmm. 
Um, so a couple of reasons. The first is that every other society believes in this. And so I think that if everyone else does and lots of brilliant people who thought about this stuff very deeply, that's reason one. Reason two is I've had lots of personal spiritual experiences. Uh, some of them are too crazy that I'm not going to talk about in stream, but I told Adam about before. Nice. Uh, and I pray to God for signs and I this like 30 times and every single time I get a sign and I prayed for five in a row when I got signs for each of them. And so I'm basically like, I choose to believe at this point. And mm -hmm. uh, so I got into geopolitics when I was 16, where I had a stabbing pain in my stomach that made me know that the world, the world system was going to collapse. And so I had the stabbing pain for two weeks that told me that. And so I started studying geopolitics to figure out how that could happen. Okay. Yeah. Just stuff like that. Or like I had premonition I had to get out of Peru the day before COVID. And so I got the last flight on last call out of Peru and then Peru closed its borders. So <laughs> nice. Okay. My life. Uh, right. Where I've had like, oh. I've had many spiritual experiences in my life. So on a personal basis, that's what inclines me to believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I've always been very lucky. I mean, I think it's more important to be like lucky than than correct mm -hmm. sometimes but mm -hmm. so but i would just c categorize that as just you know you've gotten lucky no but like if if it's a spiritual if you so my stomach i i knew the feeling i could sense it inside of me i right. could sense the, the that and if you open, so one of my buddies says, he says, I don't believe in coincidence, but I don't believe in, I don't believe in conspiracies, but I don't believe in coincidences. So if there's enough things that are coincidences, the idea is there must be some underlying cause. And the thing is the universe is infinitely large. So we could assume there are lots of causal variables in the universe we don't know about. Do you, what was your take on the pandemic? What do you mean? Well, just your logic also applies to the pandemic, right? A lot of people believed it. A lot of a lot of people. Oh, um, so there's a couple of things where I've made the decision. I refuse to have a belief about it. And so with the pandemic, I just don't trust any of the information I see. I think okay. ever the pandemic. And so when so, I look at it. So um, what's different about the pandemic then? And, and so that's the last 20 years. What we're looking at here is thousands of years of history for all of history. That are all around the world, every society. So for a 20 year time frame, that's a lot less uh that's a lot less verification and independent people from different places reaching the same conclusion as one 20 year period as sorry, as one four year period. Right. Well, I guess my question is if you hadn't had these personal experiences, would would it be like would you care about like the traditional aspect of it? I think I would. Um, because I, I, I've, my area of study is the Middle Ages. And so this stuff, the more you dig into the Middle Ages, the more obvious it is. Well, do you think that the things that the reason that these, or do you think that because these things happened to you was kind of what made you more interested in the Middle Ages? No, I've been interested in the Middle Ages ever since I was a toddler. Oh, okay. I was a sense of night as a kid. Nice. Okay. Well, we can talk about a different topic. Is there something that you want to talk about? I have some other questions. Oh, anthropology is a topic I've wanted to cover because it's my speciality, but I very mm -hmm. rarely get to talk about it. So I, I can talk about world civilizations, different cultures. Um, have you guys seen The Room by Tommy Wiseau? Of course. Of course. Yeah, I've seen Oh, I've to, hi, Mark. I've been to five midnight showings and I've met Tommy Wiseau. Wow. That's pretty cool. He's, Tommy Wiseau is exactly what you expect. Wow. Where is he from? Uh so he says he's from Louisiana. That is not true. We've <laughs> unearthed some records saying he's probably Polish. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, I've I've read Reddit threads of Polish people saying he talks like he's Polish. Wasn't there some conspiracy that he was like a mobster or something? Or had some weird yeah, connection? So he made his money. The room cost like five million dollars, which he all funded out of his own pocket, and right. five million dollars was like be like in 2000 like 12 million dollars today um and so he had a lot of money just to throw around and he says he got it in the korean leather jacket trade which sounds pretty sus hmm okay well wait so I, why did you bring up the room because i was gonna ask you a different I, know, but I, I, my, I intuitively thought you guys would know about the room and be interested in it oh yeah i mean i don't know what to ask you about the room <laughs> 
It's a strange movie. It is a weird movie. I guess I, I was, here's a question related to this. Why did Japan adapt to like Westernism yeah. so well and no other country that we kind of try to force onto it? Westernism doesn't right. seem to adapt. Uh, I'm working on a Japanese civilization video. I'm mm -hmm. uh, five. I'm going to read seven books and I'm five books in. I'm actually reading a history of Japan as we, Japan. I'm reading a history of Japan as we speak. Um, and the short answer is Japan is the most fluid social structure of any Asian country where societies, once they've gone for so long, they kind of become uh, ethnically entrenched and um, they... When societies go on for too long, they develop too many social institutions. And so for Japan, for example, it had the weakest clan structure. Women had the most rights of any society. And as a general rule, the amount of women's rights a society has and how strong, how weak the family structure is a good praxis or heuristic for how well societies can modernize. The English-speaking world, the society with the weakest clan structure, which treated women the best, also did the best. Um, what is a clan structure? So in a lot of places, in all the other major Asian civilizations, India, Islam, China, as well as Africa, South America, people live in a clan where everyone in the same extended family lives in the same compound and you rely on your extended family. So I, I, when I was in Peru for a month, I lived in a clan where it was six families in a gated community, six families in a gated community, everyone in this, everyone descended from this one grandpa and they all had houses inside this gated community. So they would do everything with each other. They work for other family members. They would uh, constantly be, be having events and talking to each other. And so in a clan society, everything in your life is predicated upon your family. You work for your family members. When you're sick, your family members take care of you. Um, and in all of these societies until recently, there were arranged marriages. So your entire life is controlled by your family and you never leave your family. And Europe broke apart its clan structure in the Middle Ages. And so there's a whole theory of history that Europe did so well because it broke up the clan, which allowed more flexibility. For example, in most societies in history, women get married off at age 15 in an arranged marriage. Um, and, and in the West, starting a over a thousand years ago, you started having free marriages of love. So what mm -hmm. happens when you stop getting married off by your parents at age 15 is that you don't immediately start having kids and have a family. You have years you can travel the world or start a company or uh, invent stuff so that you can level up in the dating pool or the marriage pool. And... Um, also, by breaking up the clan, there is no idea that you have to stay with your family for your whole life. And so you can move across the country. You can start a new company. It opens up the labor pool. And so Japan had the most fluid social structure of any of the Asian civilizations. And so they were able to adapt better. Because hmm. like when we think of Japan now, we still think of them as being very kind of collectivist, very yeah, they conservative are. So, to like a liberal you know, Western perspective. Japan is more collectivist than China. It had a weaker clan structure. Mm -hmm. And so my study of Japanese versus Chinese civilization is that um, Japanese civilization is the, the number one thing to think about with Japanese civilization is it's terrified of rejection. So I've been reading these anthropology books on Japan and so much of Japanese culture is about the fear of rejection. So you purposely aren't offensive. You purposely keep things in the DL to not reject, to not make people feel rejected. Mm -hmm. um, so ja and Chinese culture is a lot less like that. And Chinese culture is much more bureaucratic or China is this land empire that has to constantly fight barbarians. And Japan has generally never had invaders. So Chinese culture built its this giant bureaucracy about feeding into the state and serving the state. And Chinese culture is the most state-driven, where the way you got wealthy over Chinese history is you scored well on a test as a bureaucrat, and then you got money after you became a government official. And so Jap Japanese culture is more community-based, and Chinese culture is more government-based. Hmm, okay, interesting. I, guess, I mean, that makes sense. I didn't know anything. Do you, yeah. So do you think that it was justified to, to nuke Japan? Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So... The Japanese were fanatical, uh, where a bunch of insane army commanders took over Japan, and um, they were arming women and children. They were going to fight to the last. And so one of the things, the Japanese didn't know how many nukes we had. We only had two, but we bluffed. We said we had more. So we dropped two nukes in Japan, and the Japanese were like, uh, damn, 
we would we don't want our entire country to die. And so uh, Japan capitulated. And the, we we said from the statistics I've seen, like 10 million Japanese would die in an American invasion of Japan. Hundreds of thousands of Amer more Americans would die if we invaded Japan than the rest of World War II already. So we saved a tremendous amount of lives by nuking Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, why do you think Japan's having the demographic problems they're having right now? Japan is the most neotenous and K-selected population in the world. So you have K versus R selected, and K-selected are populations which um, they have more social adaptation. Um, they have they're more emphasis on hard work, conforming to the society. Um, K-selected societies are ones that are better able. K-selected. Neoteny is a social trait associated with childishness. And so populations that are more neotenous, for example, the West Coast is more neotenous than Red America. So neotenous populations um, more, they adapt to social changes more. They're more conformist, more trend, more following trends, um, less less um less rambunctious. Mm -hmm. um, so Japan has the most so of any society like that in the world. So the Japanese follow social trends more so than any population. So the Japanese industrialized really easily. They followed modern media really hard. They used to be super isolationist when China was isolationist. Uh, they were really they were more Buddhist than China. And so with this global trend of population collapse, the Japanese do whatever the Japanese do, they do the hardest. <laughs> do social collapse the hardest of anyone oh no are all humans <laughs> k-selected um all humans are k-selected compared to other animals but you have differing degrees of k-selection right and k-selection is basically having less children and, yeah. and investing doing massive parental investment and our selection is having millions of children and doing no parental basically investment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've so, heard this before. Some people make the the argument that liberals are are selected. And, but I don't think it has a lot of weight. I think what liberals are really two demographics. You have the hyper educated uh liberal coastals, and then you have ethnic minorities they're allied with. And so it's not useful to uh Put liberals in the same category because they're really two fundamentally different demographics um mm -hmm. right um liberals push social policies that are are selected but the liberals if you look at people who are hyper progressives they are often very case selected people that makes sense so when we talk like a lot you know you have the demographics falling in japan it's you know it's having the issue here and, you know, you do a lot of your videos, you talk about like the, you know, the spiritual, psychological, motivational death, you know, purpose death that people, you know, suffering in America, it seems like in the West. Is there a country that you think that's like, like what we should be emulating here in America? Like they're doing everything good or better America actually, we do fine. We're white Americans stabilize at a higher birth rate than almost any other population in the world. Interesting thing is white Americans, once the population collapse, white Americans reach a higher birth rate than Hispanics. Which, so, really? Yeah, yeah. When you look at the population stabilization, the white American population is stabilizing higher than the Hispanic population. Um, and I okay, think... So wait, what do you mean exactly by, like, stabilizing once the population collapses? Hispanic birth rates crash really quickly when they go down. Um, so, like, America's population is stabilizing, is going to stabilize higher than Brazil, mm -hmm. or Mexico. Um, so America does really well with this but it's a game where there are very few winners where ev like the middle east the middle east birth rates are crashing in five years no country in the middle east will have a stable birth rate um mm -hmm. and so i think what's going to happen is that in 100 years the populations of the world will be small groups of people today who uh small groups of people who just decide to do it um, there will be small groups of religious fanatics or weirdos like, hey, we're going to have seven kids. And since no one else is having kids, those guys, we're going to have seven kids. They have another seven kids. And then they will be 80% of the population in 200 years. So we're going to have like idiocracy, but with like religious people instead of yeah. idiots? 
The two, okay. so religious people, so Im, we will talk about immigrants having higher birth rates, but they're crashing quickly. Basically, over time, the religious will be the ones that have more children. Mm -hmm. Because okay, so but yeah, Very Muslim similar. immigrants in Europe, as an example, they're only above replacement rate for a single generation. So people think let's bring in Muslims to replace youth labor in Europe. Muslims will have kids for one generation, but because they're concentrated in cities, the next generation won't have kids. So, okay, so is there a country that, like, in terms of, like, purpose in, in like, running society not to... Not uh, really. No? There's no one for us to emulate? So the Israelis kind of, but their birth rate's also gone beneath replacement. And mm -hmm. for the Israelis, they had a higher birth rate than expected because it turned into a race war where, like, the <laughs> Palestinians and the Israelis were competing on who could have more children so that one side could depopulate the other. Mm -hmm. Well, also, isn't the, a lot, like... There's that same, the, the religious, the very religious people in Israel have like a lot of the kids and the secular people. Yeah, so much. the Haredi are a Muslim, the Haredi were like a group of fanatical weirdos who are zero point whatever percent of the population, but they each had 10 kids mm -hmm. and they've now become 13% of Israel's population. So Which, why, why do you think it is that all these, like there's so much population decline? Uh, did you watch my mass utopia video? I did. Yeah. That reason. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, what to the chat? Why <laughs> to the audience? So, um, urban populations aren't sustainable. There's no urban population in history that's sustainable. So, when you do, when you create a majority urban world, um, you're not gonna. No one will have a sustainable birth rate. Mm -hmm. so, so, just all these people living together yeah. in these crowded areas, essentially. I had a researcher who did research projects. He works at the Hoover Institute. He worked for me for six months and I put him on a bunch of projects and one of them was birth rate. And he found the only sustainable birth rates are by religious and rural people. So if you have a religious and rural population, you'll have a sustainable birth rate. Nothing else will work. So, so it, it becomes agnostic and urban, you nowhere has sustainable birth rates. So State like, mandated religion. Solve, that's not going to work. Solve though. everything. No, that's an awful idea. What? I mean, I really <laughs> do don't to... like these far right psychos who are like, we need to make a trad cath theocracy where everyone has to marry at age 15 and have like 10 kids. And if not, you get whipped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but with the with the urban thing and the birth rate. So has that been like even like going back, you know, 1600s, like even in cities back then, like birth yeah. rates were still really even low. Even in the ancient world, cities wow. didn't have sustainable birth rates. And so um an huh, interesting, interesting thing is that mm -hmm. a majority of Italy's population in the Roman Republican period was of Middle Eastern ancestry, but they've had very little demographic effect on modern Italy because the cities became the population centers. So when you're looking at the populations of modern countries, it's the former rural inhabitants where cities have always been demographic sinks. That's interesting. So when people talk about like, and I know you made a video about this, kind of the dangers and declines of modernity like that wouldn't necessarily be related to modernity it's just like a, like a coincidence that you know because based on these urban living environments right um it's all correlated so like imagine like it's a, a ball and the ball has like five different things mm -hmm. and so it's more so that this kind of society would get values much like an urban society um would get valued much like an urban society and so it's all it's all mixed together and it's hard to find a chicken in the egg right right Hmm. So what is it about the the cities that just people don't have kids? I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty simple where you just don't have the space for it. Too expensive. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's too expensive and it's crowded and hmm. um, that sort of thing. Yeah. Expensive conversation pieces. So it's just, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. It's just a monetary, you know, in real life, every kid could be a, a laborer, I yeah, guess. Potentially, exactly. right? yeah, yeah. Back in the day, especially. So, hmm. yeah. Humans are motivated by financial yeah. incentives. We are. Sadly. Gotta have a couple Hi. of kids that can work on the farm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's see. You bring them in. Rudyard, <laughs> have them come over. We want to meet them. Who are they? Oh, no. It's just a guy delivering pizza. Oh, okay. Nice. Yum. Okay. Man, I'm starving. Pizza would be great. Oh, <laughs> look. Rudyard's like, I'm going to go get a slice. Going to go get it. Yeah. You should eat it right in front of you. Perfect. Just what I need. I was uh, actually doing something I don't, I rarely do was actually, actually eating on stream, Adam. But you didn't know. Wow. So People were giving me a hard time for eating on it. Look, I know. I, what do you want me to starve? Yes, Hassan. You want me to starve? I gonna, am I going to trigger you guys by doing this? No, it doesn't bother me at all. 
Okay. Yeah, baby. I want you to I want you to eat. I want you to make what like kind of really pizza? loud mouth sounds as you're chewing. What like kind of pizza is it? I'm I hungry. Need to, this... I need to get a knife. Sorry. Late in the stream we always talk about food. What kind of pizza you got there? Oh, it looks delicious. My looks god. Good, yeah. Sitch. Nice. Oh. You jealous? This guy. I am. Listen, there's no so, carbs on pizza, right? The, the, the whole crust. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah. He said it was pizza his last day of not being on keto, right? So he's treating himself to a, he, a big if, old pizza. Like, I'm not a big bread fan, but pizza, yeah. pizza crust is delicious. That's sure. Like the premium bread. Pizza sure. crust, flour tortillas, oh, mm -hmm. to die for. That Dan bread, that Indian bread, oh, so mm -hmm. good. Yeah, you, certain mm -hmm. things. Oh yeah, garlic bread, corn bread. Right. Yeah, sure. But you just mm -hmm. regular white bread is boring and shitty and terrible. Of shitty. course, yeah. Of course. That's like poison. You should never eat that. Right, right. Always eat your PB and J on garlic bread. That sounds probably <laughs> unhealthy. If you slather it in butter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you should do that. You I'm gotta get some gonna nice bread. whole grain, full of fiber bread, okay? Right. Or multi -grain. Can I eat it on a t flour tortilla? No, that's PB also that's really not tough. That's not doesn't healthy sound food. right. Yeah, no. I mean, it probably tastes pretty good, but look, that it's is a chair weird. stream. That is weird. Why do people not do that? That's not, that actually probably would be pretty good. PB and J on like a on like a tortilla. Sounds wrong. It does sound wrong, but it. Let's read some like super chats. Tasty. We got like a million super chats I know to read we do. anyway. Yeah. Okay. We're going to be here. Look, this is going to become a super chat stream. I know. Loser Adobe for two Canadians says, I'm making tacos. Does anyone want some? Yes. yes. Adam wants some. Of course. I love tacos. Something I can talk about is I, I actually know a lot of content creator drama. Which is okay. Now we're content. talking. So I can Does talk it come about, from the spirit uh, world? Let's talk. <laughs> I can talk about Hassan or Vouch or like Brianna, Wu, Brianna Grace Joy. Uh, I know a lot of that stuff. So, mm -hmm. how do you feel about um, Hassan's Hamas takes recently? He has uh, he he basically I, someone I, asked him. Well, let me just say someone asked him on Twitter if he would denounce Hamas, and he said only when Israel like stops being an apartheid state or whatever. It's called you called Hamas Piker for a reason. I yeah. Mean, yes. I started that. Did you know that? Oh, that I was, didn't know that. That came it's from fun. me. Yeah. I mean, yes. you saw the thing with the Houthis. That's just ridiculous. Yes. Yes. And I, I, I saw this video with Second Thought where uh, oh my god was saying that all Israelis were uh, were belligerents because they were a colonial state. Yes. There were no innocent civilians in Israel. This is in relation to October seventh that he said the statement. Yeah. The thing that really gets me about Hassan is, like, I remember, I've seen a lot of you guys' videos. I'm remembering his thing with Pokimane and how mm -hmm. he uh, how he just defended her for being a rapacious capitalist. And Hassan has no moral code. He just, <laughs> whatever is in his self-interest at any given second. It is, I, well, actually, I, I, don't, I agree, because... It is weird, you know. He's developing Pokemon. He's or defending Pokemon, but he doesn't. He won't even defend his own co-host Ethan, who he was friends with that they streamed together to with for um, years. And yeah, it's like he's basically Ethan's like, "Hey, can you like tell your audience to stop calling my wife like a baby killer?" And he's like, "No, I'm not going to do that." Yeah, it's it's if Ethan's such a cuck because like <laughs> that show with Hassan where. Um, so getting in bed with Hassan is the equivalent of getting in bed with a succubus and <laughs> he would just suck away your career and your life force over time. Mm -hmm. And so why would Ethan make this calculation? This would be good for his career. And Ethan was popular when he was like an edgy counterculture guy, but then going woke made him a lot less popular among his demographic. Yeah, it is really weird. I mean, speculation, which I've subscribed to is just that as he shifted from doing his, uh, you know, his content and started becoming a lazy streamer like like me and Adam. Uh, he relied very heavily on getting guests in Hollywood. And it's kind of like to get book guests in Hollywood, I guess you have to be very, very woke, essentially. And it just sort of declined over time into that position. I don't know. I don't know if anyone, do you know the lore? I have no clue how he got in bed with us on the first place. I don't know. Seems like a weird, that does seem like a weird parent between the two of them. I think with Ethan, he's also weak, and so he went along with the mob to play mm. 
didn't realize the mob gradually catches up with you no matter what you do. Well, strange because like he was against the mob with uh, oh, what was that guy's name? The, the fat Peterson? guy, huge, humongous. Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Oh, well, humongous? before yeah, he was he was against the mob. Humongous with Jordan Peterson wasn't originally. that fat. Come on, he was against the mob with humongous, and then it's just there was just this complete shift where he just he went from being anti woke to super woke, and I was like, what's going on here? And now I guess. I don't. I haven't been following him. I don't know. Has he learned anything from his fall with Hassan? Has he realized that this part of the left is just toxically poisoned? Who knows? I mean, I'm not a. Regular. I just don't think Ethan's not a strong person. I don't. I. I think he will never come to hard conclusions. That could be true. I don't know. That could be true. What makes yeah. someone a strong person? The ability to face adversity and be able to make hard decisions for that are difficult to go through. Does it matter if those decisions are correct? So, I mean, I can make hard decisions. I don't know if they're going to be. You can be an idiot where you can say, I refuse to. There was this guy in Victorian England who only ate milk for 20 years straight. He is a hard, tough man. I have no idea why he made that decision. <laughs> yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about. I'm like, look, you can make tough decisions all day. Like, Okay. So like the like the stubbornness and the ability to buck and do what you like do your own thing, I guess. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Uh so, Dwight Baldwin. Oh, what were you say? Hassan's okay. the biggest political content creator in the world, right? My understanding, yeah. Yeah. Oh, here's some content creator drama. This is great. Dwight Baldwin for ten dollars. Sitch, what's what's this? Says what's he uh, talking President about? Sunday seems to really dislike Rudyard. I don't yeah, President you know Sunday hates me. Keeps on challenging me to a debate, but I don't, I don't, I don't want to platform him because my channel is so much larger. I'd basically just be giving him an audience by debating him. That's well, fair. and I mean, he's That's kind fair. of a little crazy, right? He does seem kind of like a huge asshole. I thought your guys' debate with him, um, mm -hmm. how, which how was hilarious. Do? Look, I don't even just, remember what we talked about. Came across as very pretentious yeah he he did not us right i mean we oh, were just did. laughing and joking the whole time yeah yeah um, this is also, the advantage of having a smaller platform is we don't have to worry about that platforming nonsense we'll just like <laughs> bring on crazy leftists and laugh our asses off the thing i hate about leftist argument of debating is they pick the least pertinent topic in a debate and then hyper focus on it so you have five points they pick your weakest chink in your argument even if it relates to nothing in your main argument of mm -hmm. course yeah isn't that what everyone does though i feel like you should just always give like one point otherwise they'll do that technique yeah i've learned to, i've learned that tactic but i yeah. see it most on the left like i don't think mm -hmm. i think most of the right argues in good faith like who is a debater on the right who does as much sophistry as a vouch hmm well, I, yeah. I don't know if sophistries. I wouldn't, I don't know. I was going to say in terms of, I think is a dishonest debater is the, the second part of Dwight's question, thoughts on destiny versus Candace Owens. I think Candace Owens uh, frames things and argues in a very dishonest fashion, including in her destiny conversation. I don't know if you just saw it. I didn't. Like yeah, she, she does so a very crazy. Kathy Newman thing where you say something and then she'll kind of take the extreme version of what you're saying and say like, Oh, so why you're saying this thing. You're like, well, I never said that. Ben Shapiro oh, in a very analytic manner. It's like he's um it's like he has a cutting board and he's trying to cut a baguette. And so he mm -hmm. just cuts each area individually. And so it's he he argues in a very left brain manner. And it's it's all about like it's about owning you through showing like uh your logical process to have a weak chink. Right. Well, you know, it's kind of isn't it ironic that Ben is like this hyper logical guy, and you're right, he does um dissect arguments in that way and yet he's like also super hyper religious which is seen as a very not logical thing to do to be What's going i on thought there? that too you need duality though um mm. his combination is normal for most of history um yeah it's can you guys explain the idubs uh drama to me i watched the documentary <laughs> that i have been on idubs but yeah, i like the old, like the drama from like a while ago. I don't know if there's any new high dubs drama. Yeah, yeah, the drama a while ago. Um, let me, let me reboot invited, my memory. High dubs, high dubs invited this insane leftist on his channel and kind of gave her a bunch of credibility. Uh, 
It was Olay, admitting, right? Yeah, Olay. That was her name, yeah. He dated an OnlyFans girl, too. He still oh, yeah, that was... Idea. Yeah, we covered that drama as well. It's interesting with a lot of this stuff, like the Adam-22 drama, where Adam-22, uh, his his girlfriend got banged by Jason Love, who's like a, a black guy with a big dick. And, is that uh, just like an arranged marriage, though? I kind of feel like that's just all a so My idea is that Adam-22 is a sociopath, and so he doesn't care. I think the right <laughs> is projecting their red pill sensibilities upon a sociopath who doesn't really care. Um, it's similar with... Like I, I, I mean, don't, wouldn't an arranged marriage just be easier? Like he, he's like, yeah, I'm not, you know, she's not really, I don't love her. She's like my business partner. And that's the sense I get too. I think it's, it's like a, it's a business partnership and it's similar to with like a Logan Paul and Nita Agdal. I don't think Logan Paul really cares like how many guys Nia slept with. Right. Hmm. What's your take on uh, Andrew Tate? Um, I used to like him a lot more than I do. Uh, I went through a phase and then like, I started to see, see stuff at the allegations and I'm more inclined to, to believe them. Now I have mutual friends who say he's a great guy. Um, so there's that as well. And I think Andrew Tate's useful for a lot of men in a certain trajectory of their life. Um, but then I think the lifestyle he peddles, first of all, I'm very impressed by his abilities and things he's accomplished. Mm -hmm. The lifestyle he peddles, I don't think is fulfilling for a majority of the population. Um, and so it's a reaction against a, a feminine and neutered society. Like, I mean, I, I, he definitely, I think that is his legitimate feeling is, that, you know, the, the I'm going to be ultra masculine, you know, yeah. rebel against the feminine society. But I do think that he is just as a person a huge scam artist. Like that is always the impression I get when I hear him talk. That he's very much just framing things. Like he knows how to manipulate people, and that's what he's going to do to get money. I mean, what he's I doing right now to me just seems like what he was doing with the OnlyFans girls. Only he's preying on young boys instead of young girls. I saw an analysis of the sex trafficking thing, and they went through all the quotes he said. And that I'll wait till the trial comes out. Um, I don't think it's fair the Romanian government's going after him, if I'm honest, because mm -hmm. I'm sure there are thousands of guys who do this in Romania, and them going after him is politically motivated. Um, but uh, I've seen enough stuff where I'm inclined to believe he actually did do it. Well, regardless of the, like, the legal situation, I mean, I 100% think that he was definitely manipulating women in order for them to make money selling porn on the internet, and then he was you know, basically being their pimp. I mean, that's not like no one's questioning that, right? Yeah. Uh, but I think there has to be pimps in the world. And I find him a very impressive person. <laughs> Why do there have to be pimps in the world? So there will naturally be degeneracy in the world. And sure. so it, once you know someone's a degenerate, are they good at being a degenerate? Or are they bad at being a degenerate? And I know, I know Andrew Tate's really helped a lot of men where there's mm -hmm. a point in my life where I, 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 he was inspirational to me. So I worked out a lot. I, uh, I, I just did a lot of self-improvement in that part of my life. And so I think he he has done good in the world. Well, it's it's difficult because I know like I there's a time period where I used to love to watch all these like cult documentaries that are on Netflix and all this other stuff. And I do think whenever you have these cults form, that the cult leader generally can have a message that can be very useful or helpful to people and that people will, you yes. know, become motivated by it and they'll improve their lives by it. But then it's always like there's always the fucked up dark side where the the leader is always doing all the fucked up shit. They're always fucking too many women. They're always like manipulating people in this way. And it just it seems like you, unfortunately that that's always the case. You can't have out. like just the good person. What I will throw out now is that there are probably a lot more people who are like this. Where but like this is the big the big issue I have with cancel culture. Mm -hmm. I watched a lot of documentaries in the life of celebrities. So many of these celebrities have done reprehensible things, but you only go to someone for politics. Look at Howard Stern's life. Right. How was Howard Stern not canceled? Um, and and so I'm, I, I don't think Tate's a good guy, but at the same time, I think we're being selectively skeptical of him due to his political idea, due to his political ideas. Yeah, no, I, I would agree that his political ideas and the fact that they blew up and were becoming very popular is why he got the focus on them. But I still think he was doing a bunch of horrible shit. And I think he's probably a really bad person personally. Yeah. Um, you know, that the, the Howard Stern thing is interesting 
because I guess it's like, even though he was doing all these hyper degenerate things, he's always been pretty far to the left his whole life, which I, which makes sense with doing a bunch of hyper degenerate things. I he gets, he just left his privilege. <laughs> right. So I guess that's kind of, you know, that combined with the fact, like there's this weird effect that happens in people's minds. Same thing with South Park. South Park never really got a big blow from wokeness, despite making fun of it very directly, because it's like, People just expect South Park to be what it is. People expected Howard Stern to be what he is. And it's just in their minds, they just write off like, oh, you can't really complain about those things. That's like, that's the nature of what they are. Cancer culture is so political. Uh, that's what I hate about it. Like if this was turned to just legitimately bad people, I'd be okay with it. Like this person, <laughs> like John Lennon, he did some horrible stuff in his life. Um, uh -huh. He never, he never got blowback for it. So if, if cancel culture was moralistic rather than just targeting political enemies, I'd be more accepting of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know much about John Lennon, but or the horrible things he did. Uh, Captain Solo for twenty dollars says, "Ask Rudyard if he still believes the USA is on the path of the Roman Republic." Yeah, I do. Um, we never talked about. The pro felicity guy. Mm. Oh, we were Mueller. like, we were like, we should talk about this on stream. This is super yep. interesting. Before the stream began, and then we were why like, were we even talking about him? I forget the context. Well, look, I recommended his book to Rudyard. Rudyard read it and said it was really good. I, oh, the you, I think book. you read it. Did you read the pro felicity book, Sitch? I, no, maybe I you did didn't not. read it. Okay. No. Before we jump to pro felicity, yeah. Vouch's goon folder. That does not. That was not a very pro felicity. <laughs> Profilicity uh, minded uh, behavior to have his porn folder on. Yeah, his the thing yeah. the thing that I find most hilarious is the horses. Like that's just a meme. I guess it wasn't a meme for him. I guess it was it was legit. I mean, yeah. it's, it's he was kind of projecting it for a long time though on Discord, and I, I guess people thought it was a meme, and then it wasn't a meme. It was real. I don't know how his audience can take him seriously after that. Well, yeah, what's going on with his channel? Because he was losing thousands of thousands and thousands of subscribers i think look if you subscribe to vosh at this point you're a suspected pedophile it's just i feel comfortable saying that do you think in terms of like audience credibility that vosh's porn folder leaking accidentally is like a bigger blow to his credibility than i don't know just like all the horrible crazy shit hassan has done i think for normal saying. people yes mm -hmm. uh but his audience aren't normal people like ah. I hear someone's a political <laughs> I hear someone's a political degenerate. I hear they have horses in their porn folder. <laughs> I, the second thing, I jump on that. That is not good. I, I we have a lot of political degenerates. Um it's just so irrespective of the actual morality, there are certain things society treats very harshly. True. What's in your porn folder, Rudyard? So he, That's the real he, question. he is still normal. losing. Look, There's he is still losing subscribers, so he's no. lost th 3,000 in the last 30 days, so. Okay. Interesting. Uh, Ryan's Egyptian Ancestor for $50, thank you, says, loved your newest video, Rudyard. How much stock do you personally place on Monroe's claims, and how much were the how much were they substantiated by Project Gateway? Do you think the spiritual world is real? Also, will Baron Trump be our Caesar? <laughs> Man, I just talked for an hour and a half about the Project Gateway. You can yeah, I feel like we addressed all those questions already. Um, why would Baron Trump be Caesar? Like that That's something that could happen, but like we're not there yet in the timeline. Okay, interesting. Is Trump going to win? Is Trump going to be our next president? Man, I our think next we'll and previous war. president? I mean, he's doing really well in all the polls. Mm -hmm. I think he'd win an election at this point. Um, but will the left accept that? Or will they cheat? That's a question. Who do you think is going to win the primary, Trump or Nikki Haley? <laughs> Haley. <laughs> Good call. Look at this. That's only because they're going to take out Trump, you know, so they can't win. How did Haley do on Super Tuesday? She did very poorly. Did she rake it in? Why does mm -mm. everyone on the right despise Nikki Haley? They keep on saying she's a psyop. And like, yeah, you know, I don't get it. I don't it get just, it either. People have too many emotions today. They should just chill and like meditate, but rather yeah, they. Who cares? They have weird political opinions. There's like, I think it's a couple of things. I think it's that anyone that's like smacks of being a stand, like a standard conservative, like a Reagan conservative for the last 30 years, they're like, they hate, you know, they hate Mitch McConnell and, you know, all these other people, you know, even though they basically do whatever Trump wants. 
And then yeah. also, I think so much of, of the the position right now of the Trump fans is that it is a cult of personality. And so the fact that she's just like attacking Trump is all that really matters. You know, so she's evil. Look, what, what was this? What super chat did I cut off? Who are the functional leftist streamers anymore? So Vouch has had a reputation trashed. Ethan's out. Destiny mm -hmm. has had certain people. I'll, I'll say Destiny's not left anymore. He's had um he was a liberal, he's not a leftist. Yeah. He's had a fuck that people further left than him due to red pill stuff. Um Lin do you guys wanna watch it, Lindsay Ellis? Yeah, of yeah, course. We used to cover her back. Yeah. Big, she quit, didn't she? Like a year ago. I was ago. a big fan of Lindsay Ellis in high school, but she's quit. I, I really yeah. liked her film analysis. I was sad that she got woke because um I thought her actual film analysis was really good. Um mm -hmm. and didn't you guys cover a video from uh so there are two trans YouTubers. One's British, one's American. There's Natalie Wynn, she's American. There's ContraPoints and Philosophy Tube. You guys just covered Philosophy Tube, right? Right, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Last week. They're still kicking. They're still raking in the views, so. And Contra just released the video and still raking that everyone in the views. loves. Yeah. You what, great, look, you got Greyjoy, Cap she's blowing up, right? Cap yeah. Solo for two dollars Cap Solo twenty four for two dollars says, Wow. Adam just cut off my super chat. Let me Did send I? you guys some memes. Um what people was the super some, chat. Some memes about, about what if altist. Um Okay. Send me the memes. We should get memes? to the profit. No. Um Cap Solo for twenty dollars. Ask him if he still believes that the US is still on a the path of the Roman Republic. Did I already asked that. that. Yeah, we asked that. Did I cut Watch that my off? Video. My everything from that video still stands. There you go. That's, Let's answer. Everything in the video is still, still on track. We're still we're going just down. Get the script up and start reading from the script. <laughs> Brad, you're... That's Come a on. freaking video. It's still... <laughs> we, want, we want to make our fans happy. Mm -hmm. uh, Casey video. Anderson for $10 says, regarding the amazing Randy who had a show disproving yeah. psychics. There's a fantastic clip of Hugh Laurie before he was famous. I'm too limited in characters to go into detail, but look up that clip, then his wiki. I'll check it out. Who's Randy? All right. Randy was a guy who would offer people like a million dollars if they could show that they had oh, psychic that powers. Oh, that was the amazing Randy. Yeah. Right, yeah. That was his name. I yes. do remember that. What do you I guys think of the social effect? Please. You got cut off. What do you guys think of the social? You got cut off again. Look at that. <laughs> what is happening? What do you guys think of the social effect of OnlyFans? The social effect of OnlyFans. Hmm. That's a good question. I don't know that I know enough detail about it to really have a strong opinion on the the social effect of it like the sociological effect of it on our culture like my gut yeah. intuition is it's fucking terrible but i think only fans will be remembered in thousands of years um and the reason i think it'll be symbolic of the degeneracy of our society and the reason i say that and i'm not a massive anti-porn guy like you're not going to hear me be like the daily wire constantly talking about how we need to ban porn the reason i say that is the thing is really depressing about only fans is that Guys do it because they want the connection where it's like you could artificially have the feeling of having a girlfriend. She'll reply to your text. She listens to you. And I find that so depressing because it's symbolic of a very uh, – it's symbolic of a very sad point in history. So I think for centuries afterwards, only fans will be remembered for that. And I like – in the same manner that I could talk about some of the degeneracy of the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. Do you think – that how's that going to work when like a bunch of guys are talking to their robot AI girlfriends? I, so I think that'll be a curiosity. And I think, um, I watched you on heads video about that. It looked really creepy and weird. I, I don't, don't look, it doesn't look authentic. Um, and well, don't fix that. I think it'll be socially taboo and guys who do it will be seen as losers. Um, and the thing is, I think people actually need the sexual connection. 
Um, and so it'll be a curiosity, like, you know, drive-in movie theaters, drive-in mm -hmm. movie theaters were all the rage in a society that was obsessed with the car. But then once we got used to the car, um, it stopped being as big of a deal. Right. What well, if it's the opposite taboo? What if it's the guys who date real women are considered the losers? Like real women are like subservient. Like that's insane. Why would you date a real woman? I could see that actually. She has happening. all these God. flaws. How, how do my you my her? girlfriend is perfect. Yeah. So what would happen is that women would be forced to become more competitive if guys did that. So if there's this AI threat, then women will have to like I don't know, cook more, like step up their game. Why, like why wouldn't they idea. just get AI boyfriends? I don't understand. Oh, the sexes true. just go their own way. Yeah. Women don't systematize like that. Women see the world through interpersonal relationships. Like it's why women play less video games than men. Well, when women do fun things online, sorry, fun. When women do stuff online, it's social media, which is my social connections on a spreadsheet. Um, and so Look, at, it's just a weird world if every single relationship, every couple you look at, you go, okay, the uglier one is always the human, right? <laughs> so, you just, you know who the human is just by them being, even if they're just slightly uglier, you're like, right. oh, okay, we know. We it's know like, who the human is in this relationship. No, it's just comparable to porn, where porn is like an artificial sex, but porn is not seen as a, humans are constantly in status competitions. And so porn isn't seen as impressive because um because it's uh it's easy. And so people naturally strive for things that are hard. That's what she said, because <laughs> Yeah, but at first, well, the robot, girlfriends it? and boyfriends are going to be very expensive. So that that in itself would be a status. That's called right? society today. Like most men are too poor to, to date. Like mm -hmm. look at young men. Like two thirds of young men are single because they don't have. Partly, it's not attractive, but not social status. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. It's very. I, what do you? What is your take on the OnlyFans thing? Me. Yeah. I just said it. I think remembered in thousands of years as a degenerate low point of our society yeah but do you think it's it's having how do so, you think it's shaping society what are the what are the ramifications of only fans right now is um I why, don't, do, why do you think in a thousand years it'll be a low point what makes it a low point so i read the i I read history, and from that, I see the kinds of things historians write. And so whenever you have a period of degeneracy, you write down the low points of the period of degeneracy, and then that's passed on by future historians. And so an example of this from the Roman Empire is Nero turned the imperial palace into a brothel. That's something I know about because – it was so dramatic that Roman historians used it as symbolic of the degeneracy of that era. Or we have stories of Roman officials of, um, for example, a nobleman who liked to get penetrated. And in Roman society, a man being penetrated was the worst humiliation you could ever have. So a nobleman being penetrated was peak degeneracy. Um, and another example of this is we have stories of noblemen making their servants serve them topless or naked. And so that was written down because it was so degenerate. So you have these capstone examples of uh, of a society's degeneracy, which get passed on by historians for millennia. And OnlyFans is such a good example. Only, I think OnlyFans fans in a couple types of porn will be remembered that way. And then it's so hentai. I think hentai could be remembered because <laughs> historians would make it a capstone example of how degenerate the society was. All hentai or like specific categories? Put whatever, what yeah. about vanilla hentai? Like that's okay, right? I think the octopus stuff will get remembered. <laughs> Maybe. Mm. I believe that. Uh, unrelated to iDub says Kiwi Farmer for $20. Oh no, unrelated, but iDub's did an interview on psychology in Seattle with Dr. Kirk Honda. I've been following Kirk for years. He's a narcissistic, condescending, pompous, leftist asshole. Who also cannot take any criticism. I'm not wow. familiar with that. We should Isn't look, at, that look into that. The old Steve guy you guys covered. He's like a, he's like an insane pro Palestine guy. Which guy? He's like a he's this professor who's super anti Palestine. Who you covered, and he was like talking, tweeting, like this was a couple months ago. This was in October, so you guys might not remember. Right. Mm -hmm. Why does Palestine make people so deranged? Because I, I I read the comments for every YouTube video I go on. I constantly read comments because I want to get a pulse on what the public believes. Why oh, is that? 
you know, actually, I was gonna, that's a good well, that's a question I ask you. Do you know yeah. why the leftist movement became so enamored with Palestine in the first place? That's why I'm asking you. Oh, is there I any don't know the that It's, not an it's easy, very easy. Yeah, I think it's because it fits the natural grain of anti-Semitism, which has existed for millennia. Um, of course. And the thing that makes me question me is it's hard to make a narrative in which the Jews are the oppressors. Because look over history. Um, and it, it, it always, uh, actually, Adam said something very intelligent where Adam said that. Actually, that, wow. Adam said that leftism Look. is feminine autism. Um, yes, I said that. It's a I form did. It was great. It's a form of autism where you, you filter the entire world through it. And so things don't exist as they are. They filter through whatever mental filter you as a leftist use. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And leftism is a form of autism. I, I mean, Look, but the, it's weird. Like, there's a lot of Jewish people in left, too, that are like very pro-Palestine. So, I, I mean, I'm assuming they're not anti-Semitic, right? It's got to be something deeper than that. I was at an Afghan restaurant in Philadelphia and I was sitting mm -hmm. next to a trans Jewish guy who was on a date with a girl. And, um, <laughs> okay. And so he was saying, I grew up Jewish. And so I had trouble internalizing my own oppression. Oh. And then I realized I was in, existed inside a substructure of oppressive whiteness. Um, oh my God. I had this conversation and I was a centrist in high school and thinking, why are you going to all this work? Just like live your life, go on your date. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I, I guess, I mean, pal, it's it, it really fits like the perfect narrative for them, I guess, because like you could have the, you know, the Israelis are the evil white ish European colonizers that are taking land from the, yeah. you know, innocent native brown people, even though when you look into it, it's like one of the most horribly complicated, like both sides doing fucked up I, shit to each other situations. So my father likes to joke that the Jews only got twenty. The Jews and the Italians only got twenty years of the benefits of being white before you started, stopped having those benefits. He said the, <laughs> the Italians only became white in nineteen ninety, and they right. only got to have the benefits of being white till twenty ten when wokeness came in. True. Wow. I like that. It's a good joke. That's terrible. But what um, this what Phil Phil from. All that remains. Hey, Phil, what's up? Oh, hi. For twenty dollars, says the right doesn't like Haley because she was UN ambassador. She's a globalist. Oh, that's a good point. I forgot that she was a UN ambassador, but it was for it wasn't like she was in, under a Republican presidency, right? Like, it, was it under who Bush? Look, what's the matter with globalism? Team Everything, America man. needs to take over. Everything. What's the matter with being the world police? Anyway. Let's read some super chat. I oh, know she wait, she was you ambassador under Trump? I think so, yeah. That's hilarious. Okay. Yeah. So she's getting wait, so she's getting flack for a position under she Trump. Held under Trump, yeah. Okay. I uh, that's a, that's interesting. I mean, I think you're right, Phil. I forgot about that. Those who stand against the God Emperor will be crushed. True. Uh, David Harrison Friday says, Rudyard, your double slit particles don't care about consciousness, only interaction. In your video, you imply that they care about consciousness, I think, right? Hmm. So, I've spoken to people who have like studied physics very deeply, and so they said the consciousness thing. That's what I took. I don't know if that's accurate. What they did was they were measuring it. And so through measuring it, it turned out differently than when it wasn't being measured. Yeah. So it's so weird because when I've heard these claims and it's oh, like, it's, yeah, I, I've heard these claims and, and my mind keeps going back and forth because every time I hear it, someone says the opposite thing. So I first heard the claim and it's like, oh, well, it's consciousness that's affecting. And I said, oh, okay. And then I heard someone counter to say, no, it's not consciousness. Is that by looking at something, you have to like shine a light at it or you yeah, have to do something to look at it. And then that I affects always, the thing. Right. But I then I heard someone say, who supposedly knew about this stuff said, no, 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 it's not, let's not that there's something spooky there that they don't know about. So I'm just, I've given up on trying to understand it. I know a lot of people that know a lot about physics and they keep on giving me different info. Like, yeah, exactly. The same boat. So doesn't make any sense. I, I have a couple people who are very smart and they, they're really into science and they say that like Einstein's universe is all BS. And I don't know if that's true. They say that quantum physics is all made up. I don't know if that's true. Um, mm -hmm. but that's why I'm not part of the reason I'm not in science is because of stuff like this, where 
When I was in fifth grade, I wanted to understand the world. And so I started reading science books because I thought, if you understand science, you understand the world. And then I realized my school library and the local bookstores didn't sell any science books, so I couldn't study science. <laughs> and I also realized that like no one was peddling a coherent vision of the world through science mm -hmm. and history. The reason I read so many old history books is growing up in Pennsylvania, I didn't have that much money in high school. So I could either go to a used bookstore, buy a book from the 60s for five bucks, or go to Barnes & Noble and buy a new book for 35 bucks. So I started reading all these older histories that were cheaper. Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, Bob and Go for $20, and then another $2 asked me to read a super chat. Says the only demonstration of an outside world that I think is kind of considerable is Rocco's Basilisk, where it seems like some kind of entity that has yet to come into being is having an a causal effect on the present. I really hate Rocco's Basilisk. I'm sorry for whoever that is. Um, what? I don't even know what what is Rocco's Basilisk. Rocco's Basilisk is the idea that there will come an AI at some point in the future, which um, oh I know you okay yeah, that it kills anyone who doesn't support the AI. So you have to right. build. AI to survive, and then that will make the AI exist. And that stuff really annoys me because it's nerds, it's science nerds making religion arguments without realizing they're making religion arguments. It's the idea of simulation theory. If you believe the world's a giant computer simulation, then you just believe in God. It's the same thing, but these people would never say they're talking about because the, religion is the idea that, that we're all a giant simulation by God, but because it's mechanistic, it's suddenly scientific. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. First of all, yeah, I agree. I, I hate Rosco. The Rosco Basilisk thing sounds stupid to me. Um, I hate the, the arguments. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I, I don't know if you ever listen to Scott Adams, but he's like very into simulation theory, but he basically talks about it the same way, like what you're describing, that it's just like a religious thing. Yeah. And though with him, I think it's a little tongue in cheek because I think he does think it's like true in a religious sense, but he doesn't think his audience will accept it. So he just talks about it through like simulation theory. I mean, it's like what what evidence is there for simulation theory? Like, is there any? Um, I, It's not it's just supposed to be based on like probability, right? There's no actual evidence for it. I mean, I can say um, probabilistically, probabilistically, there is a universe where I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> right. But that means well, nothing. Yes. Well, no, but it's supposed to be probabilistically there should be more universes that are simulated than real. So like significantly more, that, right? How do we know that it's possible to simulate a universe? I agree. <laughs> I think it's a stupid position to hold. Yeah. And also, you know, I've always said the only reason, like you'd also think a society, like say it was theoretically possible to create these hyper real universes that, you know, beings or entities or machines inside think they're living lives the way that we're experiencing them. Like a society that that's advanced would presumably have a lot of ethical quandaries about creating this sort of technology. They wouldn't just be doing it all willy nilly, like, eh, fuck those people inside the machine. Right. Mm -hmm. They'd be like, hmm, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. This is like a lot of moral yeah. questions. Why? Well, I mean, the Europeans, when they crashed onto the new world, they were more scientifically advanced. It didn't mean that they cared about the less right. scientifically advanced. Yeah. I mean, what's the difference? Because we're still having this conversation right now about people are like, oh my God, what are we like, what are we gonna do if we create AI? Are we creating a person? Are we creating consciousness? People are like hyper concerned about that already. Imagine if the Soviets people are. did this too. Imagine an alternate timeline where the Soviets invented AI. They would not care. Yeah. I think there are definitely timelines where the Soviets could have invented AI. Yeah, I mean, I guess. That's a very Western, like but, current year kind of paradigm. Well, yeah, but you also have the 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 memory problem, which I was bring up, which is that the only like if you're going to create these simulations, they would only be beneficial for testing purposes, which you'd want to have them be hyper time compressed because you're trying to like ex like figure things out, and so you have a problem where unless they all term like terminated the moment that the civilization could create its own simulate simulation, like when you turn it on, it would very quickly fill up all the memory because the simulation creates a simulation and the simulation and simulate and they all become hyper time compressed like instantly. It just thoughts people who smoke weed think. Yes. <laughs> No well, way. listen, that's how you get outside of the mechanical universe into what is true. Okay. You have to smoke some weed. So I don't think that works. <laughs> like, of all the stoners I know, none are creative. That's how it works. <laughs> weed keeps you trapped in the simulation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, weed is the what you smoke so you can work your dead end job at Walmart and not kill yourself. <laughs> yes. 
Have you seen so. the the live action Avatar show? No, I haven't. Oh, okay. So when I, I, don't watch, you... I don't watch new movies anymore. I don't think they're good. Have you watched the original Avatar cartoon? Oh, I loved it. I was just watching it with some buddies today. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, so I don't watch any new movies because they're never good. I am going to see Dune next week, though. I'm excited mm-hmm. for that. Uh-oh. Did you ever finish Avatar, Adam? You said you thought the first season was kind of boring. I just saw the first episode. No, I haven't watched any. You more only watched the no, 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 the cartoon. Oh, I only watched. Yeah, I haven't watched any more of it. No, sad. Been busy it's, doing other stuff. So it's really good. Really had time. I'm like, I'm like Shemlon's from Pennsylvania too. Really? Yeah, he's he's from outside Philly. Hmm. Uh, Casey Anderson for ten dollars says Quaker schools are still prominent in D.C. The Obama kids attended one. Most have morphed into Marxism. Result: yeah. third grade teachers taught the same book as the fifth grade teachers. Sydney Sidwell, Sandy Springs. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay. Um. What? I'm just I'm just thinking. Uh, what about what about um, I want to talk about content creator drama because none of my friends can talk about this. So I'm <laughs> Why this now? Um, oh, because cause we know about the content. Yeah, creator you guys drama? know about this stuff, and no one else that I know does know about okay. this. You know the? Um, do you know Gabby Hanna? No, I do. Uh, yeah, Gabby Hanna. Uh, you don't know Gabby Hanna? Who? Come tell on. me who that is. She's a content creator girl, and then she gradually s- spiraled into schizophrenia until oh she got a drama with Rice Gum, where she where Rice Gum broke her phone when she was trying to film him, and mm-hmm. then spiraled into schizophrenia as she did a live stream. <laughs> yeah, she. But she's kind of <laughs> left the internet, correct? She I mean, did, yeah. She's not really around anymore because I guess she went crazy. Yeah, exactly. It's similar to the, there is this um there's this fitness. He had an Irish last name. There's this fitness influencer who do ayahuasca every 20 minutes and he went completely crazy until he was on his live stream and constantly talking about how we were all in a giant Zoom meeting where God was watching us and he said he was Jesus. We well, should I mean do if that. you're doing ayahuasca every 20 minutes like you're yeah, asking that, that's, like, that's 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 like, nuts. Yeah. Um would no, you do drugs was, on a live stream, Rudyard? No chance. No, yeah, I wouldn't either. Everyone always says I'm on drugs, but I'm never on drugs. I don't I like. I don't want to spew my like. I don't want to say. I don't want to have no control over what I'm saying in front of the public. Mm. If you if we stream for ten hours, it appears that I'm on drugs, but it's just like I'm tired because <laughs> we've been that? streaming forever. I ho- I hosted after prom with my best friends in high school, and there were all these people who just had never drunk alcohol before. And, mm-hmm. Oh, uh, that's the worst! It was crazy because they all started monologuing about their crushes and like weird details of their life. I'm like, I just don't care. And, like, <laughs> I no, cannot but, stand drunk people. Drunk people are the most annoying people in the world. Yeah, um, weed and alcohol create different kinds of people. Uh, they're both annoying though. It's so weird when I, whenever I would like drink a lot in college, I never felt, I never became that. I never felt like that loss of control where people just become the other person. Like to me, it was just seemed like they were always like doing a put on thing. No, people generally do, do get like that. Um, I mean, I, I don't know why it never happened to me. I would drink a lot. So some people have higher liquor tolerance. I have a I very, guess. I have a very high liquor tolerance. I mean, I could, I never got like super, like I've never been blackout drunk. I don't even know if I could, cause I just started vomiting first. So maybe I just could never reach that level of inebriation. I just, you guys know Kava, not the Mediterranean restaurant, the Polynesian drink. Uh, I've heard no. of it, but I've never drank it. It's a tea. I actually might make some now, but it's a tea that's soothing and it just, it loosens up your muscles. It makes you relax. It makes you calm. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. There's no negative health effects. Doesn't... I was trying to find some current YouTube drama. Like, what is the most recent drama? The thing is, we don't have any more culture. Like, we don't make new movies. We don't make new music. There's no celebrities anymore. Did you see Godzilla minus one? No. Oh, that's pretty well, Didn't good. Japan make that? that? Just came out. Yeah. But that's also that's a franchise from the fifties. There's no oh. new ideas, right? Because Japan made it, it doesn't count. Sitch is like, well, what's like the last like completely <laughs> new non sequel thing that you've seen, Adam? Or Red Gear, that was like, oh, this is really good. I mean, I, there's Japanese stuff that's recent, but I'm not going to mm-hmm. count that because that's not our civilization. Well, we're talking about America, right? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I forget. <laughs> it's been so long. I don't even I remember. Can't, 
I mean, does who who? I mean, everything it's everywhere just, at once was a bunch of Asian people, but who made it? Who wrote them? <laughs> are they American? I, mean, was, I don't know. Art house <laughs> movies are a different category too. Well, that was a big mainstream movie, right? Like, I also look at teen comedies. No teen comedies on Netflix are relatable to my to where I grew up. Um, it all they're all either a pastiche of nineteen eighties culture, which no longer mm-hmm. exists. Or they represent a very small group of wealthy Californians. Well, also, it's because you're old, right? You're an old man now. I mean, as a 22-year-old, I feel like I should at least have some <laughs> representation in the high school movies today. But what about soul, Moonfall? Okay. I feel so sorry for high schoolers today. They seem they're, like, like they're fucked. Every high school I talk to has crippling anxiety. Yeah, I have no clue how someone. I, I have just I have no clue how high school would work with smartphones. That's so alien to me. So foreign. They gotta scare this mosquito off of fire. There you go. People are saying Space King. I didn't see Space King. Oh, they're saying that in the chat. It's like a good thing that just came out. I'm just going. I'm like, great movies, 2021. There has to be something, right? The Barbie right. movie. That was a great movie, right? But that's no. that's not a new franchise either. That's like, true. But it's so sad. Barbie was the great movie of our year, but. That's an old franchise. If Barbie came out five years ago, we would say it's derivative and boring, but we're so starved of new content that we liked it. I feel bad, but I see a lot of movies now and I see very famous actors, but they look super old. And I just, I keep thinking, you can't, where's the new... Yeah, we don't have new pop stars. I'm obsessed. Yeah, new young stars. Like, Um, what the fuck? Where, like, for example, all of our pop stars are Disney stars from 2010, where Selena Gomez, Ariana Grande, Justin Timberlake, Britney Spears, Demi Lovato, uh, they're all Disney or Nickelodeon stars from the same time period. But none of – Olivia Rodrigo is the recent version, but she didn't really break out in my opinion. She had one big album. Um, But – we have we've had no new stars, and as of now, it's a face off between Drake and Taylor Swift, both of which are stars that date from before, from the first decade of the twenty first century. They both had careers in twenty ten. I liked Into the Spider Verse, and that was pretty recent. That's still so. not a new intellectual property. Jeez, being such a Spider-Man. hard ass. I'm just I'm going for standards that would have been. Isn't Megan the Stallion like a like a recently new person? Megan oh the Stallion is to our civilization what Attila the Hun was to Rome. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm just saying she's like a new. That pop makes her star. sound way more badass than she actually. <laughs> I, I saw this comedy skit of someone saying, "Baby, it's cold outside. It's getting canceled." And they said, "This would be fine if WAP wasn't the song out now." So he compared the le- lyric from "Baby, It's Cold Outside" to WAP. Mm-hmm. I don't know because listen, I'm I'm an old man, and I also don't really listen to pop music or music that much anyway. So this all I just assumed that the reason I was hearing people talk about like like pop music stars that I knew about was just because I, that's all I like focused on. Yeah, I didn't so realize there I, just wasn't any new ones. Whatsoever. I'm obsessed with pop music, and there's nothing new. It's depressing. Do you guys know oh. Talking Shadows? No. What about favorite? Matrix Four? Still Again, not. It's so, also terrible. Also, what bad. about Free so, Guy? Todd in my Todd in the Shadows was my favorite YouTuber, and then oh just, yeah, yeah, uh, I know that guy. Yeah, pop, he 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 makes uh, music videos for pop review, right. and he stopped releasing any content because there stopped being any pop music to review. And so, if you look at the top ten, a lot of the hits recently, um, one of them, for example, you've got the song that our friend Phil Lamont uh, released with Tim Pool that got on the Hot 100. Nice, uh, you good job. Have, uh, the Ben Shapiro song that got in the Hot 100, Richmond North of Richmond, same thing, um, and Try It in a Small Town. Um, all of these conservative songs are making it in the Hot 100 because there's no competition. Imagine if you're saying the right is producing all these popular pop songs. That's just insane. So yeah. I just brought up the top 100. Number one is Beyonce, which is hilarious. She was um, she was a star since like 2005, right? She's been a while. All of a sudden. Um, Single. The second bad. song is called Carnival and it has Kanye West on it. I thought he was canceled. <laughs> What's going on here? I thought that too. I told you that I I was supposed to go on Tim Pool's podcast twice and I got kicked off for Kanye. Con- <laughs> I saw the day I was supposed to go. Oh, on- really? Oh, Kanye well, that's a easy well, rant. Yeah. You know you're going to get kicked for Kanye. That's just. Yeah, yeah. 
That's going to happen. That's so. why, listen, that's why Tim got so mad when Kanye walked out. Because he's like, I could have had Rudyard. I could have had Rudyard. <laughs> and I kicked him for Kanye, and Kanye left like a bitch. You bastard. Right? I, what was what was even the question? Why did Kanye run away? I forgot. It was Kanye, right? I didn't make that up. Kanye left in the middle of the thing. Yeah, Kanye left. Yeah. Uh, I think he asked for him for evidence in the Holocaust. So <laughs> I, I don't get Holocaust denial because let's look at it this way. What evidence do you need to have? We have records of the Germans confessing to it. We have records of them planning it. And like we have records of them moving trains for it. We have records of the Jews dying. We have records of the Americans finding them. We have records of the Soviets finding them. Every single I, corroborating evidence says the Holocaust happened. I think it was that he quite... Tim Pool questioned that Jews run everything. I think that's why he walked off. I don't think it was Holocaust related. But. Also, relating to Kanye, find a single celebrity who hasn't gone crazy, except for like Tom Hanks or like Kim. <laughs> Almost every celebrity has gone crazy. Yeah, but they haven't gone Kanye level of the crazy. Like that's more on the rare. Yeah. Saying, though, Only Kanye I, can go that crazy. I talk a lot of the psychological black death. I talk a lot about these mental health issues, um, but you see it on an individual basis where all these celebrities go crazy. Like, look at what look at what happened to Demi Lovato. Yeah, but yeah. do you think do you think oh. it's some aspect of Hollywood that makes them crazy, or is it people that are attracted to that level like, of fame look and creativity? What happens to your relative, or people from your high school? Mm -hmm. Those people go crazy too. I don't think Demi Lovato went crazy. I think that's just her personality. She was she she has said just she a level of crazy that is. She said she spoke. She said what? she spoke to ghosts and aliens. She made a TV show of her talking to ghosts. And um, oh, I remember that. Yeah, I don't remember. She got into a fight with an ice cream joint because the ice cream joint had low calorie options. These was fat shaming. Yeah, no, I just think that's her. That's. There's some people that have a certain level of crazy that is just their normal personality. If that was 1980, she would have private craziness that we would never know about. Right. And so like, how much better is it that we get to watch it on TV now? Well, the point I'm making is that there is public craziness in our society. Right. And um, it affects everyone. So it's difficult to find people who are not affected by the mental health pandemic. Hmm. I mean, Lovato sings to ghosts to help it overcome trauma. I mean, it sounds like what the Monroe guy was doing, right? He was trying to help ghosts move on. Look, she's, she's doing a public it. service. Give her, yeah. Stop giving her a hard time. All right. Uh, the spirit world yeah. people, they need some soothing tunes. <laughs> yeah. I keep, look, I'm just, I keep Googling movies like year after year. And man, you're right, Rudyard. It's just fucking crap after crap after crap. I read a lot of fantasy novels about people launching revolutions and it's, there's all this. So like one of the fantasy novels I like, it's called the legend of Gerd where Gerd is in a society ruled by evil warrior magicians who insert the peasantry. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is these people basically realize how screwed they are in so many different levels. And then that's what launches the revolution. And so that's, sorry, I agree not to talk about the revolution. Um, <laughs> People don't know it how, was the civil war, so it's different. They're, they're the same thing in my mind. Um, and so people don't realize how bad something is until there's some capstone example. You don't realize you're an alcoholic until uh, you don't go to your daughter's birthday because you're drunk. Yeah, I can see that. That yeah. makes sense. You don't realize you're broken, so you don't have money to pay for lunch with your friend. Okay, once upon a time in Hollywood, twenty nineteen, Quentin Tarantino. Was that was that good? I liked it. I thought it was good. Yeah, I never saw it. Really? I no. Really? Oh, oh, interesting. Okay. That was another one of those like like remaking history movies, right? Like I the, don't. Yeah, he's got to stop doing that. It's kind of I don't getting like old. The, I don't. I don't like the masturbatory Hollywood movies, like you know, Hail Caesar. I didn't see it, but I know. Yeah, I didn't see yeah, it. I thought it was I okay it. by the Cohen brothers. It was a 1950s Hollywood. Same thing with La La Land. Like I liked La La Land, but both of them are basically just Hollywood jerking itself off for being amazing. Is yeah, there but ever if you're been amazing, a Coen brothers why movie, wouldn't I you like jerk yourself like... off about it? I don't know. I'm not. I mean, it makes off. perfect sense. 
<laughs> no, but like there, there. Are, so you you can do that, but you also have to make good movies. I am Caesar. I have to conquer Gaul before I have my parade in Rome. Right. Also, Hollywood's not amazing anymore. They were amazing like twenty years. Like 30. oh, I agree. Yeah. 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 They've lost. They've lost it. They pretty much destroyed their reputation in the same way that that mainstream news media has destroyed their reputation. Right. I'm going to be going in 20, by the way. That's okay. cool. Look, if there's any super chats for Rudyard or we haven't uh, talked about Hans Muller book. Yeah, because Sitch keeps changing the topic. I don't well, know okay. Why. So, oh no. So we're talking about how, like, what is Hans Muller's politics well let me let me in the beginning so i yeah. recommended the pro felicity book to rudyard rudyard read the yeah. book and he got a lot out of it the same way i got a lot out of it yeah so we've talked to hans moeller on the show twice the first time was a really good conversation but he came on the second time and i don't know why but i felt super bad because I, I think his book is great and i think it's a good read but i don't think anyone was going to read the book because he kind of came off as a as a like as a not as a communist like kind of not really he started defending china i don't remember what the like why. yeah 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 um that like you know someone's not morally good on the left once they're defending china <laughs> because you can be delusional and be like oh my god we'll form a leftist state where everyone owns puppies and we sing in rainbows but then once you're defending china it means i will defend the worst things the left does well mm -hmm. can people be delusional on one topic and be completely smart and have radical insight on another topic yes, i kind of feel are. like they can yeah, yeah. that's like everybody right someone people need irrationality at least somewhere in their life right you know, okay everyone has rational and irrational so you don't concentrate the irrationality you will have no place for rationality yeah so i kind of think that is what's going on with hans yeah. moeller right yeah um the thing i found interesting was his discussion of profilicity because profilicity is definitely how the world works today and he talks about how each of them has their own uh issues once you push them to an extreme um and i do wonder is profilicity a long-term identity or is it a short-term identity what what do you mean by that it's so, technology based. So, I mean, if the technology falls apart, it's definitely going to be. It's but also, fall if apart. pro felicity is very, uh, if it ends up becoming very psychologically detrimental, then we're not going to keep it. We'll evolve technology to be different. So, I wonder how long term sustainable is pro felicity as a social structure? Yeah, but. Well, he, he makes an interesting point in the book that the pro felicity kind of model has always existed for celebrities, but social media kind of democratizes that, that you personally are a brand thing to, to the point where anyone can participate, and the which thing I is, think is an interesting concept. I've lived in a bunch of places and the pro felicity model is most apparent in Los Angeles. It's totally obvious there in Los Angeles where I grew up, it's there, but it's a lot uh, more muted. Um, and because you look in Los Angeles, uh, it's Hollywood world is based around, do you have a good profile? So do the studios hire you? Yep. Totally. I, the thing I found interesting was him relating profilicity to wokeness, where he said it's a virtue signaling in a world where you don't know people interpersonally. So you do the virtue signaling to show that your profile to potential customers that you're moral. Just for those of you who aren't, who don't know what we're talking about, there's, he postulate there's, postulates that there's these three types of identity creation. The first is sincerity, where you're embedded into like a family structure and most of your identity comes from your position in the family and in society. The second is authenticity, which you'll be familiar with. It's basically the idea that we have this inner self that we have to express to the world and that is how we create our identity. And the third structure is completely uh technology based it's it's this idea that we c online curate profiles like a celebrity is a brand your online profile is your brand and you can have a number of different brands and at 
that you can think of as a number of different identities, but it's a pretty interesting concept. But he's sure. saying that most people's identity now is like their primary identity is their profile. Like ContraPoint's primary identity is I am ContraPoint's the YouTube content creator yes. superstar. My yeah. primary identity is the Wittefaultist guy. Yeah. Uh, but I think like imagine your you work at Walmart. Is that the case? Is your identity your Instagram? No, obviously not. But I think there's more at authenticity or sincerity. I think profilicity, it's more of a class-based thing and a clout-based thing, where if you live off your clout, obviously profilicity is going to be big. But the lower your social status, the less profilicity matters, except for women, where I think women put a much heavier weight on profilicity. I think authenticity and profilicity are both tilted towards women. What if you have blue hair and you work at Walmart? <laughs> you're based off authenticity <laughs> uh, correct you got that one <laughs> because the left is actually authenticity is the one i understand i i personally understand the least i guess right. sincerity i guess i get profilicity but something just doesn't click from the authenticity i'm thinking if you are who you are then you are that person and what like if, i don't think there's this authentic core i mean there is to a certain degree certain people like they'll work some job they hate i think authenticity is true to a certain degree where they're all true to certain degrees. Um, like some people, they work a job they hate to please their family or to make money and their authentic core does rebel against that. But also once you keep pushing towards stronger and stronger authenticity, you get stressed out being authentic, which in turn makes you inauthentic. And so all people who talk the most about authenticity are actually the least authentic people you'll meet. Uh-oh. What? Yeah, I, I mean, I... I think I function in profilicity and in authenticity, not as much in sincerity, but what, yeah. what if, what if you and your entire family work together at the Walmart alternative? <laughs> then I think that would be sincerity. Like, yes, like you did it. I mean, there are loads of all these people. I know most people I knew in Pennsylvania are sincerity where right. like, Imagine you're this Italian American family. You go to church together. Uh, you're the Pescatonis. You you've lived you live with a bunch of other Italians. You're like, hey, like Gi Giuliani. Like none of this <laughs> stuff matters. It's just your job. You work for your mother, like that sort of thing. That's a very sincere yeah. based culture. Or like the redneck version. Um, my accents are horrible, so please forgive me. I'm I'm Charles Taylor. I'm from uh, I'm from West Virginia. I know what I do. I work my job and I am what I am. There's no point being authentic about it because you you just are what you are. How can you not be yourself? Oh, I love sincerity your is very yeah, they're great. Sincerity is very conservative. Is kind of a very conservative identity and authenticity I think is a very progressive identity. Like, like my the whole The whole transgender thing is like brimming with awe. Yes. authenticity yeah my sister is based off authenticity you know my sister's a maoist that's awesome that's not awesome <laughs> why what's sister, a... my sister's a maoist who lives in oh Toronto. i thought i thought he said taoist no <laughs> my sister's a maoist who lives oh. in Toronto. um what's the uh -huh. difference between a taoist and a maoist oh just you know yeah tens of that tens of millions of bodies um and so I think she's very much based out of authenticity. Um, and, and, um, and so, but I think, mo I think it's a, sincerity is a social conservatism. Um, well, um, sincerity is, is social conservatism, but it's often not political conservatism. I think both, I think most black people are sincerity, although they vote left. What right. my understanding was, and I haven't read the book, my understanding was like the authenticity model was that society is trying to, you know, push all these things on you and your family is trying to push all these things on you. And you're, you're going to like tear all those things away to be your true self. You're going to yes. get rid of all these external pressures, right? Yes. And so, yeah, so that, so that would completely jive with like the, a left-wing narrative of what they want. And that, I mean, that's, that would be the explanation. Like most people, I don't, I mean, first of all, I don't think anyone really exists in that like that's an impossible way to exist to yeah. be truly authentic anyway 
Hmm. And the more you worry about it, the less authentic you are. Where I think people who are most authentic, people who don't really have airs, they don't even try. They just do it. It is second nature. And trying like I watch I'll watch Netflix shows and it shocks me. Like I watch the Netflix show Carol and the End of the World. And um the show is that the world's ending, and so everyone is living their best life, and everyone is going on vacation, or they're going to take up new hobbies. And Carol is this boring lady who wants to work an office job, um, and she, and, and so she feels bad that she can't go outside and live her best life like everyone else. So she pretends to have hobbies and vacations where everyone else is partying and I can right. do crazy stuff. And I can see that if you're from, if you're the kind of person who works at Netflix, that's an issue, but that never even processed to me as like something that would happen in people's lives. Like that's an authenticity culture thing, but that never occurred to me that that would be like a social issue someone would have. Like that they don't, I feel it's almost like a, oh, the idea a, of judging other people for not being authentic. I'm like, what? Or the idea of like not living your best life. I'm like, what? Like that just, that never would have processed to me as a way someone would see the world. Hmm. Well, you said like when you're walking around outside, when you're talking to people, when you're going to the grocery store, I mean, you're not, are you thinking of yourself as like the what if alt his guy? I think of myself as Rudyard and like, I, I do run into what if all pissed fans in public. It's pretty normal. Actually. I ran really? Into, wow. Okay. Yeah. I ran into one when I was shopping today. Uh, nice. and I, I run into them. I run, I've run into them at gym. I've run into them at the bookstore. Um, uh, most house parties I go to at this point. So I know, meet a lot of them and I am conscious of being the what if all pissed guy, but I mostly see myself as Rudyard. Um, and if you were to ask me who I am, I'd say what I'm, I'd say what I do for work, where I'm from geographically, um, the places I've been, the things, uh, things I've done, um, my place in relation to the world. I think it's mm -hmm. easier to identify when you're being inauthentic. Like it's, you, you can yeah, generally so, tell when you're doing something right. that you're like, this is what not I'd, me. What I'd say is that I would not judge someone for like not going backpacking in Nepal. So in this in this Netflix thing, everyone's like, oh my God, they went backpacking in Nepal. They're being so authentic. That would never process to me as being authentic. I think you being authentic is you not doing something soul crushing. So like if it turns out a guy is a the guy, a guy is a professional fisher. And he loves doing fishing. And he did that rather than working a corporate job that would give him more money. I would applaud his authenticity in doing that, in that he's doing something that's not soul crushing. Hmm. Uh, well, before you go, Dwight Baldwin is asking me to ask you the super chat that he sent before you leave. Dwight Baldwin for $20 says, I saw your spirit video. I also read many examples where remote viewing wasn't able to be replicated. Randy made challenges to psychics and we're all proven to be faking it. Have you heard of these examples? What I'd say, and, and I've looked at the Dean Radden's wrote an interesting book where they've basically statistically proven psychics. And the reason I say we've statistically proven them is you can tell how valid an argument based off the argument the person opposing it is using. And so the arguments against psychics at this point are basically the arguments are the study must have been done wrong. You must have more information. They don't actually have an argument against the evidence. And wait, the, I gave you an argument. <laughs> Gets the evidence. What are you talking about? Oh, what, can you repeat the argument? No, this is different evidence. This is on cards with psychics. So they've done oh, okay. with like people being able to figure out what card someone's holding in front of them. So, right, right. Uh, mm -hmm. And so what they found is some people, most people are like one or 2% higher than you expect, which sounds inconsequential, but it's statistically impossible unless there's something else. And 1% of the population gets vastly higher results. And the reason it's not, rep not everything is replicable. Love isn't replicable. Creativity isn't replicable. Imagine you're playing baseball and you expect someone to bat a four a foreign hole every single time. That's impossible. And psychic stuff is similar where it's a specific ability that people can do under good conditions in the same manner a painter can draw a masterpiece under good conditions or a baseball player can knock in a great home run on good conditions, but it's not completely replicable. But if we had this same logic scientifically and we had to have everything be replicable we would never say we would say love doesn't exist we would say creativity doesn't exist we would say imagine saying we're going to replicate friendship inside a lab the formation of friendship inside a lab that wouldn't work i mean it worked between me and adam so 
<laughs> We're all and psyops. So. With the psychic stuff, the evidence we do have is people getting information that's statistically impossible mm -hmm. without it. And you can't replicate it in the lab, but incredible abilities can never be replicated in the lab. You can't. So imagine if, um, so I am the only guy who can write what if autist episodes. That's statistically small. Imagine getting a random person saying, can you write what if autist episodes? And they can't do it. Um, then you say that's statistically impossible. And with psychics, it's one, it's 1% 1 or less of the population who can do it and they can do it under specific conditions. Hmm. Okay. Where uh, they get super lucky? Are those it, the conditions? It's also like, um, so when you're looking at the stars. Where, there's, where, you're, where the guy holding the card is sitting in front of a mirror? <laughs> is that the condition? No, it, it's, so imagine like you're, you're golfing and sometimes the, the, the grass is wet. Sometimes you're just not good at golfing. Sometimes you can get a perfect, you can get a perfect score golfing. Other times, even the best golf players won't do perfectly. So it's like a sport where, there are some people who are way better, and even so, they don't do it perfectly all the time on a replicable basis. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I'll go with the mirror. I don't know if this, because you were describing a lot of spiritual systems. I don't know if you were saying which one you subscribe to. You're just describing them. Uh, Equishadox for 20 hours asks, what model of spiritual domain would you most subscribe to? Perhaps the dualism of Plato, spiritual purity versus physical profanity, which heavily inspired early Christianity, or some flavor of mysticism? I'm I'm a mystic. I I uh, Malcolm Collins has called my worldview. I'm a polytheistic Christian. I believe in angels and demons and different sub forces in the universe. Nice. Cool. Well, there you go. Thomas yeah. Shepard for twenty dollars says Rudyard is wrong about the Eucharist. He doesn't like your Eucharistic. Okay. I mean, I find with psychics and religious stuff, people get very very heated um, because you're affronting someone's foundational understanding of the universe. Well, it's interesting. I think like one of the top comments in your video was like, uh, it was like a Jesus comment. Like a lot yeah. of people think anything psychic is demonic and they get very upset by it. Yeah. And like the thing is, that's not Jesus practiced magic. He was a magician and early Christians didn't think magic was wrong. Uh, they just thought they didn't think other gods didn't exist. They just thought their God was better. And I, uh, yeah. Christians or Jews? Uh, both. Well, I know Jews believe that. But uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, it's like, that. imagine your religion is eating pizza. Why can't you be a Christian and then also do other stuff that's not worshiping different gods? Like Isaac Newton studied the esoteric. Same right. with the fathers of the church. Mm -hmm. uh, Crypto Man Selects for, ten, for 100 Mega Man X dollars says, what's the difference between something not being mechanis mechanicistic Mechanicistic. Mechanistic. Mechanistic, thank you. Versus we just haven't found the, the right heuristic yet. Uh, in my opinion, asserting these uncommon things so confidently will make it hard for people to listen. So love isn't mechanistic. It forms naturally. Most many things in life are not mechanistic, but we know I that. I just, I, I completely disagree. <laughs> so. Just a, a thousand percent disagree. How do you measure wisdom? Wisdom is a skill you get, but it's not mechanistic. And well, also, look, you would measure it by someone making decisions and those decisions turning out to be correct. Like if a, if a person makes 10 decisions and all of them end up being catastrophes, you'd go, oh, that person's not wise. Why do you expect the world to, feel, to be rational? And why do you expect the world to fit a mental model that makes sense to you? Why do I? Well, I... I expect the world to be knowable at some level. The question is like, Why what do you expect level? It to be knowable? Why do I expect it to be knowable? Yeah. That's a statement of faith that originally stems from Christianity. Look, I, I do agree. I do agree that it's a, like you, you've got to take some main axioms on faith. And that just seems like a good one to take on faith. <laughs> But there could be, the world's infinitely large, so why aren't there multiple axes that we don't understand which still operate? I wouldn't, I mean, if the world was ultimately unknowable, wouldn't science, like, there would be no science, right? That, that is a fair point. That's the point I was trying to get you to reach. Yeah. Uh, there would be absolutely no science. Yeah. So, but so there is science. Working proves that the world is partly knowable. But what I'd also, my computer's at 2% battery, so it's about to die. But, oh, okay. Uh, 
What I'd say is that science has also proven that there are constantly new theories of the world that constantly that get. Yeah, thrown. I agree. Look, yes. I totally agree, but it doesn't mean that those that those yeah we could we could reach a new paradigm where it's things are not mechanistic. Like I think obviously Donald Hoffman's idea that we are all just consciousness interacting with one another, and that our i our idea that the world is mechanistic is just a complete misunderstanding of, of the universe. I mean, that could be true, but we would still need kind of evidence to. The idea that the world is mechanistic comes from the concept. I will look at the world mechanistically. Right. Well, just because it yields results. Yeah. But it also, so if you look at religion and mysticism, it's yielding results through changing your personality and mental state. It's re yielding results through not being mechanistic, though. No, it is mechanistic, uh, though. That's wisdom, where, look, you said love is not mechanistic, and I disagree. You Wisdom is getting skills not in a mechanistic way. It's it's subjective. There are a, the vast but majority of stuff in the Wisdom is mechanistic, too. How is wisdom mechanistic? Because you're you're going, you're basically looking at previous situations and you're saying this situation we reacted this way and it yielded positive results the so therefore we're going to yeah the the mechanism my is my definition just, of mechanistic is system is systematic so you were creating a system and then yeah a system that works but most things in the human so my computer is about to die most mm -hmm. things in the human condition well, plug it in systematic. what do you get the extension cord go plug it in come on don't let it die run <laughs> run <laughs> uh, I, I just look love is mechanistic it is people fall in love for mechanistic reasons yeah but you're I stating guess. everything that works is mechanistic so in your worldview look, if he's so triggered now <laughs> No, but you guys are you guys are using different definitions of the word, right? What do you mean? Well, no, it's he, a system. He, when he you say it's a system, definition. what does that mean? What do you mean it's a system? Oh, he la he he got kicked out. His computer died. Oh no! Oh no! He'll be back. Read some super chats. Okay, I'll read some super chats. Uh, stuck for two dollars says legalize all drugs for Jesus. There you go. <laughs> oh, okay. Look, if Jesus wants to do it, how can I be against that? Mm -hmm. What uh, would Grendel Jesus do? Legalize all drugs. Uh, Grendel Vivat for 50 gifted memberships. Thank you so yes! much, Yes, look at Incredibly this. generous. Thank you. This is great. Uh, Chuckle Desk for 16 months says, can we access the Avatar state? What if I'll hissed? Oh, that'd be there great. I'll take there it. There you go. I like the Avatar state. Uh, M8566 for five dollars says I've always believed in psychic shit, but most people don't buy it, so I kind of hide it. There you go. That's what Sitch does. Uh, I mean, it's you know, it's one of the weird things is that I have this weird tendency where I I, I tend to attract people in real life who do believe a lot of psychic shit, but you don't realize it until you talk to them about it. Either that, or a lot of people believe it and they just don't talk about it. So, so one of those right. things goes on. I just don't talk about it on stream. Look, and I, I'm, I'm super open to people who do believe in that kind of stuff. I just think it's, I mean, it's interesting to argue about. So, yeah. Well, since mine personally is is rooted in personal experience, that's why I just like I would never fault someone for not believing it because I wouldn't believe any of this stuff if it wasn't for my own personal experiences either. You couldn't logic me into believing any of this stuff. So this is where I think a there's like a huge contradiction in a lot of the trans activists, trans movement, because the mm -hmm. way that they talk about gender is exactly the same way people who believe in God talk about God. Only most of the trans activists are atheists. What do you mean by that? Well, when people say, you know, I believe in God, they usually say I have, I've had some sort of personal experience, right? I feel God in my heart. And a lot of the obviously transgender activists who are atheists will just laugh at that. They'll be like, oh, feeling God in your heart. Oh, right. I'm, I believe in science. I'm transgender. I feel in my heart of hearts that I was born in the wrong body. And mm -hmm. which I mean, sure. I it's kind of the same thing, right? Right. But it's kind of like, um, you know, kind of using example Roger was using, it's like love, you know, 
it's people only people only understand like people only believe love exists because it's such a widespread phenomenon people experience but it's like a very difficult thing it's not a possible thing to describe right mm -hmm. like if if we interacted with some alien um you know who, who didn't for whatever reason they never evolved this capacity for love they'd have like literally no fucking clue what we're talking about we're talking about love or any these other emotions oh yeah yeah so. but don't don't you think love i mean love evolved to serve a purpose to pair people up into tidy little reproductive units right no obvious yeah, sure of course yeah yeah so but there's certain metrics that people look at i mm -hmm. mean a lot a lot of people say you know the a lot of people will focus on certain body proportions right waist to waist, uh, waist to hip ratio for attractiveness and stuff like that well all of these metrics seem to line up perfectly with fertility so. yeah no 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 like there's a very cynical and also a very mechanical reason for why love exists completely yeah. i'm just saying like you know you're talking about like someone says that they like they have this experience of god or whatever someone has this experience of being trans or whatever it's like yeah because these are experiential things like love or like any other emotion which if someone else has never experienced it like it, there's no way to describe you know there's no way to describe it to someone else you have to experience it right yeah but that doesn't mean it's not mechanistic so no i well it depends on how we're defining mechanistic right point he's defined it as a system i don't know what that means though the system so. of making people hook up for reproduction okay. that's the I mean, system it means something a little bit different but grendel thank you for the 50 gifted subs thank that's you, super generous of you yeah uh, M8566 for five dollars says, have you guys seen The Men Who Stare at Goats? I ha I've seen the movie and I actually have read the book as well. That's Ron, that's John Ronson, right? That's John Ronson. Ron yeah. Johnson. Yeah. I love his books are great. He's one yes. of my favorite authors. Yeah. Uh, Roger talks about I don't know, is is that is the guy in that book Monroe or is it someone different? Because he talks about that in uh, Men. I don't remember because it's been a while since I read the book or seen the movie. Right. Um No, it's a different guy, I think. But but yeah. I don't know. It's a good movie. Do you believe that shit? Do you believe the military and the government has studied it? I don't think they've found very good use of it, so Yeah, I think it's more likely just us trying to psych out the Russians. Maybe. One of the things I remember reading and I don't I, I could have asked I could ask Rudyard if he ever if he comes back. I don't know if he's coming back or not. Is um because I remember reading that when they were studying like this remote projection stuff, there'd be a problem where sometimes like people would see like they would like try to like project you to like a like your neighbor's house or to another room to like uh, like observe something and then you'd report back and they could just be like, Oh, well, that was in the room or that wasn't. That's how you test it, right? Right. And very often people would report shit in the room that was not there physically at a pretty consistent basis but they'd also report things that were there and they couldn't know about so it was like this like weird thing as if they were somehow were remote projecting and viewing something but also adding a bunch of stuff that was not real on top of it and so it was like some question about you know if you're talking about higher dimensions and spirit realms maybe all this stuff is bleeding together and maybe it's just not very useful for like intel gathering or something to that effect right i mean if it's a room with a bunch of different objects the thing to do is to put together a room with like one object. No, it'd be like, so there would be, yeah, there'd be like an object in a room and they'd be like, oh, go tell us what the object is. And someone would come back and they, they would say, they would describe the room and the object and they get the right object, but they describe the room as like having windows and doors and like, right. that it just didn't have. They get the room wrong. Yeah. yeah. Which was like weird. So I was like, oh, that's unusual. They got lucky. So, okay. <laughs> they got lucky. They said, describe an object. We're not going to give you any hints what the object is. And they completely get it right that it was like a, it was a, you know, 1984 bobblehead of a Transformer character. <laughs> and they got that right through luck. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. kind of tough, right? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I just made up that example, by the way. But Stug for $10 says, hold on, hold on. The process, the process of advancement in physics 
is a bunch of guesses and checks. Yes, that's because that's how science works. You can't test an idea until you have it. True. Maybe we should go back and read the other super chats first. From last stream? Yeah. Oh, in case Roger comes back? Yeah, sure. That's a good idea. Okay. I'm looking for him. Where is the... Uh, where are my SNA? Uh, one second. SNA super chats right here. Boom. Boom. Okay, I'm back. You were okay. gone? What? I just got up for one sec. When were you gone? Just now. Warpath for eight months says S class gets my V card pass. A team eats cream. Dev, what do you think of the one sided rags V rivalry? Where do you stand? I guess we don't know. I don't even know. I don't even know what this rivalry is. Uh, Christian Barr for five hours has been anxiously waiting for you boys to cover the story. Literally have no idea what it's about. Happy to see we're back. Hope everything is okay. Well, there you go. Thanks, Christian. Yeah, thanks. The was that is that from the last stream? That was from last stream. Yeah. Okay. So do you, do you leave a window open or something? Huh? Yeah. I left oh, all yeah. the windows open. Okay. Cool. And the gators were coming in, so you know. I have to. I I'm looking at the super chat activity. So. Oh, I had the last along. stream open. So that's awesome. Um, because the super chat activity doesn't have the memberships. Lucy Lumbug, thanks so much for the five. Get the memberships. Thoth's apprentice for 10 months says I got into politics because of Gamergate when I was 13. Now you're making me feel real old, Thoth. From there, I found the skeptics, Adam and then Sitch. One decade later, it's almost nostalgic. I know, right? Seems like it was so long ago. Yeah. Car Corona awesome. Kid for 16 months says, War never changes. It is and always will be really fun and cool as shown by Hell's Divers 2. Bringing TT War Sim to video game has been cool. Uh, what do you think? Or what did you know? S class is the best class. Thank you. Andrew Clark for $2 says, by secret, I meant low key. There you go. And Brian Bishop for six months says, hey, Sitch, got any grapes? Get out of here, you fucking duck. Okay. Okay, I don't, I don't got any fucking grapes for you. Fuck out of here. All right. Oh, wow. Just Get out. very angry. The Butter Anvil for $2 says, was just watching Dev cover this on side scrollers. Yeah, I saw it. That's why I saw it. I said, at least you have Dev on and talk to him about it here. So I think we could have a more interesting conversation about it. And Dev, uh, I thought very interestingly, he's like, oh, get Bri on. We can make it even more interesting. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Get Rogers Adam on to stir the pot a little. There you go. Jordan Rogers for five dollars says, "Oh boy, Brianna is here to wind Dev up. Editor Dave's going to be writing again tonight." There What's you go. That? Uh, M eight five six six for five dollars says the Blunty Fly Show. Also, with Sitch and Adam, is the only thing that brings me joy in life. <laughs> Hell yeah! So there you go. I mean, I'm happy we can bring you joy. I, I would recommend trying to find other things that bring you Sitch, joy. Sitch loves it. <laughs> Especially things other than Blunty Fly, who's the worst thing ever. So, Blunty's amazing. God, it's terrible. So actually, it's... I should show this. Uh, so uh, Canvas Infinitum came up with, with a character here. Oh, to go really? To Blunty Fly, yes. Called Retro Gator. I'll send you a picture. Oh, you it. it's pretty cool looking. I like it. A little Retro Gator action. Retro Gator, yeah, because we, people were talking about cocaine crocodile, but that seemed a little too much, right? Yeah, we can't look. Yeah, right. Oh wow, this is cool. Yeah, yeah. This is your character. I mean, this is the character good. to replace Blunty. <laughs> Well, I mean, why do we have to? Uh -huh. Blunty Fly is obviously a, a show favorite now. Mm -hmm. I think this is great. This kind of expresses your personality a lot, Sitch. I like it. You really? You yeah. can see me wearing that outfit? Yeah, it's very, I mean. Very uh, Sitch. Very effeminate. <laughs> Not effeminate? What are you talking about? <laughs> it's very, It's like yeah. peak 90s aesthetic. Okay. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. Oh, is that it? Oh. Look, you're making it's like racist homosexual. You're making there the you okay go. sign and Yeah, it's great. It's ironic. I like it. Mm hmm And then I sent you a second one that I I so that one that you Another put up he one? he drew and then or, or <laughs> Oh, the second one I think this. the second one I think he made with AI or something. So he's chilling. He's chilling with the fly. Yeah, there it Look is. Look at this. Retro Gator and Blunty Fly. <laughs> well, this is sick. There you go. You like that? Yeah, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Look, I in all honesty, I wanted to say that your like your character was crap, Sitch. Wow. But I like this. Now you now you see it. Yeah, now but I can't it. I can't say that. This is actually this is pretty based. There you go. There wow. you go. Wow. Should use this for a background. This is amazing. That's your blunty fly and retro. Yeah. Retro, retro gator, gator and blunty fly. Yep. There it is. Look at that. So thank you, Canvas. Yeah, retro gator, he looks straight out of like an after school special. He Don't looks do like, drugs, kids. No, he looks like he's is like sparking up. He looks like he's like the cool boss of the Bird King Kids Club kids. Oh yeah. Doesn't it? Like he's like the one that runs the Burger King. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Do you remember that? The Burger King Kids Club? Was that or is that too well, like I don't. too old for that? I I remember McDonald's had characters, but I don't know that Burger King had characters. Very briefly in the nineties, the Burger King had characters and they right. were like so nineties. Um I remember the King was like super David Lynch, right? That was that was later. Yeah. That was much later, I think. Okay, here's a picture. I'll send you. Where's this? Where's my? I gotta find my backgrounds. There we go. There we go. Oh wait, let me send you a better one. That one's like the resolution's all fucked up. Like I, these Birkin Kids Clubs did not last very long because I remember like it was out. It they was literally. Too weird. I just said I guess it never caught on. Like because I remember they literally was a time period. Where at Burger King, like the toy you get in your kids' meal would be one of the Burger King Kids Club's kids. Because I had some of them. I had some of the little toys. And I was like, oh, these are so cool. And then they just disappeared. Probably found out they were made with fentanyl or something. I don't think there was any fentanyl in <laughs> the kids, they. I don't think there was any fentanyl in there. Oh, the, okay. Uh, the Burger King Kids Club kids toys. Dang. So. What are these things you've made, Zero Fox? Because I don't like them. Oh, no. Zero Fox made like a Sweet Baby Ink um, Abbott like picture logo, but with like a sitch. And there's like a blunty fly that like forms in the middle of it. I kind of hate it. That's okay. I'll look at it. Okay. It's on it could Discord. Be great. It's awful. Okay. All right. This is badass. I got a new background. Uh Calvin Pafford for twenty dollars says in light and re in light of recent events, I have decided to change the spelling of my name. He's spelling Calvin with a K now. So the KP twenty twenty four will no longer be confused with that other thing, though I'll not be returning Vosh's exceptionally generous donation. <laughs> Oh, that must be because Vosh was Calvin Paffer used to be CP twenty twenty four and obviously right. Vosh is a huge donator to anything CP, right? Yes, that's true. Right. Good job, Calvin. Uh no Matt for GR says Rip Saints Row, the second game is still the best. I haven't played any of the Saints Row games. I had them. I remember I bought like the first there's like a sale like years and years and years ago when the I don't remember it was the first three or the first four were on sale and I just never never could get into it. Wow. Cyborg for five hours says justice for Blunty Fly, he deserves one fourth of the screen. That is not true. Hell yeah. It's not true. Cyborg oh. knows what's up. 
Poots for 10 months says sweet baby stink is just the tip of the iceberg. There are loads of other consulting, quote, consulting companies who have infiltrated the gaming industry. Yeah, I expect. I expect. How do we get these people to go away, Sitch? Just get out of here. So that's actually a very interesting question. Someone told me a rumor about the gaming industry. I'm not, I don't know if I'm allowed to, to say it, but. Who told you? I want, I want to, I want to set up an interview with some people that work in the gaming industry. They had a very interesting take on kind of what's going on here that I never heard before. So, well, we can do, you know, put them in shadow and do the voice mod. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I walk in the game and right. all of they're all yes. a bunch of cucks. <laughs> <laughs> They're all yeah. cucks to the social justice there you warriors. Go. You, you, you all make them sound like Richard Nixon with like marbles in their mouth for some reason. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's right. There you go. The chat is literally crying out for corny. I don't think that's true. That's not oh, true. Oh, really? Just made that up. There's no one in the chat saying anything about corny except for you. Corny hasn't been around in a long oh time, Sitch. That's how, listen, we're going to have someone on, like, interview the high identity. We'll have them be the corn. Did you miss <laughs> Corny? I never missed Corny, ever. What are you talking about, Sitch? You always <laughs> miss me. No one ever missed Corny. Everyone was gone, Corny. Everyone was glad Corny was gone, okay? I worked in the game industry during <laughs> Gamergate. Oh, really? Did you, Corny? Yeah, I did. Like... I witnessed all kinds of things. Yeah? Well, like what? Things I cannot talk about <laughs> in mixed company. Oh, okay. Really? Did anyone use you, Corny, as a as a sexual device? I was sat uncomfortably <laughs> on many, many office chairs in a <laughs> position that was not very friendly to my being able to participate in the meeting. Oh. <laughs> wow, okay. Yes, I was shoved up into the dark realms of the social justice warrior. <laughs> and it was it was not fun, I'm telling you. The <laughs> very stinky employment. <laughs> okay. Well, you know. I have right, new respect it. and new hatred for <laughs> corny, so uh, thank you. That's enough. Thank you. That's enough, corny. enough. Yeah. Okay, good. So who is who? Are, do you want to? Who are you inviting on? Well, I don't. I don't know if I can get them. Oh, you can't so. say it's a I secret. I can't say. Yeah, it's a secret. Okay. Cool. No, let's have. I want a secret guest. It'll be I great. I do too. Okay. Um, I read that one. Dr. Diller for five dollars says, remember to vote for me this November. I vow to make stealing hand towels. I'm sorry. I vow to make stealing hotel towels legal and safe. I will make veganism illegal and officially lame. Woo. Well, you got my vote. What? It's it, it's not safe to steal hotel towels? Well, it's not Now you tell them. me. It's it's not legal to. Right. So Or safe. Yeah. That's true. You never know where those towels have been, Adam. Oh, okay. Do you trust they really clean them properly? I mean, they see they seem clean. Uh, Amor Yassar for 500 AEDs says, To be fair, not every woke game sucks. Street Fighter Six is a great game and has a non-binary... I'm assuming that you said an NB introduce one of the modes... But most SB games suck, like SS, personally, Saints Row, glitchiness was what pissed me off. Oh, that's the worst. Glitchiness is yes. unforgivable. Todd Sullivan for 22 months says, how do I not have a wrench yet? I don't know. Why do you not have a wrench? Because we never clicked to give you one, that's how. Sitch. What? Get Who's over. next? Captain Mystery for twenty dollars says, "Been thank you." Says, "Been too long since I've donated. Just got here. Been hearing this called Gamergate Two, a game I've been playing as Ori in the Blind Forest. I never played that game. I was it good, but I never played. Is that it. a sweet baby game? Uh, I don't think so. Sweet Baby Inc. They just they don't make games. They just consult. They consult on them, yeah. right? They make sure there's no microaggressions in your game. Well, it's funny because you know their job. 
I haven't, I haven't, well, I've only played a little bit of it, but I was talking about God of War 4, which I really like. A lot of people, everyone was basically telling me, oh, you know, you got to play um, the sequel, God of War 5, aka God of War Ragnarok. And Sweet Baby Inc. has uh, consulted on God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> which is interesting. They did not consult on God of War 4, but they, they consult on God of War Ragnarok, so... Interesting. I wonder how much of it is just we'll tell people that you consulted on our game just so we pass the woke test, right? And yeah, we'll maybe. basically signal boost your company and you won't try to cancel us. It's like mm -hmm. that simple. But they really did absolutely nothing. They're like just, you know. Fuck. Yeah, Throwing what's I was saying with, with Brianna, it's hard, you know, it's like they say that they've consulted on a game and you don't know like what does that even mean yeah it could be anything so god of war 4 is a game then that, that encompasses almost all white people right so i guess it, they couldn't they couldn't fuck it up too badly <laughs> right but if a big if some big game some big popular game came to us and they said hey is it all right if we say sitch and adam consulted on this game i mean if it's if it's a, like a cool game and it's going to increase our profile, why would we say no? We'd be like, right. sure. Then when hmm. people ask us what, how we consulted, we'll say, we told them that they could tell <laughs> that we consulted on it. Right. That was a consultation. Uh, the IJP Mexican says, it's not that bad. They just added a black character and made Kratos a bit of a bitch in like one scene or two. Really? Oh, you're right. Oh. They did add a black character. The girl that uh, Atreus meets is black. That's all you have to do to get for their consultation? They're like, add a black character. But we don't have anyone black on our team. Hire a black person and add a black character. I did think it was weird because it's like, so God of War Ragnarok takes place in the land of Norse mythology. Mm-hmm. So I mean it oh, makes sense yeah. that they're all white people, right? <laughs> like it's literally like the like the whitest fucking people around. It does make sense. So, yeah, there was that one black lady. It now is... she was a she was a giant, but it's kind of like it didn't bother me. I just thought like, oh, that's weird. It is logical. I do yeah. notice when I watch Netflix now, mm -hmm. you would think that every single couple you meet is gonna be an interracial couple right yeah it's crazy but when i go out to like the grocery store and look i live in los angeles like it's it's mixed there's like all different races right mm -hmm. but you, ne you rarely see an interracial couple right see like asian couples black couples hispanic couples right but on netflix it's always yeah always mixed couple which, I mean, it's not a bad thing, but mm -hmm. it does kind of give you a skewed view of reality. If you watch Netflix for any length of time, you're going to think, you're going to wonder, what is so strange? Why is the world so strange? You're going to be like, why? you're going to walk outside expecting everyone to be in a race. Yeah, exactly. Not, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I noticed that when I watched The Sandman, um, Netflix, I was like, every couple in this show is interracial. It's kind of wild or gay. I was like, this is wild. Right. Well, you know, it's interesting. So in God of War is a game. The main character is Greek. And he's, he's Spartan specifically. Very famously voiced by a black guy. And then I think in the sequel, in God of War 4 and 5, a voiced by a different black guy. That's not the original voice actor. No one complained. No one cares. Great voice. Matches the character perfectly. No one's complaining. How dare you not like have a Greek character be voiced by a Greek man or anything like that. So, right. Interesting. Because the marginalization goes in the right direction. Um, no one cares about marginalizing the, the the Greeks, right? Right. I mean, they can't pay their, their debts on time, so why do we care? <laughs> How dare you? Uh, Vincent made a cool a cool character. Kind of oh, like Retro Gator. One? I sent it to you. It's uh, Vincent Tundo made Gamer Gator. Oh, Gamer Gator. Yeah, that's Look pretty at cool. That. That's yeah, that's hilarious. Great. So, 
Oh yeah. People are really going nuts for this, this gator thing. Not really as original as Blunty Fly, but I mean, but you mean it's much better. Well, I mean, it's just, I, it's kind of predictable. Blunty oh, you know, Fly, you're like, wow, I would have never imagined that. Yeah, right? for good reason. <laughs> so, I, you know, so here, here's how it works. I have my most popular tweet I've ever tweeted. Was a oh, I noticed that. Ago. It was like blowing up. I was like, yeah. Sitch, oh, you're in like the stratosphere here. It's at 38K likes now. Wow. Um, and it has a spelling mistake in it. Don't you love it when that happens? <laughs> my That's biggest tweet I've ever tweeted has like a or a grammatical error in it. So I was just like, oh my god! How many responses are people pointing out the? No one here? actually, which is kind of funny. Oh, no one's ever pointed it out. But I just like, oh wow, okay. And it's funny because when I tweet it out, I'm like, oh, should I fix it? I'm like, nah, no one cares. Yeah, no um, one does. And care. it becomes the most viewed tweet I've ever tweeted. So the tweet was, if you didn't see it. Um, th so this is actually kind of hilarious. So Biden said the union was just recently on Thursday. And, um, he talks about, you know, that woman that was killed by the uh, illegal alien guy mm -hmm. and he called her and he called the, the murderer an illegal, but then he, he like, he was kind of saying like, well, like a lot more people die by legals than illegals. It was kind of supposed to be like a line, but you know, he mumbled it completely in a way that it didn't really work effectively. But a lot of people on the left got very mad that he called a murderer an illegal as opposed to like an undocumented. Right, yeah. And so literally Hassan was one of these people. He was watching it live. And as it happened, he screamed on Twitter in a tweet, oh my God, he's saying an illegal, what the fuck? And so all I did was I just quoted that with the Hassan Soyjak and said, when the president refers to the guy who murdered, instead of murdered, an innocent woman as an illegal instead of an undocumented, with a little Hassan Soy Wojak. And people really liked it. And the funniest thing is, I don't know if you saw the clip I put under it. Uh, Hassan literally made the Wojak soy face. Yeah, I time. did. I did. I, mean, I saw it. Yeah, it's like yeah. perfect. It's like, it's so perfect. I can't believe it. So The Soy Jack go. is... He does the soy jack face on the regs. He, he does. That's like his face. Right. My God. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, I'm bringing up the side by side. It's, it's nice. too. Yeah. Some people were making side by sides. They're perfect. Okay. Let me continue. Andrew Clark for two hours says being liberal isn't being red pilled. It can be, depending on how... Red pill just means, like, knowing what is true, right? Yeah, of course. Obviously, we're in the red pill realm. Ground in myth for five months says Adam and Stitch showing they are again in Brianna's pocket. Also, Sitch admit that Two Fort is the best 2TF2 map. S-Class is best class, but A-Team makes me cream. No, Two Fort's the worst of all TF2 maps. You're crazy. Literally every CTF map except for two four was good. That was so bad. That was the worst fucking. I don't understand why people like that shit map. It was the worst fucking map of all time. Is this some kind of like weird? I, I feel like I feel like two four was one of those things. You know, Adam, how like sometimes people are forced to do something horrible for so long that they just start to like trick themselves into thinking it's good. Right. Yeah. That's what yes. that's what two four was. It was the worst fucking map ever, and people just played it for so long. They just tricked themselves into thinking it was good. It was like the shittiest fucking map in all existence. Right. Or maybe you motherfuckers who played it, you're just really bad at, at you were really bad at TF two because that map was really good at like forcing people down narrow corridors where you could just spam you know explosives at choke points to kill people. Maybe that's why people liked it. You know, I like maps where you're free to run around as a spy or a scout. You know, in big open spaces and fucking sneak up on people. Not too for it. Double Cross was a, was fantastic. I think Double Cross was probably my favorite. Okay, what's next? Uh, Silence, you idiot! For twenty dollars, says insulting mainstream anime. Anime is the biggest mistake for everyone. For anyone, even Hassan can't insult One Piece or DBZ without losing his career as a streamer. Also amazed to hear you're both Nazi adjacent, Nazi adjacent, and a paid for Brianna Wu sitch. 
Yeah, that's right. So after the Hassan tweet that I tweeted, one of Hassan's editors said that I was Nazi adjacent. Yeah, so. I saw that too. Yeah, so, you know, always fun. It just keeps coming, right? You don't care about that. Who cares about that I shit? I just right? thought it was funny. Yeah, it's hilarious. If I added to the tweet. I said one of Hassan's editors big mad at me. People like that, so. Uh, thank you, Zero Fox. Zero Fox is the first person to point out in my tweet, you spelled something wrong. <laughs> so oh, like, look. We got you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Jack of Spades for 23 months. Thank you so much. We're getting so close to 24 months. Get them golden pyramids. Well, I soon. know. Maybe next, maybe next Sunday. Yeah, maybe. We'll Says, I kid you not, he gave a fly a blunt and he called it Blunty Fly. Funniest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's <laughs> legend now. I had to explain to, to Brie what Blunty Fly was before the stream started. It was terrible. <laughs> I remember that. It was that great. Was, that's so stupid. The Big Poo for Fight Arts says, Hey, Adam, I sent you a DM on Twitter that's somewhat about this topic. You can ignore most of it as I was adding the Sweet Baby Inc. context. Well, I try not to check my DMs too much during the show. so. Right. But I'll read it anyway after the show is over. Uh, Amr Yasser for 25 AED says the hero's journey is overrated. Lots of good stories don't have that. Like Lisa, the painful RPG, uh, Azu manga or undertale. It's a tool, not a requirement. Well, <laughs> well, let me think about that. Uh, so I haven't played Lisa. I know what it is, but I haven't played it. I haven't seen Azu manga. I played Undertale. Does Undertale follow the hero's journey? Well, here's what's weird. Undertale actually almost... Undertale kind of does follow the hero's journey in a way because it's the plot of Undertale is that a child falls into an unknown foreign place and has to return home, right? Is that not like a classic hero's journey sort of tale? Sure, sounds like um, it. Though Undertale's far more complicated than that i don't know like because undertale is really weird because so much of the narrative of the game is based on not the story that is told through the text of the game but the internal thoughts and feelings of the player and so that's like a and that's obviously something that can like that exists purely through a gaming platform that's not something that would exist in like a movie or a non-interactive medium. So I, I would imagine most movies and stories and books do follow the hero's journey to some extent. They don't obviously follow like one to one, right? But most of them follow like the, the broad strokes. That's how the I mean, that's how the hero's journey was created, was him looking at all these stories and myths and you know, saying like what are the similarities between them? So it's hard to make a story interesting that doesn't have clear characters with clear goals that they're attempting to achieve and if you have to have a goal then i think you can categorize it as a journey you can always categorize it as a journey even if it's you're not going anywhere right sure but i think the hero's journey trying to achieve that goal i agree completely yeah. but i think the hero's journey is a little bit more specific than just like trying to achieve a goal right right yeah i am but i'm just saying well, just in terms of the super chat, mm -hmm. I do think like that component of the hero's journey, a clear character with a goal is essential. Yeah. Like, I, it's, I mean, sure. I, I'm, we can probably find some movie that's popular that breaks that rule, but it's going to be really hard, hard to do that consistently. It's right? definitely on the rarer side of things, right? Yeah. Um, Artemis file for $10 says the only people who have an irrational fear of nuclear reactors, nuclear reactors are lefty progressives. So Final Fantasy seven wouldn't be woke. So I don't think Final Fantasy seven is woke despite the fact that it like the capitalist villains are so cartoonishly evil that it's kind of, they're like basically captain planet villains level of evil, which I think is one of the. One of the faults of it, which I wish they could have worked on in the remake instead of making it shitty. Um, but I still don't think it would be woke because 
even though it's kind of anti the super business, you know, mentor small bug system, and it's very like environmentalist, it's not really, it's not really pushing a, like a political message. Like Final Fantasy VII is not really pushing a political message that would align with leftism at all, really. So I, so from that perspective, it wouldn't be woke, but I do think if it came out today, and like I didn't like Final Fantasy VII never existed and it just came out for the first time today. People would anger a lot of people on the internet. You see a lot of videos of people calling it woke, even though I don't think it is. Um, American Exceptions for two dollars says, "Why does Brianna pretend to be a gamer? It's cringe." I mean, I don't think she's pretending. She, she's a, I think she's definitely a die in the wool gamer. So, yeah. Vincent Martin for 19 months says the Dishonored Wolf loved the Expanse novels, but did it win any sci-fi awards? I don't know. Did it? Who cares? Well, I don't know. Artemis Fowl for five dollars says cycles of continuous continuous violence are based. Actually, no. Stop it. Stop yeah, that's not it. good. Don't be like that. Listen, Artemis. Stop it. But down the violence. Okay. Righteous Indifference for 10 months says, uh, Sweet Baby Inc. seems to be part of the overall resource mismanagement. It's waste that can lead to crunch and poor products and layoffs. It should be bigger than diversity. Yeah, it is interesting that's like, you know, all these video games cost so much money nowadays. And now they have to spend, like, how much extra money are they pissing away on, like, consulting some fucking woke assholes to read over the script and tell them to, like, put more black people in the game or something? <laughs> Well, the thing that they're trying to avoid is just a boycott. Think about it. You put all this time and energy into a game and a bunch of people come out on the internet and are like, boycott this shit. That's terrifying. Right. Yeah, but the question is how many of these games have to flop? You know, how many of these movies have to flop because there's like woke crap in them for them to learn to stop doing this shit because they just keep doing it again and again and again. Yeah. I don't know. If you're, if the game is good, it, I guess it can take a little bit of, you know, Norse black man because the game is black just woman. so good. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? They put it on like, up. okay, well, just a little sprinkle of woke. The game is so good. It can take it. All right. But I, you know, obviously games are a different story than movies because movies are, I mean, movies are all story. If the story sucks. Like there is nothing, but a game, I think, I mean, you can, if the gameplay is actually fun, the game mechanics are good and stuff like that. The story can just be superfluous, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, I, the only reason I kept playing and finished playing the final fantasy remake is because even though they, in my opinion, made the story suck and the characters and the dialogue is all awful, um, the gameplay is really fun. Yeah, so you're like... So you're like, oh, I'll play it. Like, the gameplay is fun. But yeah, the yeah. story sucks. I mean, same thing kind of with Kingdom Hearts. The story is so goofy and insane, but the, the gameplay was a lot of fun, so you'll play it. Yeah. So, yeah. Look, so my character is non-binary. I like... Look, I like the way it runs. <laughs> right. I like the physics. Exactly, exactly. Anyway. Uh, Sella for $2 says, to be fair, Step Brothers does begin with a George W. Bush quote. I know. I, that's great. I'd forgotten that, so. Right. Everyone yeah. tries to be Undertale now, and they all suck. Yeah. Undertale's like a once-in-a-generation game, I think. So. It's hard for me to imagine something like that's going to come up again. Uh, the booster for $10, let me skip ahead. He just says, says Sitch was caught posting coal in the timeline saying that the new God of War is better than the Final Fantasy VII Remake Rebirth. Playing both, it's clear that Final Fantasy VII Remake wins. It's Japanese, so the woke stuff is minimal. Okay, first of all, hold on, Wister. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There's, uh -oh. did you, okay. I don't know how you could play both. I know you're kind of just trolling. I don't know how you could play both and not say that the new Final Fantasy VII games are not woke. I mean, they literally have a, okay. Adam. In the Final Fantasy VII remake, there's a scene where the male protagonist, who's supposed to be like the big, strong male lead, has to not only dress up as a girl, okay, 
But in order to dress up as a girl, he has to dance for a, for the amusement of a gay man in like a sex club. That shit is woke as fuck. Sitch. And then, what the hell? And then when the when he's dancing, he's like dancing with the gay guy, and the gay guy is dancing with him in like the most provocative, like like they're literally do this weird scene where they're like about to kiss. <laughs> no way. Yes. Why would yes anyone, way. why would any red blooded American <laughs> straight cis American male be playing this game? It's like and it's so weird because I was watching this and I was like in the original so in the original game there's like the plot line where you have to dress up as a girl like to infiltrate this fucking guy's like uh, headquarters so that part is like like from it but I'm like this this part with the dancing was not in the original game. And I was like, what the fuck? And why did, not just they just have them dance, which would be fine. They have them dance and they make it like the most gay thing ever. <laughs> that was like, harsh. why did they make it so like intentionally gay? That's and I'm not, harsh. I'm not saying gay like bad. Like they literally made it intentionally gay. So, so I don't know how you could say that's not woke. Okay. That is, that is quintessential woke. Seemed there. pretty woke to me, Wooster. Right? Yeah. Making any game that makes straight men dance provocatively for gay dudes is mm -hmm. work. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. That didn't I did not see a scene in, in God of War where Kratos had to, to do a gay dance. Mm. <laughs> All right. That is true. The original game has Cloud waking up in a tub with a bunch of men in swimsuits, but it's ambiguous as to what happened and it was a joke. <laughs> okay. Oh, Sammy, the chat says it's not for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's for the ladies. Huh? Is that what's going on? This I, is the I mean, ladies. It was. It was literally. Yeah. The women all love this shit. So, of course, I yeah. love the effeminate men, you know, hot men looking at each other like they're going to be gay any second. Anyways. Well, are you done with super chats? No, of course not. Uh, Christian, Christian Baller, Baller for ten dollars says Adam Step Brothers is clearly political. Brennan and Dale, the proletariat, are being oppressed by their parents, the bourgeoisie <laughs> landlords. They rise up and overthrow them, destroy their boat. Yes, I love that super chat. That was a great one, Christian. There you go. They did. Uh, Stug for twenty three months says I'm bio shocked at how fast all this drama has progressed. Seems a curator has been massively effective is this the gg red dead redemption arc there you go well thank you for all those uh puns i appreciate that yeah that's great equal should ox thank you so much for the five get the memberships dialogue always the real dialogue always for five dollars says a good example of a left winger that got attacked and fired is james whitfield who's james, james whitfield? whitfield okay uh james whitfield fired Cor Colleyville, Texas principal resigning after critical race theory. Well, there you go. But check yes, but did out. he get debanked? That's true. I don't think he got debanked, though. Getting fired is, that's in the realm of getting debanked, I think. That's true. Yeah, we don't want yeah. to get fired. Unless they deserve it. Freddie Woods for five dollars says, if anyone wants to look more info to look up, uh, look up history of lies and scandals. What? If anyone know. wants more info, look up Wuss History of Lies and Scandal. Okay, I'll look at What does up. that mean? I don't know. Maybe Artemis it's on Sweet for... Baby Inc. Oh, okay. Artemis Fowl for $5 says... Oh, no, I read that. you read that one. Um, Did I? Jay for... No, Dev actually read it. Jay for $20 says, I've had a hard time believing that the largest political streamers on Twitch are fringe. Jank Uger was just running cover for Hamas using citizens as human shields. He what? Really? Wow. Oh, what? What? what excuse me. Wasn't he denying that it was happening or something? That's not as bad as his nephew, but that's not good. Uh, I think Selfer this is Brianna Wu's history of lies and scandals. The video. Oh, Wu's. I, I read it as Wuss too, and I was like, "What is Wuss?" Okay. 
Saw for ten dollars says, "What's your opinion on the ESG aspect?" I don't know much about ESG, but your boy Zach has been arguing with his fans for two years, saying BlackRock has never denied a loan for a low score. So, a lot of people have this idea that ESG is the reason why all these companies have gone woke, just because they want to have a high ESG score, um, essentially to make you know, excuse me, to get themselves into these. Uh, big mutual funds that BlackRock and these other, you know, companies manage. And they get these investments. Um, that might have something to do with it. I think that's, I think that's a more negligible part of it. I think it's just a lot of boomers who grew up in the '60s who are like, we need to be hip and cool because when we were young, you know, we we didn't we know what our parents were being a bunch of squares and Vietnam and being a bunch of racists and they're just so terrified of being their parents. So they just try to adapt like the more, like whatever is the hip, cool, like moral thing that the left tells them to do essentially. And I think that was kind of what's going on more of the wokeness, more than the ESG scores. That'd be my guess. Do you have a Crazy. take on that, Adam? No, I think that's a good take. Okay. I, ESG is like just a marketing thing. To sell stocks, make people feel good about investing their money. They don't want to think they're buying like dirty oil companies. Right. They're like, I want to, I want to invest and get rich, but you know, it's got to be, it's got to make the world a better place. Right. Yeah. So I invest in porn and alcohol. That being said, I think people should definitely destroy ESG scores. If it does have an effect, I mean, even if it doesn't have an effect, but but on, on the off chance it does, I think ESG scores are like really stupid and should be destroyed. So right, but there's this idea that they're driving companies' behavior when I yeah, think it's I'm really skeptical. just like a marketing thing. Right. Yeah, I'm very skeptical that it's actually driving behavior. Um, uh, Albert Capstein for 13 months says A class is the best team. But S team reigns supreme. S -s 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 True. Thank you, wow. Albert. Uh, Epam Anol for fifteen dollars. Thank you. Says who supports family values? I mean, I do. What? Yeah. There you go. I, I do. Too. Adam does. Well, Here at the Sitch and Adam kind of Show, concern. we support family values. Family values was a much better. Was one of the few times that the sequel was better than the original, right? I guess. I don't know. Adam's, that Adam's Family Values? Oh, yeah. It's a good movie. Right. Uh, Joe the Make for $5 says, car culture doesn't work to get you debunked or deplatformed. I'm sorry, debanked or deplatformed if you provide some milk toast disagreements. Not yet it doesn't. Not with that attitude it doesn't, Joe, but we can get there. Okay. Right. Stuck for $5 says, I get mad when Dev doesn't spend an hour arguing with chat about Trump and Biden. Me too. Yes, that's uh, Nicholas, fun. Nicholas Van Neal for 12 months. Thank you so much. This is the only way to win the progressive game is to not play. True. Correctly, Chibi. Thank you so much for the tank gift of memberships. Landon Door for 13 months. Thank you, says Brianna. Went from Revolution 60 to Incrementalism 60. There you go. Uh, Jordan Rogers for $2 says Riley Reed was debanked as well. Really? Oh, wow. Like the porn person? I thought that was a swimmer. Riley Reed. Oh, American pornographic actress. Okay. Is Maybe the they meant the, the swimmer. Right? Wait. I typed in debanked and it just gave me a bunch of porn. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even read it. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, wait, what was the name of the swimming person? It wasn't Riley Reed. Maybe that's who they meant. Maybe. Was, uh, was it Riley Gaines know. or something? That's it, Riley Gaines. You got it. Riley Gaines, the banks. Uh, huh, didn't say that they were debanked or that they even claimed to be debanked. I don't know. All right, anyway. Bob Van Gogh for 20 months says paying people to express your political views is like admitting that the marketplace of ideas is a failed concept. True. Is it? Yeah. I mean, celebrity endorsements are. But that's thing, celebrity but... endorsements are not the marketplace of ideas, right? It's like someone's I mean, but... product. 
she's kind of going for a slow if what Brianna Wu is doing is kind of like a celebrity endorsement type thing. Right? Right. Um, Hail the free voice for $10 says, Adam, you have to understand that the right aligns itself with all kinds of evil shit that's way worse than the, way worse than the left and wants to bring the church and state together. Yeah, more people punish them harsher. I mean, I don't, I don't agree with that, but... <laughs> I don't know if that was, I can't tell if that's supposed to be like a sarcastic super chat or like a sincere one, but. Right. I mean, I, I'm not in favor of church and state being brought together. I don't agree that the right aligns itself with evil shit that's worse than the left. I think, I mean, we were just talking about like all the people denying that Hamas is a terrorist organization, you know, the shit that, you know, Hassan was saying and Second Thought is saying, that's all just, that's like the, it's like some of the worst shit ever. So yeah. I completely disagree with you. All the racism and bigotry that the left openly like pushes and promotes against white people. So them openly denying the heinous things that Hamas did on October seventh. Yes. Like trying to say it's all just a lie, that it's all just the New York Times faking it. Yeah. Right. Or the super I mean, fixation that's pretty on heinous. Yes, a hundred percent. And the super fixation on trying to deny that people were raped and stuff. I mean it's like crazy. Yeah. Um, Kid Truck 91 for $20. Thank you. Says, I know it's not the focus of the stream, but any thoughts on the 9 0 court decision? Personally, I agree with the verdict, but not the Barrett specifically saying the political climate influenced the court needing a united front. Well, we talked a bunch about this on our Monday stream. So if you go back and listen to the last stream that we did on Monday, yeah, we talked about it. We expound about it. Yeah. I still didn't ever clearly understand the distinction necessarily that the the concurrent opinions were making. So I don't have a comment on that, but uh, let's see. Cryptomancer Lex for 200 Mega Man X dollars. Thank you. Says, Brianna, it's hard to empathize with your heartbreak because I, and I assume others in chat, never needed for a character to look like us to like them. Also, no woman on average don't like games as much as men statistically. Yeah, it's weird because like it's hard for me to to ever you know, I'm like a weird fucking person and I just accept that and I have like weird I've always I guess had like a weird way of viewing things in you know, growing up. So like when I would play a video game or a movie or watch a TV show, I never like imagined myself as the character in the show or the movie or the game i always like inserted my own oc do not steal fanfic character into the things so because of that i never like i don't think i ever had this concept of like oh i need to have like a a white male jewish character <laughs> it needs to I be need like representation the, yeah like i never that never had an impact on me because that's just not the way i consume media so i'm invisible Right. Well, just I don't want know. Dignity. If more characters were interracial couples, I would feel dignity. Right. Right. But I mean, I, but I'm kind of a weird person. So I don't, I don't know if other people do would like project themselves on, you know, as Superman or Batman or whatever this other stuff was. But I just never did that. If you can't see it, you can't be it. There you go. Uh, Matthew Cooper for ten dollars says, "Sweet baby is nothing more than a third-party credential granting consultants, which is hired by large corps in order to secure operating capital. No diversity credentials equals no ESG equals no operating capital." Well, I think it's not. I think it's more of what you were saying, Adam, which is that there's this fear that someone's going to get sued or boycotted, and so the investment people want you to to check a box to say that we have the, like the protection from getting sued or boycotted. And that's hiring a company like sweet baby Inc essentially to look over your crap. Exactly. Right. I think, yeah. I think that's more what's going on than like the ESG than concern about ESG. That'd be my guess. Yeah. It's like insurance, the mafia insurance. Right, because there's this thing that it's happens. A shame if something happened to your game, somebody found some microaggressions here. <laughs> It'd be a shame. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I don't know why you sounded like a Rick and Morty character. <laughs> you said that. 
That's my ma- that's my mafioso I know. voice. I like it though. Um, there's like this weird thing that happens in in corporate spaces, especially in in Hollywood and other, but just in corporations in general, where there's like there's a perception that there's some risk, and so the higher ups want you to do something to mitigate that risk, even if it's not like a rational thing. Right. And so it's like, oh, there's a risk of like being attacked by a left wing cancel culture mob. Uh, so how do we mitigate that? Well, we hire this like woke consulting company to look over it to, to tell us, you know, whatever. And then they say, okay, well, you've mitigated that risk. And even if it doesn't really make sense, and even if the, like they, you know, hire the consultant, but only do a little bit, it's like just so that when someone, like if there is a problem, it's just so if there is a problem, there is a boycott, someone does complain something to that effect, the person can say, well, it's not my fault. I hired Sweet Baby Inc., the super woke accredited woke company to look over it and they said it was fine so yeah it's their all fault. their fault right yeah so it's kind of just like a way to diffuse responsibility or Sweet pass baby, the please else. protect us they kind of do i mean it would be protection Right. The sweet baby ink would just come out and say, hell yeah, we put our woke stamp all over this shit. Well, no, they probably say, like, no, we told them to be more woke and they didn't listen to us. <laughs> After you paid them? Oh my God. Of course that's they horrendous. Would. These people have no That's horrendous. Okay. Gonna, what are we we paid there. you. Right. Protect us. They're not gonna do it. Dang. Stuck for five hours says, does it not matter that the monster is a leader of the organization in question and not just some schmuck? I don't remember if that was in reference to, but I'd say it does matter if they're the leader of the organization and not just some schmuck. Sounds you idiot for five hours says, we saw this stereotyping with Suicide Squad and Deadshot. He's an ex-con who replaced the Arkham one and makes the quote, one of the good ones to Green Lantern. Oh, really? that's right. Yeah, I thought, yeah. I did see that clip. I did see that clip. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Erebus, the trustworthy for ten dollars, does not like Brianna. Says Brianna is such a snake, or this woman is such a snake. Every time she's on the show, it's a deflection from real problems until Adam calls her out, and then she agrees. Dev is great, but this lady is as vapid as she was in twenty fourteen. Wow, not a fan. Right. Um. Nomad for $10 says gaming, just like every other hobby, is a form of escapism from reality and everyday life. People don't want to be lectured or preached on about real life issues, especially politics. That is true. True. Yeah, exactly. Nobody oh, I'm sorry. That. I forgot. Can you I imagine the... like you're watching porn or something and they come in and are like, they want to preach G- the gospel? Have there you, you accepted Jesus? That'd be pretty <laughs> come funny. Come on. You're, they come in and they don't preach the gospel and you're like, come on. Yeah, exactly. In your porn, yeah. Unfortunate mix of metaphors there, but now, don't you mix your for, mediums. Silence, you idiot, for five dollars. Sorry, I, I was going to read this and I totally forgot. It says last super chat since Brianna is is leaving soon. Did she see that foreign man in a foreign land video where they said white women gate kept gamer gate? Oh yeah. Oh, we should have asked that. Damn. We should have asked that. Yeah, I don't. I I don't think she saw it. So. Uh, let's see. The Justice 35 for 18 months says, Hi, Dev and Bree. Do either of you think Trump will implode if when Trump is convicted of felonies in the Doc slash January 6th trials? S class is best class. Do we, we must have skipped a lot of super chats, right? We ran out of time. But um, so I I think if Trump does get convicted, found guilty of the January 6th case. The Georgia case, I do think that would actually hurt his chances of being president. But I think there's very, very little chance that those will ever that those will go to trial before the election. <laughs> That's be my guess. That's all going to get pushed. It's just going to get pushed down and dragged out before the election. So it's not going to matter. That'd be my guess. Yeah. The docu- if he gets found guilty of the documents case. That might be too complicated or too detached for people, the average person who would be a swing vote on that issue, to care about the documents thing. I'm not sure. That'd be my intuition. That's too detached from like something, and it's from something a person would care about. 
I don't think people are going to be voting on the documents case in this election. Yeah. It's just too many other things are at play here. It's right. like immigration, abortion, the inflation. You're like, I'm not voting for him because of the document. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. It's like, that's what? True. That's true. Just but I, I could see people there. not voting for him for the Georgia or the January 6th case. January 6th, yes. Obviously, yeah. they're like, he right. committed a insurrection. Right, right. Even though he's not being charged with that, that's how it'd be perceived. Of course. So. Uh, J Mac for ten dollars. Our surrogate father says, "Say Torin females are beautiful." No, because they're not. They're but you did say it. I mean, I did say it because because that's what you said in the super chat. But I disagree. They're not. They're not. They could have made them hot, but they chose not to. I don't know why. But that was back in the day when Blizzard was sexist. So I'm kind of shocked they didn't make them hot. Come on, Blizzard, step it up. What are you doing? They're uh, not ugly. They're kind of ugly. <laughs> they're pretty ugly. You don't think that they're ugly? I mean, you were no, like, you were like a, a beautiful you, animal. You were like a one on the furry chart. You're like literally having cat ears made them ugly. And now you're telling me torn female or like not ugly. Well, I mean, it's, they're beautiful in the way a dog is beautiful. You know, oh, it's a okay. beautiful animal. It's, I see. Yeah. You're not going to fuck it, but. Right. Exactly. Gotcha. <laughs> Right. Exactly. I'm gonna pet it. It's a beautiful cow, you guy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fair enough. I guess you not so creepy though. When you're just saying. <laughs> uh, Grisham Baller for ten dollars says not sure about the rest of chat, but I think uh, you're one of my favorite guests, Brianna. I don't agree with you on a lot, but I think you're a very good faith, a very genuine. Keep owning commies on Twitter. There you Dude, go. Brianna watches the chat and I don't know I I think she might watch it closer than me cuz I don't really I see a lot of you guys making fun of me and stuff and I pen your tweets so right I just I, maybe Brianna I don't know I guess hmm, I we have haters and like fuck it everyone has haters right Sure yeah who cares Uh, Naxalus for 23 months says, as someone uh, who was pro GG and heard bad things about Wu back in the day, the most important thing to me is forgiveness and reconciliation. Look at that. There you it's go. It's forgiveness, sis. There you go. Look at that. Forgiveness. Wonderful. Wonderful. Mm. Uh, CT for two Canadian says Sitch is just mad that Brianna wrote Stitch on the check. <laughs> True. Listen, I was mad about that. Okay. Artemis Fowl for ten dollars says I think the Haitian the Haiti situation is MAGA hoax. Over one hundred twenty five billion dollars was donated through the Clinton Foundation to restore Haiti. No way they didn't help those poor, unfortunate, vulnerable groups. Yeah, I know there's like crazy shit going on in Haiti right now. I. I'll be honest, I haven't really followed any of it, so I don't know the specifics or any of that, so don't know. Um, don't know. Don't know. Simon Allen for two pounds says, not much, but not watching for free. Well, thank you, Simon. Any little bit helps. We appreciate yeah, it. no, thanks. We do appreciate it. Thank you so much. It. Yeah. That's so nice when people are like, look, you guys give me hours of en entertainment. I hope, I feel like I owe you something. Yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah, it is nice. Sammy G for 23 months of Order of the Enlightened. Thank you so much, Sammy. Look at that. Wow. Sammy. That's awesome. It says, but friendly I do see you got rid of one of Sammy's. One of Sammy's. Emojis. What oh, happened? did you guys? I forgot to mention. Did you guys notice the new emoji? I did, but I miss Sammy deserves to. How could you do this? Well, it wasn't Sammy. Sammy. It was a Tifa. Yeah, but it was a Tifa Sammy. Well, what was, okay. So I was looking at. Look I was at like, the, what does this mean? You got rid of a Sammy emoji. Listen. For a Hamas biker. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Hassan Soy face. Okay. What? <laughs> It's so good. Look at it. It's perfect. It's I beautiful. Feel something is amiss here. Okay, listen. I agree with you, Adam. How about this? We're gonna get rid of blonde AOC and replace her with the Tifa. No! 
<laughs> no, you don't want to. <laughs> no! You don't want to do Look, that? Why, why does YouTube keep rattling our chain like they're going to give us more emojis? Well, I some... think we use the emojis more than any other channel. I never, like, I just see them throwing like random shit for their emojis. It's our like, emojis yeah. are our tailor made. They, they, they're very, they do, they're very chintzy with the emojis. You have to have some kind of like astronomical new number of people join to get like, like, like one like more, one emoji more new it's emoji. Like that's like, if you get like 2000 more members, you get one more emoji slot. It's like, are you kidding me? So, right i think yeah. we're kind of stuck with the number that we're at but um what, well there's which... only 15 sitches so i mean we could have replaced a sitch all those sitches yeah. are different sitches and they're all widely used here we go with which this sitch list. which sitch wait tell me which here sitch comes we... the narcissism which sitch should we have replaced okay which here one Adam? comes the ego mania <laughs> which one Oh, we can't <laughs> replace We it. can't replace this itch. Which People one? love this itch. Hold on, let's see here. We got Which one's one, this itch? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. nine. Oh my god. There's Poor nine Sammy. itches. Poor Sammy G. Poor Sammy G has just two emojis. Sitch has nine <laughs> emojis. Well, I guess that makes sense. I mean, my name nine is in the show, right? Emojis. <laughs> I don't see Sammy's name in the title of the stream. Team. Oh, I know. It is true. It is true. But come <laughs> so, on, Sammy's like a, a fan favorite. That's true. So which and no, look, but tell and me which look, it is yeah. funny that he got he left the psycho ex-girlfriend sammy emoji <laughs> and he took out the sexy tifa sammy it's not emoji. sammy it's a tifa em emoji okay yeah, it was sexy sammy tifa we all knew no she drew on. the tifa it wasn't her as tifa it's just no. a picture of tifa that she drew no all those were sammy emojis that she did no that was just a tifa emoji okay okay listen which <laughs> okay tell me that i just want you to tell listen i want to keep i like the tifa emoji but i was looking mm -hmm. at it and i didn't know what else to get rid of which one yeah. should i get rid of you tell me it's tough tell it's me great. which one this is tough yeah i mean i'm willing to give up ragamuffin <gasps> ragamuffin wow. can go for look at this you're gonna give up ragamuffin for the tifa I mean, it's a neighbor's cat, really. <laughs> it's not even my cat. I don't know. I think people would be. I think people would riot. Would they? No, they'd yeah, riot we... if we got rid of Wormy. But well, Rain obviously, sure. it's kind of a kind of just a stray that moved in. But she does they... come in every once in a while. You do, so. and you do hold them up to Stug, the stream. Doug and... says, "No, not rag them up." <laughs> <laughs> I need, look, we need to talk to someone at YouTube. Why is it just literally just pixels? I you can't give <laughs> us a, look, I'll buy five of them. How, let's pay for five a month. Give us some more emoji slots, YouTube. They're so chintzy with it. It's crazy. Yeah, what is happening here? It is ridiculous. We like the emojis. Yes. Uh, we I like mean, Blonde AOC. We want to keep it. The only ones I could see to get rid of would be Blonde AOC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe the Amer the eagle with the, the American flag glasses. No, people can just use J Mac instead of that one. But I look, I do the J Mac and the eagle. They're right I next know, to each other. I know everyone does. Perfect. That's what I'm saying it's kind of redundant. It's perfect. No, do we, it's do, great. People still use the Chank Mix face. It up. I. Oh, well, I guess we could get rid of Jank. People still use the Jank face. Yeah. I don't know. I'm asking chat. Jank. I mean, Jank is. I mean, this Hamas is Jank's. Jank's nephew, right? That's true. And look, that looks so good. Oh, Your look at that. Dead. That's such a good. Oh, yeah. That's oh, really man. good. This is too much drama. That is. Okay. The only, uh, the only, the only sitch emojis I could see that could get rid of is one of these. 
Mm-hmm. One of the want, do not want. Which, which one should we get rid of? Good. Which no! one do you use most? No, you are, like those? Look, those go, yeah, obviously. Well, then which one? What are we getting rid of, Adam? You said you're like, there's the tool. There's not too many cinch emojis. There's nine cinch one. Which one are we going to get rid of? You got it. You got to use, I mean, the no sitch, yes sitch. I mean, those are used all the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do people use the stitch? People use the stitch one, I assume, whenever anyone says stitch instead of sitch. I mean, I don't, I'm, I don't think I've ever used this one. I don't really, what does this one mean? Okay. You're insane. People use that one like all the time. <laughs> Do they really? Yes. Okay. Look, no, Gabriel says get rid of it. It's the Pepe one. No, the pep. no, I did the Pepe one. This is the Pepe one. That's the Pepe Rage one. That's the one we have. That's a, no, yeah, but so is the so is the Smush Face one. This is another. Yes, that's a pe- what? But what does it pepe. mean? Oh yeah, the Stitch. It's Look, the Lilo and pepe. Stitch one. The Stitch one can go because you don't. Dude, even that's like why I was it. asking. I, do people use the Stitch one? I feel like people no, use it stitch whenever someone says go. Stitch. Oh, they do. I don't know. I'm asking the chat. I never see it. Look, when someone uses Stitch, we kick them off the show. Okay, we don't <laughs> we don't need the emoji. Okay. No one uses this. Okay, everyone's saying the Stitch can go. All right, Stitch is gone. Okay, wait, 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 Boom. wait. Let's, let's bring do a poll. sexy stop. Sammy back. Stop, stop, stop. Let's do a poll. Okay, okay. Which emoji? Oh my God, are you really gonna do a poll? We're doing a poll. Okay. Sitch, Stitch. Mm-hmm. or smug tifa what do you mean smug Wasn't... tifa is we got to get this this whole conversation is about getting the smug tifa back i know i'm saying which one do people want more smug tifa by a long shot yes we'll see i'm I banning i'm banning anyone that votes <laughs> stitch just so you know <laughs> okay we'll see oh look we'll smug see. tifa out of the gate easy victory look at that oh smug destroyed. tifa early in the lead here 80 79 percent guys wow destroyed the poll is poorly worded how is it poorly worded what do you mean <laughs> what's how Sitch. am i supposed to word it everyone knows we've been talking about it for the last 20 minutes everyone knows what i'm talking about of course and it's, it's just a blowout it is look at this Everyone was this. super disappointed when you got rid of that. I almost cried. Oh, you're supposed to vote for the one you want to keep, not the one you want to get rid of, guys. I <laughs> okay. thought that would be obvious. Which right? emoji? <laughs> yeah, which emoji do you want? What do you mean? The Smug Tifa's one's gone. It's like, which one do you want? Do you want the, the Sitch Stitch or do you want the Smug Tifa? Sammy says my vote should count as 50. Wait, so Sammy, do you want to keep the Stitch one? No. I mean, it, she's the one that drew the picture, Adam. Of the stitch? Yeah. No, she of the, the um, no, 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 no. She drew she the picture did the of the Tifa. Tifa. Yeah. Right? But she doesn't even, she doesn't even want to, she doesn't want it. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Looks like, uh, looks like stitch, stitch, stitch is, is gone. It's yeah. gonna go away for uh for smug tifa. So where are these emojis at? I'll put it in. You read some super. I chats. don't. I don't have this. I don't know if I saved the smug tifa one. I don't think I have that one. I don't know if you. I have put it, it in. I I think I have it on my oh, computer. Okay. So okay, I'll work it out. Well, there you go, guys. It looks like Sitch Stitch is gone. Do you just make sure you keep it in case we bring it back? Okay. Of course. All right. Look, I'll download it or whatever. Or there you, go. I, do, you don't have it? I have some of them. I don't know if I have all of them. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where. Where's that? What's it under? What? Oh, monetization. It's under, right? It's under monetization. It's under uh, memberships. Memberships, yeah. I got it. Yeah. Read some super chats. Okay. Come on. I'm just looking at the Daylight chat. savings. Um, people want to save the stitch. <laughs> Stop the steal. Stop the steal. <laughs> Look at this. Look B- at this. About harvest 50 votes for Sammy. Sammy is officially on board with keeping the stitch sitch. So this is all Adam's doing, okay? I wash, I like, listen, like Pontius Pilate, I wash my hands of this. 
Oh, really? Yes. Look, you're not even going to miss a stitch. Nobody cares. <laughs> oh, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it greatly. This is the thing. We're predisposed to like, we hate losing things more than we like winning things. <laughs> it's true. And this is a perfect sit look, think about the win. You're gonna get the thing back that you lost. How come nobody cares about losing the Tifa? Because <laughs> it was already gone. They already accepted it. Oh, okay. They accepted that it was gone forever. No, it's coming back, baby. Oh, you didn't realize that that was a stitch? Yeah, that was the stitch stitch. No, look, you didn't even know what it was. Well, I did. Dave Puff didn't know what it was. Right. I don't know. I think we should get rid of Blonde AOC. It just seems so useless to me. But Adam is like, like that's his wife, though. So, you know, I, I feel bad. I mean, people use equal Shadox. Sacrilege. Taken. How equal dare Shadox you? Equal Shadox says to get rid of it. I agree. How dare you? I just feel you? like there's not really a lot of context for a Blonde AOC to be used in the stream, like ever. Okay, we can get rid of it. I don't care. Well, let's get rid of the MMT too. I'm no, not the talking MMT about MMT still anymore. Good. That one like has use. Like we're still talking about MMT occasionally. Nah, yeah. it never comes up. Well, I'm yeah. Look, Sammy, you want to get you got, rid of the MMT one? Now you get two. Now there's two spots open for you, Sammy. No, we can bring back Stitch. What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh yeah, there's Stitch too. There's three. No, Sammy stop. G's. No, three stop it. new spots <laughs> coming in oh, hot. No, no. Okay, okay. Bring back the, the Stitch Stitch. Bring it back and get rid of MMT and replace MMT with, with Tifa. God, I wish I could at least just find where the fuck I put these things in. Oh, <laughs> my God. I keep blunt. Where what? are they? Oh, customized perks. Okay, I feel do like. Do you want I'm me to do it? Right no, I got it. Okay. You said you didn't even have them. You're going to by know where it is. Mm-hmm. So I can get rid of the MMT one. <laughs> Blonde AOC is like, it's not even labeled correctly. What is it labeled as? Does anyone see the labels besides us? I don't know. Maybe on... It's labeled some... as triggered A? Yeah. Why is it labeled as triggered A? Maybe on some old Windows 98 machine. <laughs> Where it doesn't actually have emojis. Well, no, I know why it's labeled that way. Because so there probably was a triggered Adam emoji. Well, yeah, and we replaced and it was it with replaced. blonde AOC at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's definitely what happened. When you mouse over, it shows you the text. Oh. Oh, you're right. It does. There you go. Interesting. Well, Save and goodbye, oh, MMT. Well, oh, congratulations, guys. You saved the stitch. Okay. Hope you guys are happy. Yeah, and you killed the blonde AOC. I thought you were keeping that one. No, I ditched it. No, 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 no. Don't remove anything. Blonde AOC is Wait, gone. wait, wait, wait. No, no, seriously. Don't remove one. We'll lose it forever. What are you doing? Why? Don't remove a slot. Only replace something. I re That's what I did. I replaced it. Oh, okay, okay. Don't I ever just it. remove one. Because, like, okay. there, it did this weird thing where, like, it gave us a bunch of, like, too many slots, and then YouTube, like, changed how many slots you get. So if you do remove we, one, we'll lose it forever. You know no. what I'm saying? All I do is replace. Okay. The Blonde AOC has been replaced by Tifa. I'm shocked. You kept MMT and got rid of Blonde AOC. No, I'm getting rid of MMT, too. I got another, gonna... I got another Sammy coming. Are you going to put a third Sammy there? <laughs> Okay. I mean, I was thinking about it. Wow. You're not going to put a blunty fly emoji in there? Oh, my God. <laughs> we need a blunty fly. We don't have a blunty fly emoji. No, people have been doing. There's a fly emoji. I know. There's a fly and the yeah. smoking emoji. Yeah. They make. Yeah, they make. I think the fly and the smoking emoji looks better. Like, if you combine them, it probably would not look very good. Uh, yeah. I think it's better just leaving it as it is. Right. With the blunty fly situation. Okay, well, you can go if you want to go replace MMT with a third Sammy emoji. <laughs> She's going to hate it, so I think you should do it. <laughs> Why? She did a bunch of them. I know. She did. Some of them didn't turn out very good, though. Well, they don't, because when it's small, like, you yeah, it doesn't really detail. work. Yeah. Right. It doesn't look good.
Okay, anyway, let me keep reading some super chats. Yeah, well, what are you Got doing? Got a tangent here. Uh, old Sitch, school for twenty dollars. Like so freaked out, he was like, "Did you remove it all?" I, I listen. I got freaked out that you fucked us out of an emoji yeah. slot. Okay, no, I did. Okay. We're good. Uh, old school for twenty dollars says, "Since you have Brianna on, there's an OT question I've been meaning to ask her. I know she j enjoys the Expanse, but is she a Dune fan?" <laughs> I don't know. Mm. Well, I'll ask her next time. Adam Unfriended for five hours says, Brianna, did you simp for Yuffie or Tifa or Aerith? Best class is the best class. I mean, we're just going to assume Tifa because that's the correct answer, right? Uh, we're just going to assume that. Uh, Seg Fault for 22 months says, quote, ah, shit, here we go again. CJ Johnson. There you go. Artemis Fowl for five dollars says, "Dev, what does corruption look like if not the intentional disregard for the First Amendment in regards to the Biden laptop story?" How? Who, That's exactly right. How? What does that? What does that even mean? Who knows? How? How was? Um, what was the intentional disregard for the First Amendment in regards to the Biden laptop story? They buried the story. Yeah, but that's not who did the media did that's not a first amendment that's the media being shills for biden right yep so all right i changed my mind i left the mmt because i don't we don't have a good third sammy emoji so oh, okay well there you go we need a good third sammy emoji and then we'll then we'll substitute it in <laughs> sammy, remember, i didn't even finish reading her members donation that got us on this sidetrack <laughs> Who, who's uh sammy i just said sammy g for 23 months or enlightened and then you brought up all the emojis stuff. oh okay <laughs> i didn't even read it sammy g for 23 months of or the enlightened thank you so much says friendly reminder that receiving sammy g bucks doesn't require you to change your ideas of who you vote for just your clothing choice on stream and i think we all know i'm gonna get this victory one day lol listen Listen, Sammy, you know the price. You know the price for me to wear a dress on stream. It's a hundred grand. Okay. You know wow. what the price is. Wow. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh J Mac for ten dollars says Woo plays Torin confirmed. There you go. Yeah. She hasn't even <laughs> played WoW. She didn't even know. That was when she was saying, oh, I try, the first thing I do is I try to make my character as sexy as possible. Oh, that? I gotcha. That's funny. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, social media censored tweets about the laptop. Yeah, but, which I think was shitty, but that was a private company is making a private decision to do that. I'm going to be a First Amendment issue. See, Sammy says, no, now I'm not going to pay a cent and still get my way out of spite. You're... How, listen, I don't know how you think you're going to have that accomplished then. Good luck. Wow. Good luck, ma'am. Mm. Uh, J Mac for another $10. Thank you, Jay. Says, Dev, why did you act surprised that female Torrens are my favorite WoW race and are obviously the best? I thought it obvious to anyone with taste. Curious indeed. There you go. Yeah. Obviously, Dev is a big fan of the Goblin Girls. Okay. Oh, yeah. Short stack <laughs> goblins. Is that what he's into? There you go. Um, let's see. Okay. I think we're done with super chats from the last stream. We did it. Stitch. Don't you feel accomplished? I do. I feel like we went on a hero's journey together. Mm -hmm. Now we, now we have left is this stream and we're good to go. Yep. Yeah. Oh, in the stream labs. Oh, shit. Let me read the stream labs from the previous stream. Oh, okay. Uh, Dr. Diddler for $2 says Aiden has to be watching this out there somewhere, jumping around like an excited monkey. <laughs> so true. So I knew it. Oh, we were so milking it too. It was I great. Know. I can't I wait know. for the cope stream. I know the, the spoon and Aiden cope stream. I know. Uh, Orca for six dollars and sixty nine cents. Thank you so much. It says the Young Turks originated as a collective of groups. One of them was called the Committee of Union and Progress. 
the cup committee made the cup committed many genocides, so it's kind of weird Chank would name his show TYT Hi Wormbo. True. Hi. You know, I never heard this concept of the Young Turks. I remember I was like one day I was like explaining to my parents the concept of the Young Turks or like the existence of the channel. And they they were familiar with this term, but not <laughs> like what like they thought it meant something completely different. So maybe this is like an old person term or something. Well, I never really thought much of the whole kerfuffle over the young Turks committed genocide against the Armenians and all that stuff. Cause I, I just always knew the term young Turks as in like, just like young guns. Type. Right. That's what my parents yeah. thought it meant. Yeah. And I never heard that. I was like, Oh, I was like, oh, I guess that's why they named their show that I didn't even that like that's never a thing I heard before I heard of the show. So Yes. But, uh bu -bu -bu -bum. where was I? Doc Diddler for two dollars says ironically a lot of these people believe that the ideal female protagonist is just a man with tits, not using the unique aspect of womanhood, just trying to make the female character more male. True. Dr. Yeah. Dealer for $2 says, I don't like seeding diversity to left either. Most people don't mind minorities. Um, by leftist diversity is the idea that many of that having a minority character is inherently better, which is the, which is disguised biological essentialism. That's also true. Death by Sloth for $2 says, as inheritors of the largest bequeathed by liberals, leftists believe those values are naturally occurring. So they can oppose or ignore them and they'll remain rather than them need to be continually maintained. There you go. Uh, Saren for $10. Thank you so much. Crab90 for $2 says, is it fair to say that most humans are not interested in becoming more self-aware because we're generally afraid of our subconscious selves? Um, not necessarily. Hmm. It's fair to say most humans are not interested in becoming more self-aware because we're generally afraid of our subconscious selves. Hmm. Maybe. To some degree. I don't know. I think becoming self-aware is scary. So, because you realize how much of it is like stupid and irrational and not based on logic or anything. <laughs> Uh, Arithmus for two hours says, I wish you guys would treat Brianna Wu the same way as you treat other guests. She dodges constantly when she's on here and nobody calls her out. Adam never lets anyone else get away with dodging like that. Yeah. And I didn't call her out at all. I totally let her get away with everything. Yeah. I thought you called her out a as you, times as you saw. Right. What do you mean? Yeah. Look, I don't like, I don't like the dodging. So I was surprised that. People accuse me of letting Carl dodge a bunch of things in that conversation. So I always feel like people just accuse me of and you of letting people dodge um, if they don't like what the person said. Well, may, may, look, I held back for a long time. So maybe they super right. chatted in all fairness to the super chatter. Maybe they super chatted before. No, this was 10 minutes ago. I jumped in. Oh, it was 10. <laughs> like, unless they, the unless they're watching it like late. Did you not listen to the stream? Yeah. So. Anyway, I pulled up, not only that, I pulled up a bunch of articles because you guys were not backing me up on the debanking thing. I was like, what? am I dreaming here? Like, this is all people talk about is the debanking shit. Okay. I just know that the Kanye was a bad example of that. I don't know about that. Yeah, but he's not the only example. I understand that. I'm glad you brought up other examples. I agree with the other examples, yeah. And it sounded like she changed her position. About the dip hanking thing, so. Well, no, she said you would read the articles. No, but I mean about, like, the idea about, like, is it a good idea to debank anyone? So. I mean, this is the same kind of, like, people, people who think that the mainstream media, they don't perceive a leftist bias or a mm -hmm. left-wing bias. Just, it's so 
Those people are so out to lunch. It's so obvious. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, CNN pitches itself as being just neutral news, but it's so left-wing bias, it's incredible. Like, what news source pitches itself as being, you know, neutral news, but is not, but is completely right-wing? Uh, or right wing well, bias. I mean, Fox News used to do it for a while. They, they used would to be say, their, they would say fair and balanced, yeah. but nobody, <laughs> nobody, joke. like nobody bought that. They I were know, like, I know, I know. We're just neutral news. They yeah. would talk about being partisan news all the time. Right. But no, but you're correct. Um, cause like a lot of people think the like the New York Times, Washington Post, they think like the mainstream, they think they're right wing news is not biased, which is insane. So, yeah. So I just, I don't like that stuff. A lot of people on the left, they just think left wing politics is just center politics. Jimmy Dore has changed his position on immigrant, on immigration. <laughs> really? Is he, wait, is he like really anti-immigration now? That'd be actually kind of fucking hilarious if that's the case. The left has kind of lost, there was a prohibition on saying illegal that is kind of gone, especially now that the president used it in his speech and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Now people are saying illegal right and left. You can tell like they're fed up with this immigration, this illegal immigration. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder if, I mean, I, Biden might be and the Democrats might be in a no win scenario between the they need a certain amount of young woke progressives to come out to vote to win who are going to get pissed off if biden does something on um immigration an executive order on immigration yeah the one and but the but the main but the more middle mainstream swing votes that they also need are going to get super pissed off if he doesn't do anything about immigration so yeah, he could be talk. walking a, a tightrope that's impossible to maintain the balance on yeah, I think we talked about this on the Monday show. Yeah. It's just. Right. He's so screwed. He's got yeah, no you, direction he can tact. Did you see? Yeah. Biden apologized already for using the term illegal. Did he? What yes. a cuck. I super cucked. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't talk about the stream because we weren't on. I mean, the uh, say the union. I know. And did you watch it? I listened to it. I did do the, I was like, it's such a nightmare because you're like, okay, I have to slow this down to normal speed just so I can. Never has a rapper there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I Come on, it, man. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. You can, yeah, because when you speed it up, you're like, oh, he sounds like a normal person. You can, yeah, you can hear that. Right. You can hear that. Yeah. But did you, I, I got to admit, I I listened to it, but I kind of fell asleep while I was listening to it. So <laughs> I don't know that I could really do successful commentary on it. Do you have any anything to say about it? Um, yeah, I. So I thought well, I'll start with the pros. Um, the pros was you know he came in with a lot more energy than I think people expected, which obviously helps. Yeah, I agree with that. Old, yeah. yeah. Um. So that was good. He had some policy prescriptions that I thought were good that I liked. He, you know, make it so that the government can um, negotiate like a lot more pricing for medicines. Most people are going to like that. It's right. probably good. There's a good point. There was, oh my God, he has another, oh, trying to make it so that there's a restriction on credit card late fees and credit card interest rates. Was it interest rates or just late fees? I think it was just late fees. It was a... It was trying to tamp down on late fees and stuff, which I think is great because that stuff is a scam. It is <laughs> ridiculous. It's like you have yeah. a $5 bill and they're like $30 late charge. Yes. Yeah. So I was a big, so I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. So those were the pros. So there were, and there were some other ones that I'm like, oh, these are like good uh, policy prescriptions. I like this. The cons on the other hand was um, even though he was high energy or more high energy, he still mumbled and shrumbled a lot you know, in his words. And Ooh. especially whenever there was someone who was catcalling and he kind of got like knocked off of message 
that's when he did really, really struggle with his words. And it made it seem like it'd be impossible for him to participate in a debate whatsoever. Because if Trump, like, it felt like if he was really? in a debate and Trump interrupts him once, he'll just be like, blah, 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 much mouth. Really? Oh. Like, when the, when the part with um, the immigration, the illegal thing, where Marjorie Taylor Greene was yelling at him, like, he totally fumbled. And then there's another part where someone else was yelling at him, and he just totally fumbled. Like, it just seemed like once he gets knocked off of the little script, he just can't speak well. <laughs> <laughs> his braids just not working properly so so he's gonna have the big gaff that's really gonna destroy his campaign maybe he could he yeah. very well could um so i thought that was really bad i thought um i thought starting the speech on ukraine was stupid in my opinion i mean it's, i don't know that's not an issue i think the average american is really concerned about that's really gonna start off the speech in the beginning about like ukraine shit yeah, that was bad. Seemed that a mistake. Was totally bad. I mean, I guess he was doing because he was trying to associate Trump with Putin, and that's why he was, you know, and the, like he's obviously running on the fact that like he had to vote for me, otherwise Donald Trump will end democracy. So, but I, I don't think it worked. His when he talked about inflation, it was a huge, he was a massive fuck up. Um, you know whether so there's like this thing now where people say inflation is really bad right now, and then the response is. Inflation actually isn't that bad. You're wrong. And I don't know which of these is true. Okay. I don't know which one of these claims is true. But I do know that there seems to be a, a perception, a pretty widespread perception, that inflation is bad, especially when it comes to like food. And that's just like the meme, the idea that people have in their minds. And if that's the idea everyone has in their minds, just telling people that it's like good and they're wrong. That is so not persuasive when you're running for president. That's a terrible fucking thing to do. And like if Do like Donald Trump, I'm assuming, would not sit there and say, you're crazy. Inflation, you know, is great. He would say, I'm going to go fix it. I'm going to get the smartest people. And we're going to tamp down inflation. Even if he's lying, right? He was just making it up. He would just say like, ah, oh, I'm going to fix inflation. And it was just, to me, I think it's a huge fuck up for Biden to not just lie i guess or to just make up something about how they're going to do something to fight inflation as opposed to just saying that it's actually not a problem it just seems like a big mistake that is a giant mistake yeah because just people know prices are much higher like even if inflation has is stopped dead right right there's still the perception that inflation is bad because the prices are still higher. They haven't gone back down to what they were before. So I just right. like, like the perceptually. Bubbles, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you come off like a liar. You come off like a, sh like a huckster. Yes. Yes. Um, so I thought that was bad. And then the, the other thing that I thought was really bad was, you know, he, he didn't, he made a very, very clear signal that they're not going to do any executive order on immigration. You know, that was the moment, that was the speech, I guess, to talk about it, to bring it up. And he didn't. He just said, you know, oh, God, I got the Republicans to to sign the bill. The Republicans aren't going to sign the bill. They're not no. going to sign the, the border bill. So that's just, it's just not going to fucking happen. And to me, it's a huge fucking strategic blunder for that him is, to not yeah. do some kind of executive order to, to lock down the border and then let the courts fight it out. So. I, the the Republicans stopped me is not a good argument going into the election because no. how do you get past that on the other side? The, the Republicans are going to stop you again. Like you're basically saying, look, I can't get any of my campaign promises done. <laughs> so <laughs> why are you point. even making campaign promises? Yeah. It makes idiot. them look very weak. Yeah. Completely. So. All right. I just realized. Well, wow. it's Oscar night. That's right. Yeah. You know what? uh dance number they're doing i'm just ken i I'm just, just saw ken. it yeah yeah but i looked for the best supporting actor robert downey jr won for oppenheimer it wasn't ken didn't win for barbie he but could I see, well, we all knew that right like, there's no they couldn't give him the kind of award it would just be too controversial yeah but i mean it's a bunch of actors oh i guess you're right it's a bunch of woke hollywood actors that actually decide the thing so they're gonna I have don't, like I see zero Barbie wins. I see Barbie won for nothing. Zip zero zilch. What was else was it nominated for? 
I mean, it was nominated for a couple things, right? Like technical awards? No, it was best director. I think it might have been nominated for best picture. Jeez. That really? That's insane. Yeah, but nothing. Barbie takes home nada. Good. Good. It is good, but maybe maybe we'll get some complaining. Annihilate them. Maybe we'll get another SJW meme out of it. Come on, it could be good. I still think it was hilarious that Margot Robbie didn't even get nominated and <laughs> Ryan Gosling did. That's all that mattered. And the fact, that's why I said it was right. so funny. It's like, you know, so for the Oscars, they're going to have, you know, the one thing from Barbie they're going to perform is the one thing everyone likes about it, which is Ken. No one cares about the feminist gobbledygook garbage. No one cares about Barbie. They just like Ken. Of course. So. Yeah. Look, Ken's Ken doll sales are through the roof. There you go. Barbie sales are in the toilet. Right. Uh, it won best song. Did it really? Oh, it did. That's a category. Best song in a movie. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's like a. Oh, maybe that's why they, they actually sang it. Or was it like best score? Yeah. I think you just made that up. Says best best original score Oppenheimer. His best Billie Eilish won for best song. Oh, but it was from Barbie. Oh, okay. what was I made for? Oh, it wasn't just I'm just Ken. What what song was? What was I made for? Best song is not on the list. I don't even remember that song. Is that in the movie? List, maybe this list goes down a little bit more. Or, something. or is that like at the credits? I don't remember that hmm. song at all. Huh. Okay, whatever. Okay, where the fuck was I? In the super yeah. chats. Let's we gotta finish these up. Come on. Daylight savings. We gotta <laughs> get up early tomorrow and do a whole nother show. That's true. Uh Spencer Harmon for twenty dollars. Thank you so much. Has Mr. Mythos did a good video on the CAA Spirit World. It's excellent. Nice. I'll check it out. I'm interested. Stock for Jr. says, what does mechanic mechanistic mechanistic? I don't know why I can't say that. Uh mechanistic versus interactive mean. Hmm. I don't know. It's a good question. Isn't interactive and mechanistic kind of the same? I, I don't know. Uh, do, do, do. I read that one. I read that one. St Stug for 20 hours says, ask Rudyard to put his mic on a towel so that Zero Fox doesn't die. <laughs> yeah, Zero Fox you. said he could like hear the reverberations off the glass table. I couldn't hear any of that. So, but Maybe I didn't have my volume up loud enough. But ask and you shall receive. So for two dollars says Adam is correct about quantum mechanics. There you go. True. I'm correct about everything, but especially quantum mechanics. Wow. Okay. I read that one. Lucifer Doberman for five Canadians says tacos are ready, only enough for 40. So first come, first serve. Nice. There you go. That's the way you make tacos. If you're not right. making tacos for 40. What are you doing with your life? True. That's true. Uh, see, seeky jokes, seeky jokes, four, five, one for five pounds. Thank you. Cause I, I don't find it that hard to believe that machines can one day have souls considering Hollywood taught me that humans can very easily <laughs> lose theirs. There you go. Terrible. Nice. Terrible. <laughs> Uh, Lucifer Doberman for another 10 Canadian says, make a poll. Who in the chat can have lucid dreams? I will pay money to know, Shills. And I so did you... make a poll, and I stopped it when it was exactly 50-50. Yes, 50-50 on people who could... I'm shocked. So when people were answering yes to the lucid dreaming, are they saying that they've had a lucid dream, or are they saying that they can like regularly lucid dream? Because I'd be pretty shocked and skeptical, 50% of the people said that they could just lucid dream whenever they want. I don't really believe that. Believe it. Okay. No doubt our chat. Never. No, I think they just, I'm assuming people that voted yes meant they just have lucid dreams sometimes. Right. 
So, hmm. I mean, every, I assume everyone's at least had one lucid dream, right? Oh yeah, I've had But I know some, some lucid people dreams. who are like, "Oh, I always lucid dream," and I'm like, "Fuck you, <laughs> fuck you, asshole." I'm gonna lucid dream tonight. There you go. I am. Uh, Thomas Shepard for five dollars says wrong. They did human sacrifice to prove their devotion. See Isaac. There you go. Okay. Steel Rain SG, thanks so much for joining the Free Will Seekers. Uh, Nolan Gams for five months. Thank you. Oh, says, are you guys doing anything on stream for the anxious generation? Don't know what that is. It's a it's a Jonathan Hype book. Oh yeah, it's that coming out soon, right? Uh, is it? I, think, I mean, is it I'm already down. out? No, it's, I don't it's, think it is. Yeah, no, it's out March twenty sixth. I think I pre ordered it. Right. The anxious generation have the great rewiring of childhood is causing an epidemic of mental illness. I'm sure we'll talk yeah. about it and read it. Yeah, of course. Uh, let's see, read that one. Seki jokes for four, five, four, five, one for another five pounds says, "Is it fair to blame Gnosticism as being the root of these bad ideas?" Uh, a historic, hysteric, esoteric. Sorry, esoteric ideas have also influenced Carl Jung and, by extension, Jordan Peterson. Yeah, I, I think I actually asked that a question. That was essentially that question. So. Uh, Metal works for one one ninety for five dollars. Says I'm sorry, but this sounds like woo woo spirit science. I have not seen any compelling evidence so far. Can we get some real concrete evidence here? Yeah, you know? Sitch. Uh, yeah, it's a there, question there for been. you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, I do think there's a good argument that people can make, um, which is kind of the same argument with aliens, which is like now that everyone has phones and YouTube channels and everything. How has no one filmed themselves doing some like crazy shit? That's just undeniable, right? Yeah. So, because it ain't ever happened. Well, as I said, I you know, I believe it based on my personal experience. Okay. <laughs> okay. As long as it's your personal experience. my personal experiences. Oh, that's so good. Um. Where that one. Yeah, we did read that read one. That one. Read that one. Read that one. Read that one. Matt Geddes for six months says, Sitch, do not fear. Your degeneracy will live on for a thousand years. Thank you. Good. Uh, I read that one about the double slit experience. Bob and Gopher Jar says, did my Roku's Basilisk Super Chat get read? Yes, I read it. Um, and Rudyard said he fucking hates it. <laughs> he hates Roku's Basilisk. So. Unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. I also hate Ro Roko's Basilisk. I think when you brought it up, or someone brought it up in the past, and we talked about it. Stug for $10 says, it doesn't matter if the thing that touches the particle is consciousness or not. Your brain does not interact with light in a double slit any differently than a detector does in any meaningful sense. Perfect answer right there, yeah. The camera well, wait a can minute. be the what? detector. You're saying your brain does not interact with light in a double slit any differently than a detector does. Yeah, but isn't that... But wait a minute. Isn't that the point? If your brain is interacting with particles in some way that a detector would, isn't that the point? Wouldn't that... Wouldn't that, that's, that would be Rudyard's point. That your consciousness is affecting these things on some level. Right? Woo-woo, just accept it. I'm just saying, I don't understand what you're saying, Stone. That seems to be confirming his point, not um, contradicting it. Captain Solo24 for $20 says, Rudyard, you say that the U.S. is an empire in many of your videos, but I just can't see it. How can the U.S. be considered an empire if it really doesn't have any real control over the territories that it controls? Well, we didn't get to ask that, but I think I would imagine he means like a cultural empire, maybe. You know, he had a whole video where he talked about how fucking awful Russia was and how corrupt Russia is compared to the West. <laughs> It's just funny because, you know, there's so many people that like simp for Russia now. Yeah. Was it an older video? No, it wasn't. It was a couple months old, but not that old. Oh, okay. Toxic Mix for $50. Thank you so much. Says, there is numerous trackable reasons why Haley is considered a PSYOP. 
She says she's a big conservative, but leaks a lot of lefty terminology and speeches like uh, undocumented. Also, her war chest is full of longtime Dem super PAC donors. Hmm. Well, she says undocumented. She, and so that's bad. She has to say illegals. Yes, she says the right words. Um, I don't know if I've really heard a lot of lefty stuff in her speeches that I picked up on. Her her war chest being full of longtime Dem super PAC donors. That's super not suspicious. I mean, these are people that all hate Donald Trump with the passion of a thousand sons and would much rather, I assume, would much rather see Nikki um, either A, take the slot, or B, just donating money to her because they think she can damage Trump to some degree and like split the vote in a way to get Biden the the thing. So, I, I mean, I don't, to me, that would not be evidence of anything. Uh, J Mac for 23 dollars, 23 months of outside the simulation. Wow. Dun, dun, that's dun. Amazing. Of course. Says, I told you to Adam to watch it last week. Oh, right. That was the Space Kings thing. It was from uh, Flash Gits. To be fair, it's heavily inspired by Warhammer 40K. That's true. So that wouldn't be considered like a oh, yeah. completely new thing. Roger would be mad. Uh, WTF one A one A for two dollars says you guys forgot Tom McDonald as the new guy. You're correct. We did forget Tom McDonald. Look, he was the rapper on the bench. Oh, was deplatformed or debanked? Was he debanked? I think that's what he means. That we forgot Tom McDonald being debanked. No, I think we just forgot to mention him. Oh, okay. So. And then Phil like when we were talking out. about like the like the top 100 songs, it became like the Ben Shapiro song as opposed to the Tom well, McDonald's song. Well, we did bring up the ben, ben Shapiro, Shapiro song. Yeah, but we didn't say Tom McDonald's name. Right. Okay. Phil, that remains. Tom Thank McDonald's. you, Phil. Phil gave us another $20. Thank you. Right. Phil says, liars. I'm in LA making new music right now. Well, there you go. Look at that. That's Based. right. Good music is coming out soon. Right here. There you go. True. It. True. Uh, Ryan's Egyptian ancestor for $10 says our new cultural outputs are DEI, Taylor Swift, AI porn, recycled Marvel movies, Ice Spice singing about farts, and John Cena getting naked at the Oscars. Dune Part 2 is good, though. Okay. Well, at least, you know, one out of five isn't bad. That's true. John Cena got naked at the Oscars. Yeah, I saw. Today? Yeah why i kind of scrolled through the my youtube feed and i saw the john cena naked at the oscars okay i guess john it, cena it okay? strips down on oscar stage to announce winner of best costume design there you go like why uh because Os- it's super uh, super acceptable and everyone loves I, I just I hate the fucking hypocrisy. I don't listen. I I hate it too. Like I don't mind that John Cena gets like almost naked on the Oscar stage. It's funny. Yeah. You know, he's super buff. He's showing off. Yeah, but why totally can't fine. we see Barbie that way right. too? That's my problem. Is that, like I'm totally fine with him doing that. I think it's right. probably funny. My problem is just the the horrendous hypocrisy that all these fucking people, all these women and gay men are allowed to just sexualize the fuck out of men and coo and make all the noises about how fucking schlick they are, right? For this naked mm-hmm. guy on stage. But if there was a, if that was a woman, oh my God, how de- it's 2024 in the, in the Oscars is objectifying a woman on stage. So despicable, right? Yeah. Huge double standard. That's yeah. what's awful about it. Yeah. Double standards. That's what pisses people off. Yep. I just want nudity representation. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. I, w- I want to see America Ferrera in a G-string. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> There's probably sure. someone more attractive you could have got than that. Oh, look at this. Throwing America Ferrera under the bus. I am. I am, yeah. At least get Margot Robbie, even though she's not quite my type. Oh, Margot Robbie? Yeah. Well, you don't know. Let me see. Where's... 
I need to do some America Prayer investigation. I don't think, I don't think she's the correct one you want in the G string. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sola for two dollars says, "I like I have Zoomer relatives that love Olivia Rodrigo." There you go. Mm -hmm. Dwight Baldwin for five dollars says, "Please read my remote viewing super chat before Rudyard leaves." I did. Bobman Go for Jar says, "Second order observations is important to the theory." True. Sola for five dollars says, "What are your thoughts on Pope Francis's comments about how Ukraine shouldn't be afraid to wave the white flag?" I, I didn't even know that those were the comments. Uh, afraid to wave the white flag, Pope Francis. See, Pope Francis sparked outrage after saying Ukraine should have the courage of the white flag and negotiate. Um, he was asked whether he thinks negotiations would legitimize the stronger party. He said that is one interpretation, but I, but I believe that the stronger one is the one who sees the situation, who thinks of the people, who has the courage of the white flag to negotiate. And today, negotiations are possible with the help of international powers. So, it sounds kind of like it was like a weird phrasing based on the, the format of the question. And also, he shouldn't say white flag because we, I think a lot of people, I don't know if it's just in America, but in America, when you say raise the white flag, that doesn't mean negotiate. That means surrender, doesn't it? Yeah, totally. But it sounds like he's saying negotiations. I mean, I would 100% agree. Obviously, Ukraine should be trying to negotiate if that's an option. Um, I don't know if it is an option. Russia, in the Tucker interview, did not seem to be really interested in negotiating anything. So I don't know if negotiations are an option. But obviously, if they are, uh, Ukraine should definitely be supporting it because it seems like the, the war is in kind of this very slow stalemate where people are just kind of dying and nothing's really moving in either direction. So sad it is uh captain solo 24 for two dollars says efat memes are better how dare you how dare you did you revile Quick. van gogh's two dollar second order observation is important to the theory i guess you must i did have. read that yeah okay good true critically chibi for eight months says was walking through the living room inside godzilla minus one won the golden globe for best visual effects when are you going to get around to that gem sitch i mean I just don't care about Godzilla. I just don't care. I'm sorry. Why? I don't know. I just don't care about Godzilla. Not something that interests me. Godzilla's great. Did okay. you even watch it? No, I didn't. You that's never went and saw it. That's why they were saying, when am I going to get around to it? Because I never watched it. What a I never saw it. Can't believe you. I know. I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -bum. The Wooster for $10. Oh, I read that one. Wooster Doberman for 20 Canadian. Thank you, Lucifer, so much. It says, how much do you want to play Elden Ring before the DLC comes out? Doing a playthrough with CT and myself and Elon Musk would be fun. That would be an interesting... <laughs> <laughs> that would be an interesting cast of people doing playing Elden Ring. Um, That'd be great. I had never played Elden Ring. So, because I knew that if I started playing it, I would probably get addicted and spend too much time on it. It's right. the only reason I didn't. It's the only reason I didn't want to play it. It's so. smart, yeah, yeah. Like not keeping junk food in the house. Exactly. You know, you're just gonna eat it all. Right. You're like, Sitch. Did you just snort the? Do you want to snort this big pile of cocaine right here? Right. And I'm like, mm. I mean, I kind of do, but yeah, it's probably not it. a good idea, right? Push it over here. Let me have some. There you go. Critically Chibi for 50 Canadian says, follow-up chat, guess I meant Academy Award or, or whatever. Does anyone, aside from my parents, watch those shows anymore? Speaking of media, when are you guys going to get on with that media channel? Looking forward to the Mob Psycho Breakdown, Adam. Yeah, we kind of have to, yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry? Well, <laughs> don't worry. Well, listen, don't worry about it. Sitch is a slow walker. That's true. Well, I, I mean, I'm kind of guilty of slow walking too, obviously, so. True. If it wasn't for all my slow walking on the comic, like the comic would already be done and and we'd have the media channel up. So There you go. Um, but yeah, I don't know who watches the Oscars anymore. It's funny, 
Cause like personally, if you ask me, all I could think of is my parents too. I don't know who the fuck watches the Oscars anymore. It I does mean, seem I watched like a the clips. Thing. I did go. Yeah. I did go and look up who the winners were. Okay. Yeah, people and do I that, thought, but I was like, um, didn't see holdovers, didn't see Oppenheimer, didn't see the wonderful story of Henry Sugar. Do you think the Oscar is going to be around in 50 years? Oh, of course. Yeah. You do? Okay. There's, I'm skeptical. Yeah, the Oscars is not going anywhere, but I don't know. there's a, a, an ebb and flow of this kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. I just feel like award shows are just, does anyone, like, I feel like award shows as a concept is just really lost favor in the public eye. Maybe. I mean, yeah. You don't want to watch the award show, but I mean, you kind of want the award system. Mm -hmm. You want you want something to distinguish you from other other movies and other games and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, that's awards, true. Awards as that. a yeah, awards aren't going anywhere. Even if right. award shows are all just jack, right? Who cares? Yeah. It's okay for seven months. Thank you. Says Hero's Journey. Might as well explain how the cast of Bionicle would fit into all this. There you go. I've never seen Bionicle. But I assume it follows the hero's journey pretty closely. Cool. Uh, let's see. Adam unfriended for twenty dollars says, "Okay, nice. Sitch, how much money does it take for you to dress like Cloud in the remake and do the dance for Sammy G and content? Is it after your face reveal as Sitch Chan and OnlyFans debut? <laughs> Ew, disgust." You, you promised, promise, Sitch. Sitch. I didn't promise anything. What the fuck are you talking about? Well, you, listen, if you want me to show up um, on stream in a dress, you know the costs, okay? You know the costs. Did that 100 grand include like a cream pie? Is that It did not. That no, that's saying? disgusting. I don't know what the fuck that person's talking about. <laughs> that's like, not a thing. That's gonna I be was bad. like, what? No, that's fucking weird. But if you want me to dress up as Cloud as a woman and as a dress, that's going to cost an extra hundred grand. So that's two hundred grand. So if you want me to dress up as Cloud, Cloud pretending to be a woman in the dress on stream, you're going to have to give me two hundred grand. Okay, not the channel. You're going to have to give me two hundred grand. Adam doesn't get every any of this. penny. Okay, yeah. So there you, you can go. Super chat it right now. No, 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 no. <laughs> You need to give me yeah, two hundred that. grand. That's the price. Okay. Yeah. YouTube gets none of the dress money. Yes. True. Uh, Micro Omega for twenty three months. Thank you so much. Says, behold my awesome milestone. Behold. I know. I can't wait. Twenty four months is right around the corner. We got gold pyramids. Right. No matter for two dollars. Says Sitch and Adam don't burn bridges. They build them. That's true. Usually. I mean, I've burned, a couple, burned a couple bridges. Yeah, only a couple. Yeah. Still working on on Christian Watson, trying to rebuild the bridge a little. <laughs> that <laughs> bridge of bit. sophistry. <laughs> Adam is like building the bridge by like, he, you like put a plank down, then you yank it away <laughs> as he walks <laughs> I'm building the bridge, yank. Fucking like Lucy <laughs> with the football here. <laughs> Loser Doman for two Canadians says we need to be able to use emojis on any channel. Now that'd be cool. Like if you could, that's actually a oh, great yeah. idea. If you were subscribed to a channel, you could oh, use those channels emoji idea. anywhere. Yeah, that's like a good you idea. could use if you're a subscriber, if you're a a member of Sitch and Adam, you can use our emojis on in other chats. Now yes, that would be based. That's a very based idea because people yeah. would be like, "Oh, where'd that emoji come from?" I feel brag. like the reason You'd they don't like, do that is they, they'd be too afraid of abuse. Why? Because like, you can make like really, I don't know, <laughs> like really bad <laughs> emojis and that people spam your emojis with like, you know. All our emojis are bad. Slur, I well, like slurs or naked people or something. I don't know. Oh, maybe. I mean, they should do it though. I think it's a good idea. Do they do that on Twitch? I don't know the answer to that. That's how Twitch does it. Yeah, that is weird. Then why doesn't YouTube do it? That's super weird. You can go to all the 
you could go to all the Hassan videos and you could post the Hassan soy woche. Yeah. And people are like, oh my God, where'd you get that? Where'd you get that? Like Sitch and Adam. Oh, you have to join the Sitch and Adam channel to get that amazing you Hassan You didn't make soy. that. Whoops. I didn't make it, no. Soy, yeah. I made the emoji for our channel. Right. I shrunk it down. I had to put it through an AI, like a little like uh, cleaner upper because when you shrink it, you know, you lose all the, you lose a lot of the uh, Did you really? Quality. I did, yeah. Really? Yes. Okay, wow. I took the original image and I shrunk it down, but you know, when you shrink things down, it loses its quality. Like it yeah. gets all blurry and fucked up. I agree, yeah. Yeah, so you, I so I took that and then I put it through the little AI cleaner upper thing to make it a little hard, high quality and it actually worked like really well. So hmm. That's cool. Uh, Stuck for two hours says, I think most people don't care about the MMT emoji. True. Uh, no math for five dollars says, "Look, we should keep AOC, but I'll be okay to get rid of it if we get a blunty fly emote." There you go. I maybe I'll bring AOC back and get rid of the MMT. MMT. Yeah. We'll just we'll let it chill. We'll see how it plays out. Sammy G for two dollars says, "Dot dot dot." Why? <laughs> yeah, that was cool. I saw that. <laughs> That's funny. She's she doesn't look. We're Sammy. She didn't G like fans. all the attention. We're Sammy G fans. We're loading up on our Sammy G. Emojis. That's Just right. That's live right. Live with it. Deal with it. That's right. Deal with it, Sammy. Come yeah. On. Come on. Deal with it. <laughs> Find you for $2. <laughs> Just got back from Dune 2. Man, religion be crazy. There you oh, go. Oh, wow. That movie does really play into like the Christian themes. I don't even really know. I mean, I kind of like know the basics of Dune. I started watching the first one, but I kind of got bored halfway through. So I never finished it. Uh, PLO 2PL for two months says, I live in San Francisco and all the political energy this election cycle has been focused on curbing crime. Less on woke narratives, things are changing. Yep. I mean, when, you know, when people get faced with the physical realities, you know, that changes people's minds real quick. Yeah, it does. Rico Zoro for ten dollars says, "Guys, you were thinking about the channel's emojis all wrong. Get the emojis on a rotation. Some will be seasonal. Build up fan support for emojis and pow merchandising. I want blonde AOC coffee mugs. Wow, Rico, that's a fucking brilliant idea. It is brilliant. That's right. We should seasonal emojis, baby. There you go, baby." Critical TB for, for $5 says, so in terms of the dress, we've established that you are sitch and are now only, that you are sitch and are now only haggling over price. S-Class has the best ass, but AT makes me cream. Well, mm, we established nice. this like months ago. I said, we had the conversation. Adam said that he wouldn't wear a dress on stream for any price. And I said right. 100K. There's no haggling over the price. That was always what it was. Okay. So I you save your jokes critically, Chibi. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I said I can't be bought at any price. I'm not a common whore. Okay, look at this fucking guy. <laughs> Listen to this fucking guy. I'm not a common whore. Okay. Okay. Wear a dress for your entertainment. Come mm. on. Come on now. Okay. Wormy, don't eat that. Let's wormy eat it. He started biting on my headphone jack. Everything for two dollars oh, right. says, "Oh, no yeah. offense, but Brianna dodges literally every question." Adam, you did follow through on the debanking, so props to you. There, she got away with tons of stuff this evening. I want to see tears. Well, I mean, the whole the point was not to make uh, Brianna cry. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> for some it? people. That wasn't the intention of having her on. But. Since you're just not trying hard enough, okay? okay? That wasn't really the thought process. But anyway, that's it. Oh, wow. Look at this. This is just like an old timey Sitch and Adam here. We've gone Are we for... streaming tomorrow? Yeah, of course. Okay, there we go. About? Nice. I thought we had a schedule already. Okay, I'm down. We can't stream on Wednesday. We're going to stream early on Thursday. No stream on Friday. Sounds good. Look, we got a week planned. Nice. So I guess we're going to talk about uh, stories tomorrow. We'll talk about stories tomorrow, yeah. 
It'd be great. Can't wait. Can't wait. We'll think of something to. We'll see what stories are coming about. up on Monday. Yeah, Rudyard was, is. What, oh, I want. We got to talk about the TikTok thing on Monday too. Okay. Trump we'll coming out in TikTok thing. favor of TikTok. Oh yeah, he did. Yeah. Weird. Trump likes to do those TikTok music things where he sings with like a young. He girl. does a little dance. Yeah. Yeah. Very cringe. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for your incredibly generous donations. Thank you, Zero Fucks, for the 18 months saying, hashtag bring back murder face. Ma um, Armistan Sin. <laughs> there you go. I want the murder face emoji back. Anyways, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for your incredibly generous donations. Uh, thank you, Brianna Wu, Dev, and Rudyard for coming on. We always love talking to you guys. Free conversations tonight. And thank you. You who have made it to the end of the stream. You are the true heroes. You are the true free will seekers. You are the true anime isekai protagonists of life. You are the true people who would never, ever, ever take a buyout from some kind of woke game journals left this to write a bad review that you didn't agree with. You who would never sleep with Zoe Quinn. You who would never, ever, ever pay some hyper-woke asshole company like Sweet Baby Inc. to look over your script and add a bunch of bullshit and wokeness and race swap characters into it. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Bring back the sexy characters! Bye bye There you go.